It's the Bob and Tom Show. Hi. I just brushed in from the hallway where we're standing and having a cocktail. <laughs> really? Some small talk. Pigs in a blanket at Rabaki out there. It's delightful. That's right. Oh, it's nice. A, it's a party. <laughs> it's the Bob and Tom Show. Christy at the news desk. Hi. Pat Godwin in the performance room. Hey, Chick. There's Josh Arnold. Hello. Ace Cosby. Hey. I'm Chick McGee, and here is Tom Griswold. Hello, Tom. Thank you very much. Uh, welcome to the show. A lot going on, of course. Of course. We're going to get to many things. Uh, stilts in the news. Very oh, excited boy. about that. Can't believe it. We have some interesting sporting news today. Cam uh, Newton in the sporting news. Really? Oh, him and his hat. That's the trouble wearing distinctive hats. If there's a viral video of you, that you can you can spot him from 50 yards away where he is. Plus, he's eight feet tall, so or where however tall he is, six six or whatever the heck. Okay, is. well we'll look forward to that. Um, what else is going on over there? Uh, we had a super duper uh, tight NASCAR race in Hampton, Georgia last night. Uh, Daniel Suarez edged Ryan Blaney and Kyle Busch in a three wide finish Whoa. by point. Zero 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 three. Whoa! Photo finish. And if Suarez had had one of those uh, hood ornaments, <laughs> yeah, the guy running or would have been significant. The lady with the boobs, yeah, or with the long beak, yeah, yeah, <laughs> with a really big nose, really big schnoz. <laughs> that car would have finished. Uh, it was that close? It was. Ooh. It was fascinating. And huge controversy in baseball already. 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 Mm. Naughty. Controversy in baseball. Yeah. Um, oh. and I, 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 it has to do with money. Oh. People are trying to save some money. You think that's what it is? Well, of course that's what it is. Grow up, Tom. Oh, okay. <laughs> what uh, makes the world go round? Love? No, no, mm -hmm. no, no, no. Money. Okay, well, we'll find out about that. Um, and we got some information on that referee from the NHL last week. Remember him? You're not going to like it, but the call on the ice was correct. No goal. <laughs> no goal. <laughs> There's an update. There's an update. Uh, hi, Chick. This is from uh, Denlinger. I'm sorry? Denlinger. That's, uh, yeah. I don't think he wanted his last name, but I went ahead and did it. Den, oh, he lives in Piqua. Cool. The NHL referee clip you featured uh, last week is Garrett Rank. You're not going to like it, but the call on the ice was correct. <laughs> <laughs> He's a good enough golfer that he qualified for the U.S. Open in 2018. He shot a 71-71 in a sectional qualifier and played that year at Shinnecock. Wow. The name of that course again? Shinnecock. <laughs> and his name is Dang Lover? Uh, the, the, the writer is yeah. Dang Linger. Dang Linger. The NFL ref is Garrett Rank. Okay. I also enjoyed your montage of referee calls, and if you haven't seen or heard a call by NHL referee Wes McCauley, you owe it to yourself to Google it. Mm. Get on this, Hoffy. Wes McCauley for fighting. Check it out. It's a classic. Uh, do you have your uh, medley of recent uh, referee calls? Certainly. Sensational grounding. Offense number seven. It's a 10 yard penalty. I'm talking to America. That's <laughs> uh, uh, a guy bothering. I don't think I've ever heard the guy bothering him as plain as I am this yeah. morning. Yeah. He must be right in his face to be getting up to that sure. microphone. Oh, yeah, here he is again. Attentional grounding. <laughs> Offense number seven. It's a 10 yard penalty. I'm talking to America here. <laughs> and then. <laughs> number 99 of the defense. After he tackled the quarterback, he's given him business down there. <laughs> It's a 15-yard and false start offense, the entire offensive line. <laughs> and, of course, our most recent. You're not going to like it, but the call on the ice was correct. No call. <laughs> that's Mr. You're not going to like Mr. it. Mr. Rank, is that who that, that is? That is Garrett Rank, and he's evidently a hell of a golfer. Oh, that's that's nice. according to Denlinger. It's hard to get mad when the NHL makes calls like that because they have so many cameras. They go to Toronto. Toronto takes a look at it. It's, Toronto. it's like impossible for them to get it wrong. Pretty now much. that's impossible. Almost, yeah. Wow. Well, they go to New York because we're an American country. <laughs> <laughs> they wouldn't go to Toronto for the NFL. Well, that's where the, the 
the uh, NHL. all the snow and hockey pucks are. <laughs> That's right. Is that why? <laughs> <laughs> all the best hockey pucks. <laughs> I am constantly amazed by your um, how shall I put this? Your your glaze, your 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 jaundice as far as the National Hockey League goes, and how 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 much their their athletes are kinder and more gentleman gentlemanly and friendlier and I uh, yeah and they, they never get a call wrong now. Oh, I'm not saying they don't get caught. That's what you just said. They when it almost comes to, never get a call wrong. When it comes to missed goals, it's really hard to get that wrong. But the NFL, it's just slapped together, right? <laughs> not slapped together. <laughs> <laughs> but but they a, should change the pass interference call, right? Well, that's, I mean, that's just ridiculous. You're, <laughs> you're, you're taking away one of the biggest parts of the game by having that. Now, so how should it work? So the guy goes out for a pass. Yeah. You should be able to tackle him, otherwise he's going to catch the ball. <laughs> it's football. Yeah. Should it be madness uh, out there? I see. Well, you know what I've got for you this morning? A marriage, if you will. That's right. Ice football. What? Whoa. Who's ready? I'm ready. Ice football. You got a hockey rink? Yeah. You got a hockey game on there? Yeah. Nope. <laughs> football game on there. <laughs> Are they wearing skates? <laughs> no. Nope. No skates. Sneakers, as far as I can tell. Oh my God. Slip slide. Uh, and and very way. little traction. No cleats, no nothing. <laughs> no. Is this being played by professional athletes? I have Just no idea. He misses it's, his football. There they are. Oh. Video of a bunch of Canadian football. There they are. Look at it. It looks awesome. <laughs> <laughs> Look at it. It's awesome. They're Look. slipping so badly. <laughs> Oh, they're yeah. kicking extra point. Landed on his ass. He fell right. <laughs> wow, that's on each other. ice football. Okay. Look at that. Oh, jeez, over his head. <laughs> oh boy, <laughs> it can't run. <laughs> yeah, that is a hard game to play. That, that is hilarious. so funny. Let me tell you something. If an ice football game comes within 150 miles of where we're oh, sitting right now, oh, I'm, I'm taking everybody. All we're right. going to go watch. <laughs> yes, ice football, Tom. Oh, they got, I hope they got a lot of pads on. That's going to hurt. Oh, they do look. They do look very well. Pat, yeah, yeah, especially I fell in the back of my head one time on the ice and thought I was going to die. Ooh. Yeah, it was not, I can't. It was yeah. Probably concussed. Oh, I probably was. That's See, what that sounds was you just heard. Yeah, okay, my concussion. Good. Uh, very good. Well, more sports uh, coming up. Okay, uh, Chris, you want to give me a teaser? What you got over there? In the, oh, the we have set? some new tiny moons around Neptune and Uranus. So I'm so excited. I have a chat. A sad update on Flacco. Do you remember Flacco the owl? I don't know. Okay. Not, not Joe Flacco, the very fine quarterback. Oh, the owl. The Flacco. Is Flacco coming back to the Browns? Um, I doubt it. He, they paid him. Remember those heady days of three touchdowns <laughs> that they're on the yeah. onto the playoffs. This is Flacco, the owl. Yes, and we have an update on our Hooters vigil. Do you remember that? Yeah, West yeah, Virginia, Charleston, West Virginia. We'll have an update on that for you coming up. They're taking down a Hooters, and. Uh, it's a lost cause, apparently. Yep, they, sadly. They can't for see them. It. Okay, well, we'll find out what happened for that. Oh, and is that a body that's been in a hearse for two years? We'll talk about that coming up, too. Ooh, hope they had the AC on. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> man. Jeez. That's going <laughs> to... I tell you what, that new car smell. <laughs> <laughs> that new hearse smell is gone <laughs> after the oh, yikes. Uh, also, we have uh, bass players in the news. Yeah. Very exciting. Uh, speaking of uh, musicians, coming up later this week, we're going to talk with our friend Peter Frampton. Uh, Peter is going to be doing a tour, and he is also nominated for the Rock and Roll Hall of Fame. You can vote for him if you want right now. Go to yes. the Rock and Roll Hall of Fame website. And uh, feel free to uh, vote for whoever you want. I would certainly recommend a vote for Mr. Frampton. Uh, right now, the Bob and Tom Show is sponsored by BetterHelp. So many of us, I think, uh, spend a lot of time wishing we had more time. Uh, time for what? Extra hour in the day, what would you do with it? Read a book, go to the gym, take a nap, go chat with a friend. Uh, maybe you could make a priority your mental health. That's where therapy comes in. And BetterHelp has a uh, better idea when it comes to accessing therapy so you can become the best version of you so if you're thinking of starting therapy better help uh, is certainly worth a try it's all done online and designed to be extra convenient and flexible with your schedule you fill out a brief questionnaire you'll get matched with one of 25,000 licensed therapists and you can switch therapists at any time for no additional charge and uh, maybe learn and take that time to see what makes you happy with better help. And I should point this out. The therapy is done online, so it can be done as if it were a phone call, as if you were doing a Zoom call and looking at each other or even texting back and forth. 
For all the information, go to BetterHelp.com slash BT Show. That slash BT Show part at BetterHelp.com will get you 10% off your first month. BetterHelp. BetterHelp. H-E-L-P. BetterHelp.com slash BT Show. And the Bob and Tom Show is sponsored by BetterHelp. Also, coming up today, speaking of your brain health, mm -hmm. musical instruments as you age may be helpful for your mental health. Uh, and um, uh, uh, stilts, my favorite in the news. <laughs> this is the Bob and Tom Show. Hey, this is Frank Caliendo, and you're listening to Bob and Tom Radio. Man of a thousand and two voices, that's Frank Caliendo. Good morning. Welcome to Bob and Tom Radio. It's literally just water. I, uh... Mouth it. Mouth it? <laughs> has, has that been throwing you guys off? Like, I've been told that when I drink out of bottles that I really, like, wrap my whole mouth around them or whatever. <laughs> and I'll be honest, I have no idea what people are talking about. How we doing, fellas? A truck driver distracted by a Andrew GPS Johnson to, uh, unit crashed near the intersection of US 278 at Arkansas Highway 24 early Monday, spilling a truckload of spaghetti sauce. Camden Police Sergeant Corey Saunders <laughs> said the spaghetti sauce truck was headed to Dallas about 3 a.m. when the driver became distracted, overcorrected, and rolled over after crossing the center line of the highway. The driver suffered minor injuries, but there was sauce all over the road. Oh, oh dear God, 2,000 quarts of blood. <laughs> 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 this is the worst accident I've ever seen. <laughs> Stand back, there's blood everywhere. Oh, wait a minute. Mm. Garlic bread <laughs> yeah, exactly. They just mopped it up with a bunch of garlic oh, bread. Oh, isn't that the best? Uh, mm. Yes, it is. God, I'd rather have that than the spaghetti noodles, just the sauce and the bread. What's wrong with you? How dare you put pasta down? I can't eat a whole can't, can't bar. <laughs> <laughs> I can't eat spaghetti noodles. They I can, right my hip. but I like the bread part. Better than the pasta? Yes. No, no, the bread's lovely and the pasta's great, too. Here, here's what Tom's doing, telling you... What you like. Of course he okay. is. I'm you used know to you that. like the pasta. Here's one of the fattest things I've ever done. I, uh, <laughs> oh, can we, we have an we intro for this feature? Something like. Boop, boop, boop. Or just play, yeah, playing boop, Baby boop, Elephant Walk. Boop. And I know. Thing, shares one of the fattest things he's ever done. And broken toilet seat doesn't count. Now, this is fatter than telling the guys on the phone when you order Chinese takeout that you need four sets of silverware when it's just no, you. No, no, it was, it was <laughs> faking that there was somebody else with. What's that, honey? <laughs> <laughs> Two orders of crab uh, right uh, Okay. If you say so. <laughs> Okay, once again, Josh has put them on over his... Uh, okay. Okay, so now in the, in the groin area, yeah, there is Well, a, uh, that looks ridiculous. <laughs> whoa, whoa. Oh, is she turning it on? <laughs> Sit back down. Now, no, this is Sadie, why we have HD cameras. Sadie has the remote control. Mm-hmm. And what is it? Do you have it caught in a okay. crack? What's going on back there? Okay. Right, okay. You, are, you, you okay? Okay, so are you prepared? Now, Sadie, explain to me how the remote works. Okay, so up to 20 feet away, which makes it really fun for a Valentine's Day date out to dinner with oh, your lover, sure. a little private. There's three different modes. Right. There's manual mode where I can just press a button and oh. it will vibrate. <laughs> All there's, right, there we go. There's ambient mode where you can hold it up to a speaker and it'll pick up the bass from music. Is that? Oh. Or you can whisper sweet nothings into the mic like oh, this. Oh, my God. Can you? <laughs> oh, Oh, hey, so as she as she talks, it's vibrating. Hey there, baby. That's pretty boy. good. <laughs> <laughs> so she could be in the next room on a phone. I yeah. really here. I'm gonna step over here. Oh. Oh, okay. Now Sadie's leaving and walking away over to Chick's mic. All right. And uh, oh, oh, oh my God. <laughs> oh, she's, she's whispering. Talking to him. Yeah. Here, here, uh, here. I feel pretty here, good. Oh try. yeah. Let me try. Whisper sweet. Wait a second. Oh, oh, now <laughs> I've got the. Oh, 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 it's so. He's gonna be so finishing. Do, do? do I just? No, it's already doing it. Hey, Jim. Oh. <laughs> oh, no. So it's vibrating to his voice. What's going on? What's it's going as though on? What's your going on? lips What's going on? are up against me. Oh. 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 
that back to Sadie. How about this? Is it? Oh, goodness. Uh-huh. Actually, I, I met a guy. You ever meet like a, a sweet old man, and you you know kind of get to know him and talk to him and befriend him, and, and then he suddenly passes away. That, mm-hmm. uh, it's just very sad, and that, that actually happened to me uh, last month, and oh, it was that right? eh, it was hard to take. You know, he passed away right before he was supposed to do my taxes. <laughs> <laughs> uh-huh. I couldn't believe it. That his, uh, bastard. I know. His son calls me up April 13th <laughs> and tells me I should probably come pick up all of my receipts. And I'm like, you got to be kidding me. <laughs> I mean, did he at least start? <laughs> yeah. yeah. I mean, I'm sorry that, about your dad and everything, but, but nice. this really just... puts me in a bind. <laughs> <laughs> I mean, can you think about somebody else for uh, a second? Very unprofessional. Me, yes. me, me. I mean, wow. you know, golly, I mean, I, was it sudden? You know, I hope it wasn't painful or anything, but, you know, did he say anything about a refund <laughs> or leave any <laughs> notes? <laughs> or, I mean, how am I going to get my taxes done now? <laughs> that is sad. Oh, <sighs> yeah, man, man. Hi, this is Dr. Will Miller, and you are listening to Bob and Tom Radio. Hey, welcome back to the Bob and Tom Show. Got all sorts of things going on here this morning. Here's Tom. Hello, Tom. Sounds like a detective show theme. A little bit. Tonight on a Quinn Martin production, yeah. Tom Griswold, Private Eye. <laughs> yeah, driving down the highway. That's the ocean to my right, to my left, a city in trouble. Got the top down. Yeah. <laughs> the in my breezer. Uh, well, um, now. Is that the uh, time when the private investigators used to keep uh, cheap watches? In their uh, glove box. Oh, yeah. You'd... So you could put it up under the tire of somebody that you were staking out. and <laughs> You'd know when they left. You'd know when they left. they run over the watch and mm-hmm. it would break at that time. And, oh, yeah. Oh, my. Oh, yeah. I think I don't know who invented that, but I want to say it's it, it was a writer. It didn't actually ever happen in real life. But oh. Maybe it did. I don't know. Like whoever, uh, Philip Marlowe, or <laughs> maybe Mickey Spillane came up with it. I don't know. I watched a Columbo over the weekend. Yeah. yeah. Did every episode of that show start with the crime, and yep. then so then the yep. the show you're just watching him figure it out, yeah. but you know exactly. There's like you know, zero dramatic tension. You know who you know yeah. who did it from the very start. Yeah, yes, with every episode, and that just Peter. That's Peter Falk, is what they said. I was never a big Columbo fan, but it was okay. I mean, I didn't yeah, I was like, wait, it out, So though. we know exactly what happened. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yeah. There's no yeah. mystery. It's just, <laughs> yeah. just watch my guy figure it out. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> and, to, and to this day, I think that's still the only show that did it, ever did that. <laughs> it, it kind of worked. I mean, it was... He, yeah. He's, he's, he was charming. They tried doing yeah. Mrs. Columbo. They yeah. did? Oh, with uh, Kate... Um, uh, oh, right. McGrew? Mulgrew. Mulgrew, yeah, Mulgrew. from uh, one of the Star really? Trek uh, franchises. Yeah. Can you imagine? Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> like his wife? Yeah. I remember he always talked about yeah, her. He, he, talked about he, his he wife. mentioned her yeah. a couple times. Yeah. And then they suddenly, she's front and center. Oh, right. wow. Kate Mulgrew, she was on like Ryan's Hope or something. Yeah, I, don't, hmm. I don't know how long that. Yeah, I wish some of that stuff would fall out of my brain. <laughs> uh, I'm sorry. Uh, we have uh, a couple things on the sports page to check out. Uh, dear Chick, Tom, Josh, Ace, Pat. Oh, hello, Christy. Oh. Oh. Wow. <laughs> Listening to your show on the way to work, wanted to let you know that while in the Peace Corps in Brazil back in the 70s... Humble brag. (laughs) My wife and I ate capybara meat many times, and it was, all caps, delicious. Wow. Really? Now, actually resembles chicken. Talking about that yesterday. Yeah, during Lent, there are some apparently Catholic officials out there that have ruled alligator, beaver, and even capybara okay to eat. Now, they determine this because alligator, they say, is a fish. Yeah. So uh, Alligator's so not a fish. So the, the rules... It's a reptile considered in the fish family, according to this bishop, archbishop. So it sounds like the, each archbishop can make their own rules. There's no, like, the, the pope doesn't come out and go, here's what you got to do. Um, they change all the time. Thank you, Pat. Yes, things change all the time. You don't know, yeah. You never know from one day to the next. But no, I'm just, I'm, I'm not trying to... 
be accusatory here. No, it just I seems don't know. That this Sounds like the, you're the, accusing somebody of something. No, the news story said this archbishop said that his what we what parishioners can eat alligator capybara and what else? Uh, what did I say? Beaver. Yeah. Beaver. Yeah, beaver. It doesn't count as meat. And beaver's definitely meat, right? It's a Where mammal. From yeah, I would think. Is beaver meat? Yeah. Sure. Uh, yeah. yeah, yeah, it must be. But, but you're it, really just tasting beaver, right? <laughs> <laughs> you're tasting a beaver. I've never. I mean, unless you're some weirdo. Uh, yeah. I, but again, I, <laughs> this isn't a. This isn't an international set of rules. And the the, the general rule well, then is that I, in, during the season of Lent, if you're Catholic, you're not supposed to eat meat on Friday only. Right. But it used to be that way year round. Right. right. When I was growing up, it was year round. Yeah, same here. I bet yeah. some some Catholic families still practice that. Oh, probably. A lot of fish sticks. I was going to say. Oh, yeah. I, I, fish lots. Sticks. I have two questions. One, uh, is that why fish sticks were invented? Follow up. When were they invented? Oh, I kind of remember when they were like. Well, I, really? I think the more That's important the question is when they when the Catholic Church dropped the proscription against. Eating meat on Friday did fish stick sales plummet. Oh, I bet. Oh, they'd have to. How can one thing be a mortal sin on one Friday and then seven days later it's okay? It's called the Catholic religion. They, you know, <laughs> lot of, they, they make up a lot of stuff, don't they? Uh, now, uh, I like the swinging pots. Uh, Is that the Catholic? Uh, yeah, they do that. <laughs> if I had a band and I was a Catholic kid, I'd call them the swinging, swinging pots. pots. Chicken the swinging What pot. is the swinging pots? It's uh, the some incense. sort of incense. 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 Yeah. Yeah. That the old, I mean, do, they do, do they do a full 360? Uh, no, I don't think so. No, they just go back and forth. They make it's, a sign it's, of it, the cross. it's a pendulum move yeah. then. Well, let me tell you I something. If somebody would bring that in, he would be the top priest. Like a Cirque du Soleil <laughs> <laughs> feel. So but now this letter mentions, um, and I'm sorry, is it Copybur Copybura? Is it? We say Copybara on the show. Copybara. And sorry. it's essentially a giant rat. Right. It looks like a big rat. And that, that was in this particular, what is it called, encyclical? Mm-hmm. This where this archbishop said it's okay to eat alligator, beaver, and capybara. Where where was this uh, particular parish located? Was it in a place where they have alligator to eat and capybara? I think it was Louisiana, but Louisiana was where the alligator was, uh, where you were allowed to eat alligator. And the capybara then, isn't anywhere near. And then the beaver one came from the 17th century in um quebec thing. because the beaver swims in a river can we do something about her <laughs> why not quebec she's it doing is quebec she's, she's it's backing it up yeah, yeah. it's free too according <laughs> according to sure. the laws of the catholic church meat comes only from animals uh, such as chickens cows sheep, or pigs all of which live on land that's their definition but birds are also considered meat so. they're okay with the pork thing huh Pigs. No, it said pigs. No, no, they're okay with it, though. Yeah. I know some religions, the pork things. Are big, oh, yeah. Big Abstinence does not include meat juices and liquid foods made from meat, so you can take your... So, so you, can have a, you can have a beaver smoothie or a no, you can have pork a, smoothie. Uh, beaver. Yeah. I bet, they come up, I bet they, the Catholics came up with the term au jus. That's what I bet. <laughs> I don't know about that. I think the French did, I, yeah. Oh, so, yeah, yeah the... Uh, <laughs> It's it's always up for interpretation, I think. Okay, now are you doing are been. you doing the no meat on Friday thing for your Lent? Uh... Um, I, I kind of do it anyway, so it's not a big deal for me. But are you doing it now? Yeah, I mean it's just okay. kind of ingrained. And then I, I suggest that for those that have been to the Bahamas, there's this tourist trap thing where you go see the swimming pigs, <laughs> which I highly do not recommend. Much better ways to spend your day. Uh, the boat ride's fun. The swimming pigs are scary, and you feed them hot dogs, which is really creepy. And the guy, as I said, assures you that they're all beef wieners. I don't believe that for a second. So, uh, now what about manatee? They're, are they pretty meaty? I think it's fat. Manatee? Yeah. I think it's just avid du poil. It's a mammal, right? <laughs> yeah. They breathe air, so I mean. Yeah. The law abstinence forbids the eating of meat of mammals and birds. However, eggs, milk products, fish, shellfish, and other cold-blooded animals may be eaten. The manatee have live babies, well, or do they no. have eggs? So alligators have cold blood, don't they? <laughs> <laughs> yes, they do. Oh, well, yeah. Yeah. scuba divers say, "Hey, I found some manatee eggs." <laughs> they have live babies. <laughs> so this is very, very confusing. But yes. yeah. just ask your local 
Priest, Whoever, ask yeah. your priest. Why wouldn't, yeah. they, why wouldn't they have a believe? set of international rules? Why is I think they kind of do. Why is there a guy at the Vatican? They kind of do, yeah. But how come this but, guy? But in terms of different animals, you, they just have to ask. Because this is the story you got. Well, I'm just saying, this, uh, this archbishop. What happened to, the, what happened talking... to the, the pope who liked the expensive shoes? I, I miss him. They get Remember? the shoes. I think the, the, the shoes. Prada the Prada shoes? They, or they, get, they, they get the shoes on the house. Oh, okay. Okay, so the archbishop in this particular story were from Louisiana talking about alligator meat. If you read the definition, uh, other cold-blooded animals may be eaten. So reptiles are cold-blooded, right? Yeah. Mm -hmm. So that's, it fits. So you can eat frog, you can eat, yeah, yeah exactly. Totally so it, there fits. are international rules. This guy's just clarifying in Louisiana. Right. Yeah, have your yeah alligator, alligator meat's okay. Yeah, capybara is a big rat. Well, He's that cold-blooded <laughs> snake. Oh, look into <laughs> his, his eyes. eyes. Okay, uh -oh. Well. Uh oh, he's been telling lies. I love, I love, love Paul Abdul. 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 Yeah. What is that? What is that? Song? We don't play Abdul. by rules. Oh. What's, what's that? Really, Paul one Abdul. good song with a lot of guitar. Opposites, uh, opposites attract. Yeah. Oh, I love that song. Paul Abdul oh. with uh, MC Scat Cat. I no, I don't like that one. Don't like the MC. <laughs> That's Scat opposite Cat. attract. That's, That's that that opposite attract. Yeah. Okay, video. I don't like that part. <laughs> She's on tour with New Kids this summer. Really? Thank you, Ace. Pinch me. <laughs> oh, I see. I'll get tickets. Well, she, um, he knows I'm kidding around, don't think. I don't think he does. Okay, well, what else have you got over there? Oh, dear Bob and Tom, there is a winery, Tom, all caps, T-O-M, outside of Harbor Springs, Michigan, that has oversized slingshots, paren, catapults. Yeah, I've been there. The visitors, have you done this? I've eaten there, and I've, yeah, sure. They used to shoot pieces of melons yeah. at goats in the back 40. Yeah. Oh, how about that? That doesn't sound it's very... a couple miles north of where I grew up. Nice <laughs> at all. The goats don't seem to mind all the food flying at them. Oh, I bet they well, love, I love it. it. This is from Mike. Yeah, the you, food's you, great there. You've done this? Absolutely. Hmm. That's not that... That subpar Polish place you sent me to, is that it? That place is fantastic. No, that's a different place. That's up the uh, beautiful the watery. <laughs> what was that? Uh, I know exactly the name of it. He'll get mad if oh, I say it. It's legs in. It's delicious. They have great food Just there. Watered down bread sauce. <laughs> What's your problem? They didn't have they, they didn't have fast food cheeseburgers for you. Hey, you come in and you go, hey, I'll have a six of McNuggets <laughs> and a QPC. They look at me funny. <laughs> but I know I've been to the catapult place many times. It's great. It's fun. <laughs> look at him! How excited he got! Melons and goats. <laughs> so you you as a child you would go? No no no! It only opened a few years ago, but I've been there many times. Oh. Have you have you shot things? Yeah, absolutely, goats? you have. Sure, it's have cool. You, have you hit a goat with a piece of melon? I don't know if I ever hit one. It, they they kind of lands and they run over there. And who thought of this? Some genius. Hmm. Hey, let's shoot stuff at the goats. <laughs> I mean, People will love While it. hammered on wine. <laughs> <laughs> I mean, you're, they're, you're, they're, they're going way up in the air. You're lofting it in. It's not, it's well, not that like, doesn't make it. It's not you like know, that's what the, the Germans goats. said when they were bombing London. They're way up in the air. <laughs> hey, V2s. Then, we're lobbing in the V2s. <sighs> I guess. What's wrong with you? I think I... Major League Baseball players are voicing their concerns, and this has been going on for about a week, and uh, I thought it was a rumor. I thought someone had made it up, but now evidently it is true. According to Major League Baseball players, the new uniforms, they've, they've made a change, and they're all concerned about the... Hold on to yourself. Chris. Okay. See-through nature of their pants. Oh, trying mm. to get more ladies to watch. Evidently, the Major League Baseball Players Association is gathering feedback on the controversy while hoping changes can be made before opening day. Players Association Executive Director Tony Clark. Oh, I think he played for the Padres or the Giants. A lot of the rhetoric is confirmation that the pants are see-through. That's so his quote. Do they all wear white well, the white pants, not all, okay. but uh, Majority. I think all teams have a white option for their pants. Okay. Yeah, this, uh, that. this is controversial, and the other aspect of it is they look really chintzy. Usually baseball spokesperson said adjustments are also being made to the jersey size. Everything's a little cut down a little bit. Players are complaining they're too tight. Hmm. Inseam, thigh fit, waist, bottom of the pants. Players say they're way too tight. Major League Baseball Commissioner Rob Manfred 
said of the Nike-designed Fanatics manufactured pants, I think after people wear them a little bit, they're going to be really popular. And the the um, lettering is not sewn on. It's... Uh, it's, like, a, it's called a heat press. press. They, oh. look, they look like the fake uniforms well, you, you know, buy there's for the Rollins. five bucks. Oh, yeah. They're not, they're not, Josh, they're not stitched. I mean, I can get a commander's jersey that's stitched, tackle, twill numbers. Yeah. Uh, it would be delivered tomorrow. Why can't they? But Which they're not. looks so much better. Major League Baseball, they're heat pressing the numbers and the, uh. and the names. And they seem a little smaller on the back of the jerseys. They, they okay. just don't look right. Don't yeah, look I don't right. know why they're going What was around. wrong with the old uniforms? What if they're trying to make them cooler temperature-wise? Oh, that could yeah, be. Yeah, and this was a big thing. It was Nike, right? <laughs> Nike, and mm -hmm. this and is the first, and I'm getting this wrong. I forget. Uh, I apologize, but I don't think I am. Fanatics. That company that runs all whatever professional organization, as far as athletics go, you want to NFL, NHL, you want to buy a jersey, Fanatics sells it. They're making Major League Baseball jerseys this year for the first time. Wow. And that's the problem, mm. I guess. But the, the players are really pissed. They're, I would be, too. If you go online and look up a picture of new uniform pants and baseball players, it's remarkable how many testicles you can see. Yeah. <laughs> He's standing 6'5", 250 pounds on yes. first base, approximately 3.6 inches flaccid, yes. as you can see. <laughs> the uh -oh. only people safe are going to be the first baseman because he can put his glove over his, <laughs> his groin. Sure. Oh. That's well, that, uh, that's the lucky oh. underwear he's wearing is filthy. <laughs> Did you find a picture of the uh, no, see-through pants? No, I'm afraid to look. No, yeah, no, you no. can see the I, the you one must. I saw. You can see the guy's jock strap through. So it. they do wear a jock strap. You simply must. Well, so you'll get to oh, yeah. see their buns. That'll be nice. Oh, yeah, the, the typically players ball players yeah. have. They'll see more foul balls, and I do mean balls. <laughs> the guy, the pictures I've seen so far, I see no jock strap. Oh, really? I see an outline of testicles, and I know what they look like because I have a pair. <laughs> mm. Yes, you should I be well aware. Of I finally got them back <laughs> after that legal uh, entanglement. Yeah, <laughs> so to speak. And that attorney did not want to give them back. <laughs> no. Well, yeah, it's a big deal. It's uh, making making headlines, and I guess they're making some adjustments right now. Yeah, you can see the headline. And I, I did hear the pants and everything. I did hear <laughs> one account that said that uh, uh, players that have large buns. <laughs> The players with the larger buttocks are particularly upset about these pants. Boy, can you imagine if Kirby Puckett were uh, putting... Whoa! He had an ass. I'm going to I'm gonna say, and this might not be... Uh, bigger the bun, the oh, more boy. power you get from your uh, your bottom half. That's all there is to it. There's more yeah. muscle back there. More torque? Yes! You hmm. see him? Yeah, Christy is... Yeah, uh, but all I see are jerseys tucked in. This guy has, like, jock... Um, briefs on, uh, uh, but you can see them. Oh yeah, you can see. See them. right through the pants. That's a problem. Look, Pat, you, you have a little, little something a... for us. Sure. Yeah. yeah. I can see clearly now <laughs> your underwear. <laughs> <laughs> I can see all the way to your pubic hair. <laughs> Gone are the uniforms that hid your bat and balls. <laughs> oh, I can see it's tight, oh, too tight. <laughs> Junk in my face. <laughs> oh, I can see through your pants. You have a jock strap on. I can see a hairy ass swinging at home plate. I can tell what religion the shortstop is. <laughs> I can tell you right now, there's a huge dick on first base. Yeah, that's that's uh, the picture I saw right there. If oh, uh, whoa. yeah, right there, and if you zoom in a little bit, yeah, yeah, right, you can. Um, Javi, can you find this? That one may be a time? testicle, chick. Yeah, I, I think it might be a testicle. Yeah, well, I mean, I it's, would say two, but two right there. Yeah, they'd be small. Two testicles. See them, Tom? Oh, uh, there we go. Well, uh, uh, once again, I guess they're going to be. I don't even know who that guy changing is. Changing the major league baseball uniforms. You want to watch when you bend over? That's for darn sure. Yeah, they they can't allow that. They're going to have to redo uh, something. Um, right. I, 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 the, the idea was to make them. Uh, what are we? A month less away, hot? Or? Is that correct? 
It must have been. I don't know. But they're thin, and okay, well, there's a, it's, it's a big controversy in the world of baseball. I think, and I think Josh will agree with me, someone's trying to save some money. Yeah, that yeah. could easily be it, too. The, the other big complaint is uh, that they they look really cheap. They, yeah, they, inexpensive, they said. Well, when you can see the jersey below the pant line, it does look cheap. That hmm. looks bad. Now, um, uh, coming up, we have... Uh, Hooters news. Yep. Hoots. Also, we have uh, the science of sex toys. Kind of interesting. You'll be uh, quite surprised as to some of the results of this survey. Right now, I want to um, say hello to our friends at HelloFresh, asking you to get cozy because it's winter time and it's also time to get rid of the eating blahs. Maybe adding some new flavors, some new things to your diet. Uh, because uh, you're sick of the same restaurants, you're sick of making your own food. HelloFresh has over 45 recipes on the menu each week, and they don't just have the recipes. They send you the stuff. They send you the goods. They send you the food. Fresh ingredients all measured out for you. You just put them together. Sometimes just a few minutes if it's something you just pop in the oven, and they've got every array uh, of food you could imagine from vegetarian over that way all the way over here to good old classic comfort food. Once again, dozens of chef-curated recipes each week. By the way, it's uh, going to be faster than restaurant delivery and less expensive. Christy, what are you working on? Well, you talk about not bland. The Southwest Beef Cavatappi with poblano and smoky red pepper crema. This is an amazing one dish meal. Takes five minutes to prep, 35 minutes to cook. They send you all the stuff you need and they have this beautiful card with six easy steps that you can follow along and make this beautiful Beautiful dish. HelloFresh even provides photographs so you know uh, yeah. what goes where. It's that simple. Also, how about a great breakfast? Well, how about free breakfast for life with HelloFresh while you keep that subscription active? Each box is going to have a free breakfast right there. HelloFresh.com slash BT Show Free. That code, once again, BT Show Free at HelloFresh.com slash BT Show Free. Warm up those chilly mornings with a great breakfast courtesy of HelloFresh. Once again, the code is BT Show Free. The place is HelloFresh. Dot com slash BT show free. Also coming up today, Florida Man. The Florida Man games have taken place. We'll hear about those. And this more is, on Tom's memories is catapults and harbor Uh Street. This is the Bob and Tom Show. Thanks for listening to the Bob and Tom Show this morning. Catch any part of the show you... Hey, it's Josh Arnold with a food recommendation for you. Gardner's Wisconsin Cheese, their famous oven-baked cheese. It arrives pre-baked. You just heat it and eat it, grill it, skillet, or air fry it. Check out their new oven-baked cheese flavor, jalapeno. Ooey, gooey, spicy cheese. It's sure to tickle your taste buds with real jalapeno flavor and heat. Perfect for game day parties or any time. Excuse me, are, um, are you serious with this? I mean, why are you doing this? Me, uh, the real me is right here. I could easily be doing this. We, we don't need you, man. I, uh, look, there's only room for one of us. That's Gardner's Wisconsin Cheese Jalapeno Flavored Oven Baked Cheese. It's now available in Gardner's Oven Baked Bundle Package, so try all the great flavors. Receive free cold pack shipping and free cheese curds when you spend $59 or more at GardnersWisconsinCheese.com. Click the link below and tell them your pal Josh, me the real Josh, from the Bob and Tom Show sent you. to play my ukulele she strums it and she hums it she loves to sing an island song so won't you sing along ukulele baby you can play me you can lay me satisfy me in hawaii ukulele lady you can lay me 
my ukulele baby Ukulele baby licky licky on my wicky wanna lay you in my maya ukulele lady you can lay me my ukulele baby Good night. <laughs> Two minutes after that. Go away. Stalker's Choice Coffee. The coffee is so oh good, he'll come back again and again and again. Some more coffee. Some more coffee. Go away. Some coffee. You I'm going to call me. the police. You want it so bad. I'm calling my You want it so bad. Stalker's yes. Choice Coffee. Share it. some with a neighbor. Stalker's Choice. It's what obsessive compulsive relationships are made of. <laughs> <laughs> You're listening to Bob and Tom Radio. 24-7. We have a woman who was born in the former Soviet Union, the Ukraine. She's a beautiful young woman. She is engaged to be married. Her name is Kira Soltanovich. You're getting married. Getting married. You're th- you want to have kids. You want to have kids right away. Definitely or? want to have kids. The, uh, the do you have only... any nephews or nieces? I do. I am a great aunt. Mm-hmm. Um, but I get a little scared because the nieces are all at that age. Like like you have girls, so you know. Gonna, sure. Yeah. I have a niece that's like 11. There's 13, 15, 17. You know what I mean? It's all like that scary age. Oh, jeez. Sure. And the 11-year-old is the worst. Like, she's starting to dress sexy. Uh-oh. What is that? Like, that? doesn't that scare you when they start dressing Absolutely. like all... Like, she wears little baby tops, you know, little half tops. Mm-hmm. And there's, you know, it's like, nasty girl or something. You know what I mean? Yeah. Like, so inappropriate. I told her, I said, if you have a t-shirt, you're 11 years old, that says nasty girl, it better be because you don't wipe your ass. <laughs> <laughs> you're 11. <laughs> I actually uh, I have a, a sexual fantasy associated with the earthquake. Go. All right. Well, check out. Uh-huh. Mm. Uh, in my fantasy, I am making love to this woman. Yeah. And then all of a sudden, she feels the earth move beneath her. Mm. Ah, yes. And then she rolls over on top of me and shields me from debris. <laughs> 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 Safety first, everybody. Safety first. Hi, this is Mike. Mills coming up. Hey, welcome back to the Bob and Tom Show. Lots going on today. Sporting world is uh, seems like feels like it's blowing up. I'm not sure. A lot of odd stories. A uh, controversy story. in the world of baseball with the uh, the new uniforms are apparently semi see through, and no one's happy about it. 
I don't know if that would be the case. I know the players are probably not very happy about it. I think some of their fans. Well, they also look cheap. Would the, be excited. The uniforms look cheap. They do. They, they have. Do. Uh, they're, they they're, have. They're not embroidered no. with the names. It's. They look it's, like they ordered them on Timu. Press on. Yeah. Yeah. yeah exactly. Yeah, yeah. That's yes. perfect, Josh. Somebody put up a Mariners jersey from last year and a Mariners jersey from this year side by side, and it's remarkable how much smaller the letters are and they're, they're heat press and mm -hmm. they don't look as good. At all, Tom. Yeah, yeah, it looks like homemade. You don't have a jersey of even your favorite team, the Cleveland Browns. You don't have a jersey or anything? Uh, I do not have a Browns I had, I do have a number of uh, NFL jerseys in well, my Well, yeah, closet. but they're collectible or something, right? And they're in frames. Is that no, what you're no, saying? I, I have a couple of those in the hallway here. You know how many times I've thought, you know what? This is the year I'm going to buy him a Cleveland Browns letter jacket. Yeah. You know? Save your money. No, no, I have. Oh, I have. You know what I did instead? I bought me a Washington whatever letter jacket. <laughs> yeah. uh, uh, Do you have a whole closet just of... <laughs> yeah. That's so cool, though. Oh, yeah. No, but that's Lots really kind of cool. Lots of stuff. It all must go. I feel sorry for my daughter next week when she has to clean the house. <laughs> now, um... Oh, yeah. uh, What's Joe. going on? Hey, hey, hey. Show. <laughs> Speaking of that, uh, we're talking earlier about uh, NFL referees and NHL referees now uh, taking over the games and becoming uh, personalities in their own right. This is our latest one from last week. Uh, he had to uh, make a call in front of the St. Louis Blues crowd and they were not going to like it, as he states here. They're not going to like it, but the call on the ice was correct. No call. <laughs> <laughs> no goal. <laughs> and then someone uh, sent us information. Uh, this guy, uh, William from Piqua, the NH NHL referee clip you feature is Garrett Rank. He's good enough golfer that he qualified for the U U.S. Open in 2018. He shot two uh, 71 and a 71 in sectional qualifiers. Wow. But then uh, William from Piqua mentioned that uh, Wes McCauley is also famous in the world of the National All Hockey right. League for making this call. For fighting! <laughs> He's, he is uh, a great ref when it comes to... So what, which one uh, Which one do, uh, do you want to do all five, or do you want me to make, uh, make the top three, and then you guys pick which one you like, or... Go ahead, play them. Okay, here we go. Foul, number 99 of the defense, F3 tackle the quarterback. He's giving them business down there at the 15-yard penalty. That's number one. I love that one. All start offense, the entire offensive line. <laughs> That's number two. Intentional grounding, offense number seven. It's a 10-yard penalty. I'm talking to America here. So. <laughs> I, I, like, That's my I like the way he's so calm. Yeah, yeah, that's great. He's, 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 no he's not, I'm talking to America. He's going, hey, true. I'm talking to America. You're really condescending yeah. to the guy. One and three are definitely in. And yeah. now here are the two hockey ones. You're not going to like it, but the call on the ice was <laughs> correct. No goal. <laughs> that's, that's number good. four. And this is number five. New York, number 75, Minnesota. Five guys each for fighting. Fighting. It's too, it's too wrestling. Uh, oh, that's, that's the idea, yeah. yeah. But it's... He's... he's, he's uh, Kind of posing and yeah, I, I he's having fun. It doesn't seem as natural as the other, just like he thought about it. I think our top three would be. You're not going to like it, but the call on the ice was correct. No goal. And. Intentional grounding. <laughs> Offense number seven. <laughs> it's a 10 yard penalty. I'm talking to America here. <laughs> I love, I love that. That's the greatest. Oh, wait a minute. That Hang is on. the greatest. Foul oh. number 99 of the defense. F3 tackle the quarterback. He's given them. Very much. Yeah, I, top three. Yeah, I, I like that one because that reminds me of something I would do. You 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 forget what you were going to say. Right. You're trying to <laughs> sort of compose something on the fly. He's you know he's he's giving them the business. He just throws it out there. Give them the business down there. That yeah. was great. Those are some classics. I th and there I think there are a bunch more out there if you'd like to participate. Oh. How about this? Uh, an Arizona team became the first female ever to win a high school wrestling title in her state while competing against boys this past weekend. Good for oh, her. Oh, wow. Heavyweight? <laughs> <laughs> what, not necessarily. Oh, oh, oh. 
<laughs> Audrey Jimenez, an 18-year-old from Sunnyside High School in Tucson. My won name, the, Audrey Jimenez. D1 title in the 106-pound weight class. So she's yeah, a tiny little all. thing. Yeah. Oh, look at her. Oh, dude, she wow. is a... She's a brick ass house. Of, of, <laughs> of, of, <laughs> she's, she's built. She doesn't look like she has an ounce of fat on her. Just, for her. She looks like she outweighs the kid she beat by about twenty pounds. I, Mitch obviously, Kunstein. she can't. <laughs> yeah. Dude, you look at how awesome that uh, that. Reference? Yeah, it, the mustache on that guy. Yeah. Do you remember me when That's I was an wrote, Arizona mustache? Right yeah, there. that is. Josh, you're you're relatively new here. You you don't might might not know this. I got thrown off my. Uh, my high school wrestling team. Why? Did you know that? Is that right? Yeah, I, I came. <laughs> oh, and so they... Yeah. That's a lot of contact. Hey, look, man, this... Uh, look, this has never I would say this uh, isn't for you, but I think it's two for you. <laughs> the, uh, yeah, check the, I check can't. The, check the guy's oil, did you? Jimenez said the crowd was just crazy, so that's what made it seem more like, oh, wow, hey, I, that's right, I just won state. Uh, Jimenez is sort of in shock that she won the title. The crowd roaring in celebration. The referee raises her arm. Uh, she's used to winning uh, state titles in her high school career, but it always came against girls. For the past three years, she's been required to compete against girls despite facing boys during the regular season. Wow. But wouldn't... I'm not even going to... I don't even think... Her, uh, the uh, boy she defeated uh, name is in the story. So I, I can't imagine. You know, I, I hope they're not. Making fun of him? How would you like to be on the wrestling team yeah. and get beaten? And, uh, yeah, even, yeah, true. Even but, so, but she's yeah. amazing. I mean, obviously. and you look at, yeah, yeah. Right. Yeah, she's clearly, it's more, it's just skill here. I don't think it's, it's not the <laughs> the opposite story that we've been seeing right. everywhere. Of, right, right. <laughs> Boy playing with girl. Well, there's another injured chick. Yeah. <laughs> she she won the match 7-5 after being down 4-2 early on. She beat four male wrestlers, including the championship match opponent, to win the title. Oh. Well, uh, coming up. Congratulations. Yeah, um, we job. have uh, uh, in sports stilts in the news. Stilts in the news. Um, also, we have a, a scientific survey about um, bedroom toys. For adults. And American ice football mm -hmm. in Germany. Okay, we'll find out about all these things when we come back. This is the Bob and Tom Show. Hey, thanks for listening to the Bob and Tom Show this morning. Get a look at today's show on our YouTube channel. Use big words. I got a little test here. What, what are we test doing? are we doing? No, don't do this. What? Now, I want you to hand this to Jessica. <laughs> and uh, it's, uh, I, I don't want to give too many hints. Why is that go. still in here? I, I want know. you to figure out what that is, Jessica. Describe, I, you put, put it down, and it's got those, it those rubberized bite. rods sticking up. They're about four inches in length and about, yeah. a, I would say, three quarters of an inch in uh, diameter. What do you think those are? Can I, you describe the four of them? Go left to right. Well, Actually, go right, to, go right to left. <laughs> Just describe Well, they're limper to stiffer. Oh, yeah, this, this, the left little rod is very wiggly. Yes, very. Squishy. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. And number two gets wiggly. a little bit mm -hmm. firmer. Yeah. Still mm -hmm. wiggly. Number right. three. Again, a little bit more firm. Is that normally, do you normally pull it back <laughs> and flick it with I, your... Okay. No, flicker. Then what's the, 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 the last one? one that's the last one is just Don't straight up hard. Flick it with your finger. Ow. What do you think that is? I'm starting to think this represents a penis. You're correct. Yeah. Uh, four of them. The revolution. Or res <laughs> that's if that's if you're going to a doctor and, and you're you have looking for an erectile dysfunction drug. Yeah. Oh. That's what you use to describe the uh, level of uh, flaccidity, if you will. That you currently have. Yeah, if oh. you're going to use a big word. I don't think you need to go if you're at four. No. Mm-hmm. Gonna put, put, take that out of your mouth and put yeah. it down. Oh uh, my God! <laughs> oh. I just like playing with number one. It's all uh, wiggly and squishy. Jessica, yes. Uh, I'll take ten percent if I testify for you. How's that? It's sort of like a dildo buffet. Oh. Oh. Tiki Barber here. Remember the days when I was a running back in the NFL? Well, if you're on your feet all day like I was, you get the struggle. The secret is orange insoles. Their insoles are like magic for your feet and body. They'll help you kick hip pain, sore feet, and lower back discomfort to the sidelines. Feel better, do more with orange insoles. Oh, wait a minute. Chick's doing his uh, office chair dance. Yeah. It looks like you're having a stroke. <laughs> a stroke of genius. <laughs> 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 
So this isn't your song again? This isn't. No, this is just Can you give me the... Can you kill that? This is your favorite song, then. Maybe I can... Yeah. This is your favorite song. Christina Watchman, great favorite disco song. Oh, Josh is dancing now. This is... Are you reaching for the stars there? What the hell is that dance? So if you were on the dance floor, you would not do that. Well, to this song, probably, because really? it would mean we were at a wedding or something. I beg your pardon? Of course he would. <laughs> now, by by we, <laughs> oh, you'd have a date and do that in front well, of a of woman? of course he would. Well, no, I Hope don't they're take serving they, I typically don't take dates to weddings. You Why know, not? Oh, you, you, you pick, pick up, up the maid of honor. Sure, yeah. You know, Tom, there are only a few women who are attracted to self-important hubris. And <laughs> Josh is out there on the dance floor trying to have fun. You're over in the corner pontificating about how you wouldn't have gotten the cake that they chose for their right. wedding. And there are only a few women going to come over. He's interesting. That's why you're socially awkward. That's why you've so, always been socially so awkward. So who would you be doing that dance, be. dance with? Whoever's out there. Really? Your I nieces, they love to dance. Sure. They yes. be if, if oh, the, go the, to a uh, bridesmaids. The niece feet on your feet and oh, dancing them around. And that. let me let me tell you this. When Wait, I when broads, I dance broads are a sucker for that move. When I dance, people I, I don't go to people. People come to me. <laughs> <laughs> That's right. <laughs> so let's see it again. He's moving the shoulders. Now he's reaching for the stars with his with a grin in his face. Yeah. Is there enough networks now to just be the Bob and Tom network and have oh, us on God. TV all the time? Well, we're on TV See, right now in the VIP cameras. Right. Well, we can't get all the listeners in that room. Okay, that was helpful. Not at all. Okay. <laughs> Are you so sure it's not Eminence Front by the Who? I'm, I'm checking uh, social media now to see if anybody. Well, sing the disco song that's stuck in your head that you can't remember. He, he only knows, knows the. the Da, 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 uh, try Rubber Band Man. Um, oh. Rubber Band Man. The Rubber Band Man. Da, da, da. <laughs> yeah, I don't remember da, da, that. I've had multiple da. people suggesting that. So. Oh. Oh, really? Yeah. That, that may be it, then. That might yeah, be. hopefully it is. Now, what is the instrument doing that? Da, 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 da. Da, 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 da. I don't know. It's kind of a high pitch. I don't know what it is. Okay. Okay. Well, we'll have to explore. Maybe it's a rubber band. Dean's looking for it. Okay. Um, sorry. Is, is it this one? Oh. oh this is good. This is good. Yes. Yeah. Yes. Yeah. quickly. Hi, Louie. Hi, Louie. Louis. Louis. Louis Katz is here with us. Louie, you look like a uh, 20-year-old uh, Woody Allen, but I don't know anything about you except that you are actually from Los Angeles, California, born and raised. Yeah. Grew that's up very there. unusual. Yeah. Rare. Very rare. But mm -hmm. that's, that's For comedians. I mean, most everybody, most of them all move there. But, yeah, everyone moves there, but I'm actually from there. Okay. Are you married or single? Or? Uh, no, I'm I'm uh, I'm single. A lot of my friends are starting to get married, though, uh -huh. which is kind of oh, weird. Okay. Uh, rest of us use condoms, but uh, some of us are starting to get married. Uh, yeah. Uh, it's, it's, it's tough for me, though, because I'm like, I'm supposed to be happy for them. They're getting married, but it's just, I'm just not happy at all for them. It just seems kind of pathetic to me. I mean, these are like, they're grown men, but all of a sudden they get married. They have to start asking for permission before they do stuff, you know. Oh, yeah. They're always apologizing for things. It seems like they don't even know what for, just stuck on repeat, just sorry, 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 mm -hmm. sorry. You know? mm -hmm. And as soon as they get married, they all get these big old guts on them, you know. I mean, that that's not from drinking beer. That's from swallowing pride. <laughs> 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 a new interpretation? Yeah. You know you're too high when you're eating cereal naked and your girlfriend tells you to put some clothes on, you realize it's not your girlfriend, it's just a woman on a bus. So <laughs> that's how you know you're too high. Bob and Tom. Five. Four. Three. Two. two one. one. <laughs> <laughs> Tom. Hey, welcome back to the Bob and Tom Show. Christy Lee at the news desk. Hello. There's Pat Godwin. Hey, Chick. He's over there in the performance room. Josh Arnold's here. Hey, Chick. There's Ace Cosby. Hey. I am Chick McGee, and here's Tom. Chris Wall. Thank you very much, Chick McGee. Uh, it's good to see you. I hope you had a great weekend. 
Um, a lot of interesting things in sports. Date uh, uh, the, uh, I'm sorry, the the wrestling uh, situation you discussed earlier with the young lady, give us now the state champion in Tucson. Yeah. Congratulations, it's amazing. Audrey Jimenez. All right, yes. um, she and is champion. Uh, the baseball uniforms, big controversy. Major League Baseball uniforms, they look kind of chintzy, and they're more or less see-through. See right through them. The players are not happy. So they're, uh... Don't guess, you think they would have consulted with the players before they, they made them? They claim that they did, but who knows. Uh, they're supposed to be uh, lighter and uh, and more comfortable, but I guess they're not, so... But they do look cheap. They, you know, the, the, the letters are not sewn on. They're kind of... As you said, what was... How did you put it, Josh? It looks like they purchased them from... Timu. Yeah. Timu. Yeah. Just a uh, so terrible, terrible <laughs> looking product. A rip off. <laughs> we'll see what happens. Uh, we return to the sports desk with Chick McGee. What have we missed? Hey, it's Germany. Hey, it's Germany television. And isn't it time for American football to be played on ice? I think it is. <laughs> <laughs> uh, German TV's on a different level. Uh, let's see. Um, they, on February 11th, American Ice Football is the Future was the name of the television program in Mannheim, home of the steamrollers. Yes. That's right. <laughs> yes. Uh, it was 8.15 uh, Eastern time, and there were, uh, there are four teams in the running for the ice football tournament each year. Each team comprises eight players from a pool of 32 fo ice football participants. The teams compete against each other in American football rules. Uh, the forward pass, running, th all the, the three down. Four and they're down. not wearing skates. Uh, hang on. The teams compete against each other. It says on mirror smooth ice with all matches featuring players wearing bowling shoes. Oh, Whoa, okay. As if it wasn't slick oh. enough. Wow. Uh, as the German uh, public relations article continues, it, this adds an element of anticipation as viewers witness numerous falls on the ice. Uh, a German-American football player serves as the captain of each team, and they say it gives them, some, in Germany, someone to cheer for, it says. there. Would you like to hear the names of the teams? Sure. Yes, please. The North Coast Naughties. Mm -hmm. The Easty Boys, oh, I like that one. the South Coast Smoothies, <laughs> and the West Side Wesses. I don't know. Wesses? Hmm. I don't know who that. And then there are celebrities that are on the football team. You uh, think that the injuries would be. I can't imagine how you could play severe, this and right? not almost kill yourself. Right? Um, on the West Side Wesses, for example, a German football player, Alexander Hoppert, they tried this with soccer, or as they say, football in Germany, and it was evidently incredibly successful, so they decided to move to American football. Uh -huh. Wow, okay. Uh, Alexander Halpert is a German football player. He plays on the West Side Wesses, along with Axel Stein, an actor and comedian, <laughs> and Calvin Kleinen. <laughs> oh, a rapper and reality star. Ah, uh, all right. How about that? Boy, oh boy. I would uh, I would watch this. Uh, I don't know if I'd watch. I'd watch this sooner than I would the UFL or what, the XF, XUFL or What's whatever. What's it called now? Whatever they're calling it. What is it called now? UFL. It oh, is when does it, it start? United Football League? March 30th. Oh. And okay. speaking of this league, you should be excited. The NFL adopted several rules that were part of the original USFL uh, uh, decades ago with kickoffs almost non-existent. This year, the NFL has announced they may adopt the XFL's current kickoff model for the 2024 season. And when they say XFL, they mean yeah. UFL because the XFL is merged. Mm -hmm. Okay. NFL owners could vote on the proposal next month to adopt the XFL's kickoff model. I'm going to attempt to explain this. Everybody keep your eye on Tom. Okay. The XFL rule. He's here's asleep. What, here's, what, <laughs> here's what the NFL wants to adopt. Yes. Okay. Kicker lines up at his 30-yard line with the 10 other members of the kickoff team lining up at the opponent's 35, five yards away from the returning team. Are you clear so far? Yeah. Yeah. Okay. The kicker and the returner are the only players who can move until the ball is caught. 
touchbacks from that situation are at uh, the 35-yard line. The NFL current rules, kicking team lines up at the 35, eight returning team members within 15 yards, double team blocks are permitted. They all start and they run into each other. The XFL, it would encourage returns, but it would... Cut down on high-speed collisions right. Right. and people running into each other. Because the gents were already all down there. They're already down there, and they, they yeah, not running into each other. So I think it's a, I think it would be a good, uh, a good way. Can you harass the guy? The kicker? <laughs> no, 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 the, the, the guy that's going to catch the ball. Oh, you can yell? Miss! Well, I, w- I would you at least be able to do that. I would think you. You certainly can. I don't know how you would keep from it if you're that close to it. You're going to drop it, dummy. Yeah. That kind of thing. You can't tell me a guy do- runs down on a punt and he's there waiting for the guy to catch it. He's so I, I, I'm sorry. How far away are they? They're at the 30, five yards. So not far. And they can't move. They can't move until, until he, he catches, catches the ball. ball. I think right. it's a great rule. And now they're doing it on ice. But, oh, oh that was the previous story. We're going to vote on that, but we don't think it'll pass. <laughs> I don't think the ice thing's going to hold up. Maybe, maybe in Minnesota. But I don't. Uh, That's interesting. I don't know. You think they'll do it? I, I hope they do. I think it, I, kickoff returns are non-existent right now. Everybody, and it's really easy par, or a PR for them. But it does, that doesn't, it doesn't eliminate the kickers from being able to kick it out of the end zone. Hmm. And making it impossible to return, but still, is the, is, I'm sorry. And the kicker is where? Of the 35. His or is it the 30? His 30. Yeah. Do you think they should back them back them up a little bit? I don't know, Tom. I because <laughs> your know. point is they can they're all what they, do you think? they can all kick it out of the. What do you think, Tom? I think that if it goes through the uprights, uh huh, that you do it from the 20. If it goes through the uprights, you give them a couple of points. That'd be a 90 yard yep. field goal. Yeah. I agree right? with that. <laughs> I, I think it's worth immediately just seven points. But he has to make known his... Uh, <laughs> yes, he has to call the shot. He has to call it. And if he wants to hit one of the posts, if he calls it, it's ten points. A ten uh, points? Yes. That's From 90 yards, hit the post. Jeez. How would you like to be on the winning team of a, of a Super Bowl as kicker hit the goal post after he called it and scored ten well, points? Well, no, no matter time. when the game takes place in the season, if the kicker kicks it, and the ball lands perfectly on top of one of the poles <laughs> and stays there. Game's over. Game's over. It's Super Bowl winner. Yeah, you have <laughs> Super whole, Bowl winner. The, the whole season. season's over. The season's over. You have won everything. Man. Might I like cause that some rule. financial hardships. <laughs> uh, I like that rule very well. It'll the season's never... been canceled. It was the third game of the year. With... <laughs> That's an interesting rule. <laughs> there you go, Tom. How do you like that? Cam Newton, former NFL quarterback. Uh, in the middle of a skirmish over the weekend during an 18 and under 7-on-7 seven seven football tournament in Atlanta. Let me say that again. An 18 and under 7-on-7 seven seven football tournament in Atlanta. The former league MVP seen on camera Sunday fighting off several people who were members of a participating team, Top Shelf Performance. That's a national program. It's unclear why Newton was in the fight. Newton is founder of C1N, a professional sports organization that took part in the 7-on-7 tournament and won the tournament. Newton's team won the tournament. The former Panthers and Patriots quarterback not played in the NFL since 21. He recently said he'd consider making a comeback at the Falcons. Wanted him to be... But during the fight, you can in the video, you can plainly see Cam... Uh, let's see if you can pick Cam out. Oh. <laughs> him, him and his hat. Yes. Yeah. Looks like he's wearing the sorting hat from Harry Potter. That's what I was going to say. Or a witch's hat. Sort of, yeah. yeah. Looks, like, looks sort of pointy. And... Are you a sorcerer now? You wow. know, there, there are several people there fighting with Cam Newton who doesn't care that it's Cam Newton. Or yeah, they, no, they don't care. He's, he's got to be 6'4", six, 6'5", six, at least. And in that hat, he's 6'7", I bet. <laughs> and it does look like the sorting hat on Harry Potter. That's weird. He likes his hair sticking out of the top of the Yes, his hat. that's okay, yeah. He likes that very much. Okay. Um, go for it, buddy. Cam Newton's has many, many hats. Did you know that, Tom? Uh, it is. Uh, yeah. Pat, do you have a song about that? Cam Newton's hats <laughs> are always fancy headwear. <laughs> Cam Newton's hats are making ugly headlines. Cam Newton got punched. In a pointy witch's hat <laughs> You could hear the awful sounds Somebody was going down Cam's hat never hit the ground Cam Newton's hat 
custom made with fancy feathers <laughs> Cam Newton's hat Purple lids and pink fedoras Cam Newton's hats Like Grandma's Easter bonnet Whoa, everyone a fine chapeau <laughs> Some furry with a crazy bow Looks like he runs a bordello Cam Newton <laughs> <laughs> A nice tribute to uh, Bill Withers uh, that was just Great. beautiful, Pat. Thank you Thanks. very much. Yeah, uh, if you th I think you haven't cried uh, enough today. Go listen to Grandma's hands, will you? Okay. Yeah, yeah, sure. uh, uh, back to uh, th thank you very much, uh, Pat. Now, um, uh, uh, coming up, we have Christy Lee at the news desk. We'll have more sporting news, including some world records. I know that are very interesting. That's right. But right now, if you want to uh, rest in the compound, have a nice quiet week, and feel confident that you're safe and secure what do you do chick peace of mind that's right tom simply safe trusted by the experts the design it yourself do it yourself home security system named best home security system of 2024 by u.s news and world report offering everything you need for whole home protection hd cameras inside and out advanced motion sensors entry sensors as well as hazard sensors that detect fire flooding ice and more simply safe system easy to set up yourself i've done it without any special tools or know-how required but yes if you prefer you can get one of simply safe's expert technicians to come to your house and install it for you plus with a 60 day uh, 60 day risk-free trial if you don't love your system you can return it for a full refund and for bob and tom show listeners only order now to get 20 percent off any new simply safe system with fast protect monitoring by visiting simplysafetom.com that's simplysafetom.com and remember there's no safe like simply safe thank you chick mcgee coming up outer space news uh news about the band rage against the machine uh very confusing and uh is playing a musical instrument good for your brain well, we're going we're gonna to find out what the scientists have to say about that. This is the Bob and Tom Show. My, my favorite news story of the year today. Yogi in disguise. Mm -hmm. uh, Christy, can I just read you the headline? Because this That's really you. is mostly about you. <laughs> I know exactly where you're going with this. I know, you know what exactly stories? what story. It involves bass players. That's all it, he's going to yes, have to say. Yes, it involves a scientific study yes. of bass players. Yes. And uh, this is the, the over greatest under, story. The over-under on a, a, a musicians Christie's dated. I'm going to go 12. Over dated? Dated. Oh, by dated, he's, va you know, it's kind of a vague. No, 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 one date, not necessarily. Chris Ace uh, is back there giggling, over, under, 12? <laughs> over, under, 12. Ooh. Should I take the over? <laughs> <laughs> no, now I have to Just think about date. it. Yeah, think about it. Put, pen, think put okay. pen to paper. But bass players in the news in a very <laughs> positive way. What do you define as dating? Uh, yeah, watch out. my, watch my, oh, you see this, this finger? <laughs> Don't do and that, the, no, no, that's not a date. That's no. not a date. Wait, oh, so we're not talking bedded? That's not a date. Thank you, Josh. No, we're not talking date. bedded. I'll okay. say this. So uh, uh, an intimate encounter in the back of a car is not a date. I'm no. going to say, no, and I'm going to say. I've never had that, to be honest with you. You rode somewhere. Hang on a second. In the car with him, and he was driving. Okay. That's a date. You have never had any kind of an intimate encounter in an automobile or a truck? Uh, not oh. in the back seat. <laughs> ah, I, I, Your Honor, I, I rest my case. And under uh, the, the categories the are defense, potpourri. Uh, the defense rests. Uh, potpourri. I'd like to call uh, Mrs. Christie Roadhead Lee to the stand, please. No, no. Well, you potpourri. can be more in the front seat Pot than that. Potables, famous American. Uh, once again, truck uh, bed sex. I rest my case. <laughs> Glad that we're back. I just suffered through six minutes of bum, 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 Josh bum, bum. and Christie shopping for candles. No, we weren't. Not you quite. weren't even paying attention? Yes, and then Josh. Goes, I've got a coupon. No, we were looking for an avocado tool. Yes. New tool. tool. And you know what? Oh, I'm yes. Sorry. I we do have that. a coupon. <laughs> and what's wrong with that? And he goes, I'm going to go to Bed Bath and Beyond today because I have a coupon. And he'll get a coupon. I'm going to get, get candles and an avocado tool. Yep. What are they going to pen it? A t shirt? <laughs> what kind of candle are you getting? What, fl what flavor candle are you looking for? I like pumpkin. That's right. Uh, oh, now's a good time for that. Yeah. Good time of year. I had object, but I happen to have Do you ever a go into a candle <laughs> myself, so I end of my objection. Do you ever go into a store and pick up something, and you don't really look at the price, and you take it up to the register, and they go one hundred one ninety eight, and you go, what? What? <laughs> uh, I 101 did that. 101.98? I, I went, I bought two candles. You know those two little wooden candles I have on the kitchen? Yes. Table? Those are 50 bucks a piece. No kidding. I mean, I, <laughs> I well, couldn't believe That's why off the air I asked Christy, why are candles $95? Yeah. Oh, and wow. I said, plus people are stupid enough to and pay And being it. a media darling, I couldn't say, well, I just... <laughs> 
need to put this back. Yeah. I'd rather not pay fifty dollars for a candle. But I said, nah, I'd wipe my butt with twenties. I don't care. Uh, <laughs> boy, I know. Is it an anatomically correct uh, phallic candle of some sort? Yes, I could use it to aid my <laughs> masturbation. That's right. Oh, I should probably use something help from the Liberace. Uh, yeah. Christy, to answer your question. <laughs> what was my question? Uh, yeah. uh, you, uh, when you guys were you. talking about avocados, uh, you asked if there was an avocado vodka. Um, Ten best avocado drink alcohol recipes. Oh. Uh, there are uh, right. yes, uh, you can something make called avoca- avocado. Uh, I'm vodka. sorry, what? <laughs> avocado too, Tom. No. I think Chick I, does I, also. Avocado. That's, that's a Russian. That's a Russian bluegrass band. <laughs> no, avocado. <laughs> avocado, no, no, We've all. That's avocado. a Genesis song. <laughs> Different. <laughs> Essential morning radio all day and all night. Really? No, seriously. Really? Bob and Tom Radio. Tom radio. Uh, was he a good dad? I don't know. My dad grew up like pre Oprah Winfrey. So mm-hmm. he's like an old school guy. He doesn't know how to like. Be like, look, son, I love you. You're not doing well in school. Let's work this out. Right. Instead, I'd be watching TV, and this is why he would convey that thought. He'd just come walking in and just go, study! <laughs> <laughs> and, then, and then, then he would walk out. Uh-huh. Like, that was going to motivate me. Like, uh, oh, gee, you know, Dad, I never looked never, at it that way. Never thought of it that <laughs> way. Yeah, let me, uh, <laughs> ding, <laughs> the bell goes oh, off yeah. over your head. Oh, he was hilarious. Oh, oh study! Okay. See, now he, he, he used to try to train the dog like that. We got this dog. <laughs> he was, like, trying to teach him how to sit. And it's like he's starting off calm. Like the first few minutes, he'd just be going, "All right, sit. Come on, sit. <laughs> sit down." And like literally five minutes later, he's just like, "You're gonna get over there. You're gonna sit down." The dog's literally like, you know, walking in circles, peeing on the rug. Like, okay, I don't know what you want, but I know I'm not doing it. Dave Cooperman is here with us. Hey, how, are you? how are you? I'm great. I'm great. Uh, I'm good. Dave, a young guy, young comedian, good-looking guy, a uh, married man. I understand. I am. How's I that am. going? Right now, we're I guess we're working on having kids and stuff. And, cool. But we're having some trouble, you know, and. She's blaming me because she's not getting pregnant. And I'm like, honey, you realize we actually have to have sex, okay? <laughs> Screwing with my head will not make you pregnant. How many times I got <laughs> So we're thinking about, you know, we're talking about kids. Even that, even naming a kid is a challenge if we have one. You know, I want my kid to know he's both Jewish and Chinese. The best I've come up with so far is cha-ching. <laughs> <laughs> Maybe lump sum. Hi, this is Larry Reeb, Uncle Larry. It's a sick world, and I'm a happy guy. And you're listening to the Bob and Tom. On Tom's show. Hello, Christy. Hi, Chick. There's Josh, Pat, Ace. I'm Chick. Tom is in the building. We just don't know where. Hmm. He's frying up some bologna. The very first. <laughs> That's what inaugural means, right? Yes. Mm-hmm. The inaugural Florida Man Games took place over the weekend. Oh, it did. And here are some for instances. Okay. Dozens of participants from across the state. Put on uh, tank tops and cut off shorts to compete in events such as wrestling while holding pitchers of beer. Mm-hmm. <laughs> mm-hmm. Pool noodle duels. Oh, that's not easy to say. No. Mud filled and oh, I wasn't done. Pool noodle duels in a <laughs> mud filled inflatable pool. <laughs> ah. And a sprint to evade police officers. Oh, jeez. A uh, theft simulation relay wherein competitors raced while carrying a pair of bicycles. <laughs> the, okay. This is a theft simulation. They carried a pair of bicycles, copper pipes, and catalytic converters. <laughs> ah, they, know the what, they know what they're stealing. It was called the most insane athletic showdown on earth. Spectators paid $45 a ticket to watch the competition. Well, that's ridiculous. No word on uh, on uh, how many people attended the festivities. Meth is encouraged, by the way. Does that help? Uh, oh, yeah. Helps, yeah. helps things a little bit with the, mel- the, yeah. the meth? Yeah, they have um, a white-collar division. Uh, you work on t- tax evasion procedures. Oh. <laughs> that's interesting. <laughs> hmm. The winners get bail money, by the way. Uh, I, never, I never understood how bail works. 
I, well, you unfortunately, give somebody I money and then they get you out of jail, but you never get your money back, right? Uh, uh, no, no, no. You get no, it back. No. It, if, if you uh, say you're bad. A t- and it's 10%, right? Right. It's like a, a $10,000 bond, you only have to give him $1,000. Right. Well, you, right? Give the, you give the bondsman $1,000. Yeah. And then he guarantees that you'll show up. And, and then, then he it, gives somebody ten thousand dollars. Well, he, if you don't show up, but then they'll track you down. Ah. See, but the because uh, he wants his ten thousand dollars back, right? Uh, yes, but okay. they they keep that money that you give them up front. I know this because I had to bail a friend out of jail on Christmas Eve once. How much that cost you? Uh, it, plenty. <laughs> it was also enough going up there and yeah. Would you bail guy. me out of jail if I called you? Or would you uh, act like it was a crank call and hang up? It depends. What what are we talking about? What's the what's the crime here? I don't think that enters into it. I don't you're going to judge him by yeah, the crime. You know what? Whatever you the... got your answer. I think I did. <laughs> yeah. Anybody who comes back at me with that reply, I'm, I'm, I mean, I'm is in it, stir for a while. I mean, I know you. It could be capital murder. I mean, the bail could be substantial. I don't think it would be cap. Well, it might be capital murder. Yeah, you know what I'm talking about. Yeah, yeah. Oh, I know who you're talking about. <laughs> Maybe so. No, I have indeed bailed someone out of jail. I know. Why do you keep saying that like it's... We, we can't believe, believe it. it. Because you guys haven't. I believe it. Ace, How do you know that? <clears throat> Ace, you ever bailed yeah, anybody let's... out of jail? No. I had an uncle <laughs> with a gun at a Christmas dinner party. Did you bail him out of jail? No. <laughs> I he didn't, he didn't bailed out of jail. I think, my, I think my grandmother bailed him out. Now. Did you bail yourself out of jail, Pat? No, the comedy club owner did down in Charlotte. <laughs> well, <laughs> once again... I, 1500 bucks, I think. Fifteen hundred. Was that the full bail, or was that the just the fee to get you out? That was the bail. Yeah. I, and, and once that, again, your crime was sure. what? Uh, uh, public intoxication and interfering with an investigation. And because you weren't even driving the vehicle, but you were mouthing off at the police officer. Exactly. Nice work. Yeah. Smart. Real guy. smart. Well, I think all of us are, are changed. I always thought uh, I could never uh, picture Pat being that way, but last week after he came unhinged on <laughs> on Josh in the break room. <laughs> I, I don't think any of us a potty will, mouth on me. I, uh, will ever, ever be the same. We, we caught a glimpse, didn't we? We yeah. sure did. <laughs> wow. I, have you seen any of the events in the Florida games here? Have we seen? Yeah, I we talked about them. some we of them. We talked yeah. about them. Okay, we, yeah. I haven't looked at them. Are they? Pool noodle duel in the pool mud filled pool. with mud. <laughs> mud. Yeah, the problem is mo- the, the really good competitors are all locked up in county. Mm. So you can't, you're not getting the. The really good guys that are yeah. t- tremendously successful at this. These are all the amateurs. Yeah, they have a meth tent, <laughs> by the way, just right there in the side of the on the sidelines. Oh, I love the fact that the catalytic converters are being stolen. <laughs> yeah, whoever came up with this uh, knew knows what he's talking about. The copper pipes and and catalytic converters. <laughs> yeah, does it say where they did it in Florida? Mm-mm. Well, it might have been. <laughs> <laughs> in the middle of the state, I'm not I think sure. So. Yeah, right in the heart of Florida. Yeah, somewhere, Florida in, somewhere around uh, Orlando. Orlando, I think. think so. Uh, I would think. Uh, <laughs> I'm, 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 hey, I'm looking. Oh, it's Saint Augustine. Okay. Uh, oh well, that's, that's why that's south, right? Yeah, yeah, that's yeah. way south. Oh. They, they would have been really well dressed. That had been in Miami, of course. Uh, the the folks there know how to dress up, but uh, yeah, yeah, it's uh, <laughs> Saint Augustine. All right. It's would it be possible for me to broadcast from Key West during the? Um, uh, Hemingway, look a sure. look like yeah. this. Yes, yeah. but yeah. why not just go down and enjoy it? Why don't we all go? Yeah. Well, yeah. now we're talking. That'd well, he won't go. We're he... doing all these remotes. That'd be fun. He won't. Would you go? Key West is awesome. With me and pet a six-toed cat. <laughs> yeah, West Palm Beach, I'd love Florida. to do that at Hemingway South. Yes. Sure. Why not? I see. Um, is that sports? And see the toilet and the <laughs> and the easy rider rifle rack. <laughs> oh, okay. Never mind. Dear Tom. I'm listening. I'm getting ready for work. This is from Rebecca. I live right near Harbor Springs. I was just there the other day at the place you're talking about with the catapults and the goats. Pond Hill Farm. They also, they also at Pond Hill Farm, blow up a giant gnome with a gun. It's kind of like dynamite that they use to blow the gnome up. There's also a tunnel of trees. I love Harbor Springs. Well, thank you. I uh, listen to you guys on the radio every morning. Gnomes are very popular. Gnomes are both Out, for outdoor negatively things, and positively uh, like lawn art. Gnomes are huge. <laughs> I see. I see. 
So, but you've been to uh, Pond Hill Farm? I have many times. That's the place where they have the catapults that you can shoot the melons at the goats. <laughs> and you've done that? I've done that, absolutely. You've done that? Of course. You are a sick Well, that's man. fun. Good. I've got photographs of it. Ooh, we should see some. we got to put Do them the up. Do the goats ever catch the melons? <laughs> did you ever hit... Did you ever... They're not like dogs. Did you ever knock one out? <laughs> What what keeps you from shooting an, a whole melon at a goat, goat and hitting him in the head and killing it? Once, once again, you're you're launching them in big arcs. Over yeah, the, somebody could get hurt. Well, so the doesn't... goat can look up and go, "Oh, I better step five feet to the yeah, left." It's, it's, it's much right. like a. Oh, it looks like that melon's getting larger, but being a goat, I don't know why. Yeah, exactly. That is. Yeah, I... clunk. Don't goats have horns though? They could land right there. Oh, that'd be, yeah, that'd be, oh, oh, that'd, be that'd be a free lunch. That's a trick. Yeah, I think that should be a free lunch. Yeah. They have a, they have a delicious a bottle. Great. Where <laughs> is the humane society in this <laughs> damn thing? Goats you're not aiming at the goats. The goats are out on a field. I don't care what your intention you're is. You're still shooting things at animals. Uh, they're just lofting food in. And you're giving them a pass because it's in Michigan. No, it's I was they, a small boy. And they my have delicious. Mother held my hand. And Delicious, delicious lunch. You'd like it, Christy. They have wine and they have a uh, nice bottled dressings you really? can take with you. You'd enjoy oh, it. Bottle dressing, fan. Oh, I, I boy. Think, well, uh, you know, we all use the, those pouched dressings. <laughs> Here's the thing. Before I go to Rome and eat in a nice restaurant, I want to know if they have bottled dressings I can I mean, take you, with me. You can buy it and me. take it away. Pardon, pardon me for a second. Is your dressing in a box? Uh, my, oh, my, my friend Josh, ma'am, would like to ask you a question. Could I have my dressing in an envelope? I'm sorry. This Thousand Island does not taste bottled to me. <laughs> no, you morons. Tap? You, can take, you can take it away as you leave. Never mind. Is this pouch? dressing. I never. Well, I, I thought this was a nice place of trying to kill goats. Like Apparently, <laughs> it's uh, half ass. Okay. <laughs> nice place to kill goats. Did you at any point say, what are you people doing? Why are we <laughs> shooting fun? things at goats? You're not, the goats are way out of the, you're, you're lofting them out there. And what about the melonless in the world who have to sit back and watch you people catapult nice ripe melons starving people into a field? Good melons. You're wasting food. You're trying to kill animals. And all bets are off because it's Michigan. No, the the animals eat the melon once it arrives. Oh, well, okay. Really? Well, why don't the people eat the melon? <laughs> I'm sure if you'd like melon with your salad and valid bottled dressing, I'm sure they would offer that for you. I'd like the melon. Could I please have some of your Pond Hill Farm bottle dress. There is something to be said about catapulting a cantaloupe. They're yeah. they're close. Those words are close. Yeah. yeah. There's... I'm also concerned about their blowing up gnomes with something that could be C4. When you first <laughs> said that, I thought, oh, they're inflating some kind of giant gnome. No, 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 they're exploding it. They have giant <laughs> gnomes, I'm guessing, made of plaster, and they put dynamite underneath it and blow them up. And people <laughs> Sounds cheer cool. and applaud. <laughs> Say, no, I, I, I have not witnessed that. I, uh... Well, you're off the hook for that one, I guess. Yeah, sorry. Okay. You well. still try to kill a goat, though. <laughs> and we're talking about this because catapults were made illegal somewhere in England. But they're legal in the good old USA. And we found out that they, <laughs> in England, they're <laughs> just slingshots or whatever. Oh. Not the full crazy catapult, which would just be fantastic to have. Yeah, you go up there, you park, you, uh, <laughs> you know, you walk over before lunch and... You can you can feed some animals and you launch some lemons. Don't get me wrong, I, I would I'd absolutely <laughs> launch a lemon. You ever see a goat or a melon? The yeah. goats go. Hey, it's a lemon. I wanted a cantaloupe. <laughs> get on there, dumb goats. I see. Okay, I, what else is happening in sports? Oh, yeah. I'm sorry. I don't know. I'm on Pond Hill Farms website and I'm, I'm shipping fascinated. some sort of canned food to, to you. <laughs> I go to a place almost dressing. every fall where they shoot. They have a pumpkin cannon. I love yeah. those. Yeah, those are. That's fun, right? That is fun. Yeah. But there are no. There's nothing living where they're shooting. <laughs> exactly. They're not, they're not taking any any soul. <laughs> yeah. while you're well, shooting then your then they're not having any fun. <laughs> oh. Release the goats. My uh, Pat, God. I think you were there with me. I was. I think so. We we've, we've had lunch there many times. Oh, I'll, I'll, I've got a bunch of pictures. I was just looking at the pictures of that place the other day. I'll I'll see if if you're, if you're in any of them. Uh, I'm sorry, hmm. Chick McGee. Uh, back to you in the sports page. <sighs> okay. We have many bottled dressings. <laughs> <laughs> you know, 
You know they're bottled. I'm going to get some and not share it with you, Josh. There are bottled dressings. Oh, no. Where can I ever get a bottle of dressing? Oh, boy. Anywhere? Oh, I'm sure that I... I, Oh, no. I'm sure you've got ranch in your desk drawer. (laughs) They have uh, Pond Hill Cup bandanas and uh, fleece blankets. A pumpkin mask. Okay. Uh, we, we're, we oh, it's a goat with a broken neck. <laughs> oh, boy. Oh, he's got a little, he's cute. got one of those Tilt things to the on. left. Oh, that'd be amazing if the goats had neck braces on. <laughs> <laughs> they're, they're really injured, but they're out there still. Yeah, they're still out They can't help themselves. Yeah. <laughs> you want to eat, don't you? <laughs> How is this still going on? It's fun. You got to go. It sounds insane. We'll go up there I've, this got a, I've got a feeling I'm going to have to go. Are you guys able to look at a person in a neck brace and not laugh out loud? <laughs> No. Yes. <laughs> it's nearly Because I feel bad for no. them. You never know what they... I immediately think they're faking. Yeah, sure. Yes. <laughs> I, I, I always, th- I, I always, I always think, think Chappaquiddick yeah. or, or Teddy Kennedy faking. shows up with the neck brace and the tie on. Which is, which is funnier, the neck brace or the voice box? The uh, neck, neck brace. brace. Yeah. Okay. See, so you can fake the neck brace, <laughs> you jackass. Which you, you possibly go to a sports voice story? Box. I'm not saying. I'm not saying the voice box isn't is isn't there. Is, there is humor there. Thank you. <laughs> not much. Because odds are he smoked to get there, right? Yeah. No, what's cool is when they smoke through the voice box. That's, That's oh, really cool. Oh, yeah. Mind your own business. <laughs> what else can they take from me? <laughs> well, I'm I'm your still ball. spoken. <laughs> Could I still be on the air? I want to be ball? mostly machine. I could you? Uh, <laughs> okay, uh, okay, uh, uh, we can't hear you, fortunately. Uh, 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 this is a world record. Everybody got that? Yep. A woman from Uganda has broken the Guinness World Record for the longest time to hug a tree. Oh, no. <laughs> Ms. Faith Patricia Ericott wrapped her arms around a tree trunk for 16 hours, 16 hours, 6 seconds to set the first record. She's 29 years old, attempted the challenge to encourage others to plant trees and to highlight the need for humans to protect them. We can just but we the can only do good, that. The, but the only good goat's a dead goat, she says here. <laughs> oh, man. <laughs> she was not permitted any breaks. Her arms could not be released from the tree at any point, and she was required to stand oh. for the entire duration of the record attempt. So oh. did she get a bathroom break? No. So she just pissed all over the tree then, evidently. And potentially crudded. Right yeah. there, on the, right, there like that. right there on the roots. She doogied right there on, on the roots. Crudded. <laughs> You've been sitting on that forever. I mean, we used to say that as kids all Had the time. A crud. Oh, yeah. took a crud. It says here this was the third time in a month she attempted to set the record. The first time do had to be cut short due to a thunderstorm. <laughs> Well, what's the big deal there? Everybody knows in a thunderstorm, you just hide under the biggest tree you can find. Right. Oh, yeah. All right, that's just common sense. Boy says, Scout stuff. The tree, had a, the tree has a rough surface, and it cut into my skin. But I had to keep holding on. Uh, no bathroom breaks. Whatever it is. Well, she wore a diaper, obviously. Why don't we ask the tree how it feels about this whole thing? Yeah, I don't think she's got a diaper on, Christy. Oh. How do you know? Why? Well, she could wear... They are very... They're very slender? Yes. Okay. Mm. Boys makes a nice product. Who? Poise. P O I S. Oh, 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 poise. It's a male. It's yes. an adult diaper. It's an adult male. diaper. And they actually male. say, uh, like, at one point on the commercial I saw, they were like, you, you need to, you need poise in your pants or something. Yeah. <laughs> and that is awfully close for, I mean, and they weren't trying to make a joke. <laughs> wow. Uh, well, she looks like a sweet lady. Here she is, hugging the tree. <laughs> Yikes. Uh, she is hugging the tree. <laughs> Um, and I'm sorry, what did you, what does she get for doing this? She gets a world record, Tom. She gets to be talked about on the radio. Okay. Mm-hmm. Yeah, no, she, uh, we'll, look, we'll plant trees. Okay, and take it literally, did he just look right at me and said, what does she get for this? <laughs> <laughs> There's yeah. absolutely not even a hint of what she got for this in the store. <laughs> that that he put to together. Do. And that happened in Uganda? Yeah. I almost opened up a restaurant there. Oh, yeah? Did oh, yeah. You? It was going to be called, You Gone to Eat That? <laughs> <laughs> you got to finish that? You going to eat that? You yeah. Gone to, you uh, you gone to you finish that? that? I like that. Pen. Yeah, yeah, that's probably better. Uh, you going yeah, yeah. to finish that? Yeah. Yeah. Okay. <laughs> I think it would have been cool if it was one of those Wizard of Oz, Oz trees. God, those yeah. scared the hell out of yeah. me. Yeah, me too. Uh, yeah. Start when throwing I... things at people. How oh, oh, would yeah. you like it if I plucked something off of you? Yeah. Oh, my gosh. Yeah. If you want to be uh, scared today, look this up. This is from my childhood. It was called Lucy's Toy Shop. And they had Mr. Tree. 
And, mm. and the kids would wake up Mr. Tree every morning. And he'd, Hello, man. Wake up. Good morning, Mr. Tree. And he'd flip, click his eyes open. It's the most terrifying face <laughs> on a tree you've ever seen in your life. All right. By the way, she's quoted as saying, the tree chose me. Oh, yeah? All right. Who's that's uh-huh. too, huh? Uh-huh. Yeah. Uh-huh. yeah. That's very zen. How about that? Very BS-ish, if that's a term. Well, congratulations. Ma'am. <laughs> um, Ma'am. Hugging a tree. Okay, good. But, yeah, I, I'm, I'm sure you'd soil yourself after... Well, yeah, you'd have oh. to. 16 hours? Probably. Yeah. Yeah, I don't... You can't not go to the bathroom for 16 hours. No, no. Christy, can... how, how long is an adi- adult diaper good for? Well, I don't know. I've never worn one. I guess. I've, I've had mine on since Saturday. <laughs> wow. <laughs> Boy, it's not bad. Bad. I mean. It's got to be heavy. <laughs> Yeah, until it is. It would just keep getting heavier until it. I remember when my when my kids were little and they'd have before they had the really quality swim diapers and they'd go in the bed and then you'd get out and you'd have this diaper that looked like it had four footballs. Yeah. In it. I remember that. <laughs> okay, well, maybe these pictures were taken early on before the diaper filled up. Oh. Uh, okay. Well, uh, I, I'm sorry. What's coming up in sports? Your world record, Tom. Okay, well, I'm it's so excited about It's all about, about what? Uh, stilts. That's right. Uh, yeah, stilts in this. We have um, uh, Flacco news, but not really in the world of sports, not Joe Flacco. We have Flacco. cool news from outer space Flacco. from the moon, and several other moons are in the news, and a gigantic new snake has been discovered by scientists. Yay! <laughs> <laughs> they say it's the biggest snake on Earth. Oh! And it's been discovered in the equatorial Amazon. Wow. Pretty, pretty scary. It's coming up. This is the Bob and Tom Show. Just got to get a hold of us? Call, fax, mail, or email. Get all the contact information you need at Bob. Hey, it's Josh Arnold with a food recommendation for you. Gardner's Wisconsin Cheese, their famous oven-baked cheese. It arrives pre-baked. You just heat it and eat it, grill it, skillet, or air fry it. Check out their new oven-baked cheese flavor, jalapeno. Ooey, gooey, spicy cheese. It's sure to tickle your taste buds with real jalapeno flavor and heat. Perfect for game day parties or Anytime. Excuse me. Are um, are you serious with it? I mean, why are you doing this? Me, uh, the real me is right here. I could easily be doing this. We, we don't need you, man. I uh, look. There's only room for one of us. That's Gardner's Wisconsin Cheese jalapeno-flavored oven-baked cheese. It's now available in Gardner's oven-baked bundle package, so try all the great flavors. Receive free cold pack shipping and free cheese curds when you spend $59 or more at GardnersWisconsinCheese.com. Click the link below and tell them your pal Josh, me the real Josh, from the Bob and Tom Show sent you. Your earliest impressions were, of course, of your teachers at school. Uh, yeah, so I used to do. Uh, yeah, can, can you like, like, do like Mr. Hallinack for us or whatever? Uh, it was Mr. Christensen was the, uh, he was the uh, G, well, a U.S. history teacher. Mm-hmm. And I knew nothing. He'd always send me to the map because he knew I knew nothing about any of it. Like, we're going to go to our uh, resident map expert, Mr. Caliendo. Can you show us where the United States is? <laughs> <laughs> I'd point to blue. <laughs> <laughs> Sit down, Mr. Caliendo. He was also the basketball coach, so I just do him. uh, We're going to shoot free throws. We're going to run laps. We're going to shoot more free throws. Free throws. (laughs) Sit down, Mr. (laughs) Cuddy. What was the first one you did that worked? An impression? Yeah. Or like a... a, Famous actor or... uh, Uh, I mean, it was Muppets. It was Muppets first, as you could tell by the incredible Miss Piggy. Yes. Did I lay down you earlier? (laughs) Um, (laughs) Amazing. Let's see. Uh, I would watch In Living Color. I would watch, uh, you know, the, the 
Well, these are things I couldn't really use in my act because they were people's characters from sketches, but like the Damon Wayans uh, bum character that. <laughs> my name is Anton. I'm a victim of society. And an entertainer. Oh, Anton. Yeah. He had the pickle in the yes, jar. Yeah. <laughs> Excuse me. Can I sing you a song? Can you do Fire Marshal Bill? Uh, let me show you something. Let's <laughs> say there's a problem. Yeah, that. because that was like people doing the kiss so you could. So you could jump on and do those characters, which is what a lot of people do that with impressions now. They just watch other people. I've heard Kevin Pollack. I don't know if I, I, I Kevin Pollack might have been the first person to say this, but I see the same thing he does is people unlock an impression. And then once it's unlocked, everybody can do it. So you watch the person who's figured it out. And it really has to do with cadence. Um with, uh, with I've talked about this before, but with Barack Obama, he would talk uh, slow at the beginning and speed up at the end. So you could always think, <laughs> how many uh, uh, William Shatner's have you heard? How many, uh, a high Christopher Walken low in the middle? You know who it is because they all ignore punctuation. You know, right. So it's if you can get the cadence down, you don't even have to have the, the pitch. So um, I, I I'm probably not answering the question anymore, but it, it, Muppets were the first thing I did, some cartoon kind of characters and stuff like that, stuff I wouldn't even consider really impressions. But, What's the hardest? Uh, who's the hardest one to write for? Because um, sometimes if you have the voice, there's some impressions you see them and you go, "Boy, that's dead on." Then you go, "But there's okay." No I, I've had a Bill, I've had a Billy Crystal forever, but I had no idea what I would even do with it. It's one of those voices that just <laughs> he doesn't do much. Yeah. Sully, and, you know. Yeah. Hey, that's let's so go. Good. Come on, guys. We're gonna go over here. It's just one of those things. <laughs> um, but here it works. And uh, uh, Robert Downey Jr.'s one that uh, I'm sure I've done that too for you. But it's the he's the human Twitter feed. Uh, he talks in little phrases and everything's about himself. He could be giving out an Academy Award, which is supposed to be about the nominees. But it would turn it back to him like, these people deserve your applause <laughs> almost as much as I do. <laughs> Hashtag awesome. <laughs> <laughs> so like, do me a favor. <laughs> You're doing great right now for you. You know, that's, <laughs> that's he's just, he can just, he can insult you and be positive, <laughs> backhanded compliment for everything. Chick, you do a great job sitting there doing nothing. <laughs> Appreciate it. Thank Why don't you, you do me a favor and text yourself? Thank you. <laughs> Thank you. <laughs> <laughs> and I thought, I you knew can't. the ceilings are low. I thought I had seven oh, foot ceilings my ah, until my six foot six buddy came over and had about an inch of clearance. <laughs> Your ceilings are that low? They're low. You can't wow. even get happy. Yeah. I think my apartment's illegal, to tell you the truth. It's oh a basement with only one exit. The and the exit was yeah. blocked by my never. meth lab. So I think the whole thing <laughs> uh -huh. yeah, is illegal. Yeah, yeah, I would never, never stay there. Beautiful never. neighborhood, though. I live in a great neighborhood. Uh -huh. A little, It's in New York City, Astoria, Queens. It's very peaceful. My neighborhood is so quiet. If there's any yelling at night... That means Ecuador scored a goal. It's <laughs> <laughs> right. a little rowdy. World Cup's a little rowdy. Other uh, yeah, I'll bet. Uh -huh. oh, it's it's yeah. oh, you got to come over during World Cup time. Oh, yeah. Yeah. My most recent marriage was a disaster. It made the wreck of the Edmunds Fitzgerald look like a fender bender. <laughs> <laughs> wow. Uh, hello. And you remember Lord's famous line about uh, gun control. More ah, or less. yes. yes. It, it, the relationship taught me a lot. It mm. taught me they won't sell you a handgun if you're crying. <laughs> <laughs> Bob and Tom, you can pick your morning radio show, and you can pick your no. Hey, welcome back to the Bob and Tom show. Coming up. Bum, bum, bum. This time... God, I love stilts. That's right. Stilts. Love, stilts. Nobody stilts. loves stilts like Tom. we got a world record about stilts. Are you ready? I am. What do you got? Are you really? All right. Stupid world record. 
Members of the indigenous Karbi community in India have broken the Guinness World Record for the longest moving line of people walking on stilts. <laughs> <laughs> Which I could have been there. I could have been part of it. Yes. Can you walk on stilts, John? The last time I've you never were on tried stilts. to walk on stilts. I've never even uh, been. <laughs> I've, I've never just seen a set of stilts that I could get. Oh, on. we had a pair. Yeah. We had a pair in my garage. We well, did. weren't they the? For kids. Those were the painting things, right? Well, yeah, those are the drywall stilts. No, or no, no. We had the, the their big sticks with little, and you could move the uh, the, 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 the the foot what? pad up and down. So yours were meant to be. They were stilts. Circus performers. They, they were like red aluminum shafts. Wow. Uh, did yeah. the kids use them? Yeah, we used them all the time. Okay. You had, did you have the uh, the long, uh, comically long pants to cover up the stilt? <laughs> no, but that would have been great. Yeah, that's very funny. But it was tricky because you, you would hold them under your arms and... Kind of like a crutch? You'd climb up a ladder because th th you could have them so they were like, a, you know, six inches off the ground or a foot or two feet. How do you get on them? That was the thing. You'd go with the ladder and... Oh. And then the trick thing was when you fell off, not breaking your arm. Yeah, it's got to be. They were I never fun. did stilts. Did you? Never. But yeah. I love the ones where you see the guys with the pants on. <laughs> Those are great. And they're not holding on to anything. No. Do they think, <laughs> let me ask you, did they think they're fooling us? <laughs> you're right, right. Did anybody go, they're going to think I am 12 feet tall? Yeah. Well, you could, yeah. you, man, literally, what if you're a three year old kid? You look up and go, oh my God, life is wonderful. That guy's got 12 foot legs. <laughs> nah, even as a three year old, I loved it, yeah. but I, I still knew it was fake. Now, there's that period where, you know, every, everything no. is sort I don't of. I think so. No. Where, you, where you think, all adults know what they're doing? No. Can you, I'd like to talk to some little kids right I now and tell you. I never thought any adult in my house when I was growing up knew what maybe they were you, doing. But Christy, maybe you were like you thought all adults and teachers knew everything? Sure. And you believed what they said? Yeah. And, yes. Yeah, and, yeah, now you go, God, I have friends that are morons that are 70 years old. I remember uh, my believing my parents when they told me I had pruny hands after a bath and I asked why and they... Told me I had leprosy and that's my that after a week or so all my skin would fall off. I remember, I don't know, crying for an hour. <laughs> well, it's lucky, you, lucky you had that ghost under the bed as a companion they told you about. Yes. <laughs> they really told you that? Yes, and we're laughing and laughing until I was crying. Oh. And then they went, all right, it's not true. That sounds like the kind of thing that would have gone on at my house. Oh, yeah. <laughs> oh that's sad. Man. They got uh, me good. So the world record for uh, stilt walking is from some folks in... In the country did of you India. Ever, did you ever take um, some string and a tin can and make oh, stilts out of that? Yeah, where you tie the... I see your childhood very much like the dead end kids <laughs> on the Bowery Wall. Oh, they were just bucket boots, essentially. Bucket boots yeah. and, uh, yeah. What? Yeah. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Turn a, turn a turn tin, tin can, can upside, upside down, down right. and put and step on that and then run a string through it so you could hold it up so you could walk on that. No, never, never seen that. Yeah. No, no, no. Yeah, I, I never did it, but I saw... I the people of Stomp made a very handsome about. living doing Your that. Your love of stilts, I think that would... No, we had genuine stilts. Of course. And Marilyn Manson used to come out in stilts and stilts on his arms. So he just looked like oh. this weird beast thing. Oh, cool. Yeah, yeah it was great. Great. So, um, so when you were growing up as a kid, you <laughs> had stilts. Too. Yes, we got them at the um, stilt house. No, no, at the good stilt store. Uh, <laughs> oh, huh? yeah, I've heard of that. First, I went to the good feet store. Yeah, got my feet figured out. Right, right. And then went to the good stilt store. <laughs> Have you seen the pictures of the, all the ten thousand people on stilts? Ten thousand. No. No. Ten thousand. It's not ten thousand people at well, all. How many was it? Seven hundred and twenty. I was close. <laughs> <laughs> I was close. That's a lot close. of people on stilts. It is. I there they are. There they are. They are. They're in a big line. Oh, well, they're, wait a minute. Okay, wait. They're barely off the ground. And those are crappy stills. They're only about a foot off the ground. They are a foot that off is. the ground. Well, but they're that? lined up. It looks like some... Boo. <laughs> it looks like some kind of military Boo. rally. And you can see the general going... You know, um, if you, you know, had if you if you in. if you had him in if you had him in rows and columns, I wouldn't have to be here all afternoon. You know, I'm sure those are some sort of ceremonial outfit, but uh, yeah, it does they all look like they have head wounds? <laughs> They're all bandaged around the head. Yeah, and then they've got. Like, <laughs> it looks like they've that's they've the losing they've army. Taped a fi uh, like an eight by ten <laughs> typewriter paper with their name on it. Yeah. Fellas, the name tags don't have to be that big. Oh, oh man.
<laughs> looks like the unemployment line. It looks for sad. The circus. Yes, yeah. it didn't I'm look sure like they were smiling. I'm sure they were excited to be a part of they a world. Looked no, they looked miserable. They looked miserable and, and <laughs> hungry. And, yeah. and, and they're lined up in one <laughs> one long line. As you realize that if you over. had if you had one good slingshot, you could they could get the oh, record like for the, the largest <laughs> human domino yeah. collapse. Well, wow. they if you all looked use it on the goats and miserable. the melons. You could use it on the people. Didn't they look like they were uh, hot? Yeah. yeah. <laughs> like, oh, it's hot. Why are we doing this? <laughs> well, you know, it's India. It's hotter than hell most places, right? Oh, those places. It's got to snow oh, at some yeah, point, all right? of them. They're called the, the, um, the Carby, K-A-R-B-I community. Carby mm. community. Carby. Mm. Uh, yeah, I'm not sure what they're all they're about. Carby <laughs> <laughs> Anglong Autonomous Council, the K-A-A-C. All right. Oh, there's four of them on the side in barrels. Must be a four-barrel carb. <laughs> Oh, man. Oh, I see. Oh. That's why I said Carby. Yeah. Man, that is that is just the opposite of funny. That makes me mad. That makes no sense. The, bre- the record-breaking line stretched 1.24 miles with uh, all 10,000 of them. I'm sorry. 721 walking on their stilts for 10 minutes, which were maybe six inches off the ground. Hmm. It's kind of cool. Nope. But a one mile line of dudes on stilts. Is it is it all guys? Stink. It looks Ten like minutes. it was. So they had to be in they had to be in sync with each other so they wouldn't fall over. That's yeah. kind of impressive. I would have been yeah. so I, if they had invited me, I would have I would have done it. <laughs> you would have? Oh, absolutely. Okay. I'm good on stilts. I bet. <laughs> Still? Well, let's yeah. put your mu- let's put your yeah. stilts where your mouth are. <laughs> tomorrow. Let's do this. You be up on stilts tomorrow. And I want to see you go up and down the ramp. And <laughs> That's right. I want to see you uh, once around uh, the parking lot. Dance a little jig. You mean, yeah. the, uh, you mean the, the, the deadly concrete steps that we have yes. here at the Frigga Mall? Yeah. You don't have to do the steps. No, you can no. do the ramp. Do the ramp. <laughs> yeah, and then I want to see you do like a goose step type thing, like long still kicks. <laughs> <laughs> You, you'll break your other shoulder. <laughs> yeah, 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 yeah Mike, I can sort of see. Uh, you, you probably shouldn't do Don't that. Don't do stilts. I, I could do these low-level ones. No, you couldn't. Yes, I could. You can barely walk as it is. <laughs> Most of us could do those. Because it looked like you were using your arms also. You might walk better with stilts. <laughs> yeah, it might help you. <laughs> what would you... How fast would you switch doctors if you went in? <laughs> Look, Tom, I know it's been a problem walking. You're going to have to be on stilts for the rest of your life. <laughs> uh, I'm sorry, what? <laughs> At least uh, eight inches off the ground. I'm sorry. Now, the first time you that's, saw, that's my diagnosis. The first time you saw those drywall guys on those, on those oh, drywall stilts. It. Those are badass. Those, those are fantastic. Those are, so those cool. are great. Because yeah. they have little treads on They've got like yeah. little yeah. 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 Like, stability. It's yeah. like futuristic. Yeah. They're like robots. Yeah. yeah. I wonder how many, how many of those guys, when it's 4th of July, get the long pants out and walk down the street, wave to the kids. Huh? <laughs> oh, the old Uncle Sam striped Part pants. Of the and, yeah. Mm-hmm. yeah. They're used to it. They can walk around. Those guys can do stairs. They're <laughs> a amazing. bunch of war <laughs> 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 military agenda. Anyway, I'll, I'll swing by the... Wait a minute. Hold it. Uh, drywall stilts, 24 to 40 inches. Uh, these are nice. Ooh. $125. Hey, I, can have them here next, I can have them here in two days. Chick. You're not going to climb up 20. No. Do you like a guy... Chick, do you like a guy in stilts with the pants... And his top hat is as long as the stilts are, so that it's yes, yes, yes I. Do. That's a great American, right Uncle there. Sam special. Yeah, there you go. There's your drywall stilts. Oh. Yeah, see, the, see, those have support in the uh, in the yeah. thigh area. That's the a calf uh-huh. and the thigh. They have to. Yeah, yeah. yeah you, can, you. It's almost impossible to fall off those. <laughs> and thank goodness. Yeah. yeah. No, you can fall, and when you do, um. By the time your arm hits, you're really moving quick. Mm. <laughs> oh, yeah, you hit the ground like 90 mile an hour. Yeah, you're, you're uh, oh, yeah. what is it, a 16,000 feet per second? I forget well, the number. They have little springs, the little shock absorbers, uh, uh, too. I'm sorry, is that sports? I was I was just getting into it. Uh, yeah, but... Uh, yeah, 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 yeah. Okay, yeah, uh, well, thank you very much. When we come back, we'll hear uh, this. Well, okay, thank you very much. We're coming right back. This is the Bob and Tom Show. Reach us toll free at one eight 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 Bob Tom One or at Bob and.
I should have learned to trade. I ain't got no money. I'm working for a minimum wage. And Tom. We're back on uh, uh, casting the Bob and Tom movie. Melissa Rauch would be a perfect Christy Lee. Whatever. <laughs> so slightly bustier. Currently judge on uh, the reboot of... Oh, yeah, they, re they remade Night Court, mm -hmm. and they got rid of all the comedy. Oh. I've seen it. Yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> it's just court now. Yeah, exactly. It's just exactly. <laughs> Bob and Tom in the morning and highlights all day long. The Bob and Tom Show, weekday mornings at 6 a.m. Eastern on Bob and Tom 24-7. Hey, this is Larry the Cable Guy, and you're listening to Bob and Tom Radio. If you're not, you're a communist. You know, when Esther and I had a big family, we hardly had any time for ourselves, you know. <laughs> if I could ever just get through the newspaper one time without the kids interrupting, it was a miracle. <laughs> they always wanted to go somewhere and do something. Well, of course, they're all grown up now, and Esther's dead. And I just wish they'd call just every now and then to pick up the phone and... Say hi, Granddad. <laughs> How are you? Well, they never call anymore. In fact, they never come by. I, I just like to see my little daughter, Lucy. Sometimes she just brings her kids over. And Tommy, my son, he, he never comes over. Heck, I'm just sitting here all alone, waiting for the phone to ring. The mail never comes. I never get any mail. Nobody ever calls me. It's just a terrible thing. That's the way it is, I guess. I'll just keep watching these old soap operas. And and hope that is good. The telephone. When it rings, answer it. <laughs> You're listening to Bob and Tom Radio. <laughs> You're so weird. You have no idea. Essential Morning Radio. <laughs> this is Bob and Tom Radio. 24-7. 24-7. Comedian Nathan Trenholm in the studio with us. Now, Nathan, where, where are you living now? I'm, uh, I'm living in Los Angeles now. Oh. Mm -hmm. And I live with a guy and a girl. And uh, actually, the last time I was in town, I had some cookies. And I offered some of the cookies to my roommates. And the girl just got all mad at me. She's like, Nathan, I'm an actress. 
actresses can't have carbohydrates. <laughs> I was like, you know, you mispronounce that word. Uh -huh. It's pronounced waitress. <laughs> You're a waitress. <laughs> Joined in the studio by comedian Darren Carter. Man, I'm telling you, styles have changed. You know, gangster rap is popular. And, and say, I can't even fake it. You know, how come I'm going to fake like I'm in a gang? How scary would my gang be? You know, 15 redheads coming to your neighborhood, you know, out there covering in sunscreen, you know, you know be like wiping it on, talking about, stop pushing me, Trevor. You know, Damn it, it's so hot out here. You know? you know, our little gang hand sign would be like, you know when you hold your hand above your eyebrows trying to make sunglasses? Yeah. yeah. Squinting our eyes. You know, we wouldn't be talking about West Side, East Side. We'd be like, hey, Hey, let's go inside. <laughs> shade. Yeah, shady. That's what we'd be on the shady side of the street. We'd only be in neighborhoods with big trees, and we'd be like, shady side, fool. You know? 15 redheads talking about shady side. We stay inside because we get sunburned when we go outside. Shady side. <laughs> Hi, this is our Tom Show said, hey. Hey, welcome back to the Bob and Tom Show. Christy Lee at the news desk. Hi, Chick. There's Pat Godwin in the performance room. Hello. There's Josh Arnold. Chickster. Ace Cosby's here. Hey. Perhaps that Ace Cosby joke of the way uh, day is joke on the of way. The way. <laughs> it's on the on the way. I like joke of the way. It's joke of the way sounds like a religious thing, yes, doesn't it? It's got like a mysticism uh, to only it. Yes. Uh, Fridays only. Mm. <laughs> I'm Chick, and here's time. <laughs> Two saints walk into a bar. <laughs> <laughs> Are there a lot of good, uh, like, clean religious jokes, do you think? Mm -hmm. Yeah, oh, plenty. Yeah, uh, my, we course. had a reverend uh, at my church who would tell a joke, almost a, a joke uh, every sermon. Really? And they were always real good, yeah. Aww. Who's the guy investments? <laughs> 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 reverend Ted, here he is with his joke of the day. Reverend Allspock. What was his name? Allspock. All spot? Spock. 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 Yeah. Live long really? and prosper? Yeah, that all Spock. Yeah, Reverend All Spock. I don't oh. know what his first I can't remember what his first name was. Son of a gun. Tiberius. Oh. Good good man. Uh, <laughs> <No>. Tiberius. <laughs> James Tiberius All Spock. I'm sorry. Uh, I'm sorry. Uh, we uh move from the sports desk. Are we done over there? Yes. Over to Christy Lee. At the news desk, what have you got? Hey, researchers say playing music throughout your life linked to better brain health and older age. Better brain health and older age. University. <laughs> <laughs> That's okay. University of Exeter scientists found playing a musical instrument, particularly the... Skin flute? Trumpet. <laughs> oh, Jesus. Yeah. Bonophone. Yeah, two great guesses. The bonophone Dictophone. there anywhere? Yeah, the, the trumpet. Sure, yeah. <laughs> the you, know, the, you know, the guy with the trumpet at the old folks home is getting all the tang. <laughs> have no, you the... seen Have you seen Mortimer? Man, he can, <laughs> he can, he, he can blow that cornet, can't he? No, I but guess. Stella can blow... <laughs> the boogie woogie, vehicle boy. Uh, no, it's the piano. It's linked to improved Pat, memory and his ability to, to solve oh, complex know. tasks, known as executive function. Continuing to play into later life provides even greater benefit. Researchers said overall, quote, we think that being musical could be a way of harnessing the brain's agility and resilience known as cognitive reserve. You know, Chick, that uh, Elton John is good on piano. Yeah. <laughs> He sucks on organ, though. <laughs> really? That's where we're going. Don't ever forget that. <laughs> Pat, you're going to be a monster in the old folks' home. Yeah, because singing was also linked to better brain health, Pat. Oh, singing and playing. Although this may also be due to the social factors of being part oh, of a choir or uh, group. The social factors. Yes. <laughs> that's how it makes perfect sense. Yeah. The next time we find out that some, uh, like, nursing home in the area is having... A, a talent show. <laughs> Can we go and just heckle? <laughs> yes. What's wrong with you? I think some of us. Well, I, well, I think all of us could be very, very easily disguised as one of the residents. Yeah. Yeah. And it wouldn't take that much. <laughs> nah. Not much. At all. Not we much could go in. Required. Uh, can I have more Jello, Bernadine? <laughs> and by the way, uh, excuse uh, me. What is your? Uh, Feeling about the world, some bitch. Is that a <laughs> oh, dude? When so, when it's when it's brought down just the two syllables, I love that. Some bitch. Some bitch. Oh, That's yeah. one of my favorite things. Yeah, some ever. bitch put bananas in my jello. Oh, look at uh, this some bitch over here. Uh, I'll, I'll sing that some bitch. 
You know, that Veltina in the cafeteria is a whore. Oh, no. Do they well, have talent Tina. shows at these places? Oh, if yeah. so, we they have, have pianos. They have, yeah, yeah exactly. Uh, they also have a lot, of, a lot of entertainment. Well, they have a yeah. lot of entertainment that comes in. I know that. But my grandparents nice. loved it. I know yeah. your mom loved it. Mine loved it, too. Yeah, yeah my mom's place. And then on, on a very serious note, um, this is a, a little awkward for this show, but... Um, uh, a, a friend of mine had uh, uh, her dad had very serious uh, dementia hitting, oh, but he could remember he could remember the words and melodies to songs. He could sing along to anything. That's right. But he couldn't even identify his own daughter. Yeah. And now here oh. he is now. Pat got one. <laughs> I can sing. A piano man. Who are you? <laughs> you don't look like my daughter. Yeah, no, are you no, Davy no. from the Navy? <laughs> boy, oh boy, you're fixing. Yeah, Pat. That they say every instrument. You're going to be just like. Hugh Hefner in the old folks. Oh, jeez! Just don't pick up an don't pick up an accordion. <laughs> Me and Pat should even go lift with, one. Pat, we'll go go to, we'll go together so we can keep each other company when we're not screwing. You know but what we're I'm gonna saying? bang our way through in a retirement home. Yeah. Paul, Paul. Say, knocking on doors. You damn right. Who's the, up for some? Up. Some. First one of you to score a nurse <laughs> wins. You better rub her up. There's a lot of disease in those places. Oh, oh like I care. Oh. <laughs> That's just pointer gives. Yeah. Yeah. Right? That falls off so what? One so less thing to worry about. Exactly. <laughs> you know what they say? Mo dick, more problems. <laughs> I've heard that. <laughs> that is the Hey, old, hey, uh, hey, you hear what this some bitch over here said? <laughs> Mo dick, more problem. <laughs> some bitch right. <laughs> <laughs> Why go to the whole folks when we have one right here on the air? Well, what are we, we talking gotta about? Go anywhere. <laughs> Speaking of sex, new oh. research from the University of Kent reveals some surprising insights into people's sex toy I believe that's a uh, Kant. What? <laughs> Kant. Kant. And you, Emmanuel, Emmanuel, Emmanuel yeah. Kant, the famous philosopher. <laughs> no, you. it's it's Kent, Kent. Like the cigarette, yes. you idiot. Yeah. Anthropologist. You think there's a fleshlight out there called the <laughs> Emmanuel Can? <laughs> <laughs> Thank you for going with Can. <laughs> it's a special comes with a little bit of a special lube. I'm sorry, sex toys, what is it now? Anthropologist Dr. Sarah Johns analyzed data from Love Honey, the world's largest online sex toy retailer. Now stop right there, just for one second. Say you're a, you're a you know elder in the anthropology department at a distinguished university, mm -hmm. and someone comes in and they go, um, "I'm going to be heading over to Love Honey this afternoon." <laughs> oh, of course. Here, two, here's ten thousand dollars. <laughs> <laughs> Don't you think this was <laughs> this whole thing started as the guy got caught looking at LoveHoney.com? What are you doing? <laughs> oh, uh, this is my new research pro project. <laughs> They want to find out what consumers look for when buying phallic-shaped sex toys. All right. All right. Here's what they found. Consumers showed a preference for sex toys that are not direct replicas of the male member. I see. And apparently disliking in particular veiny. So they want a less vascular. Too there life, you go. Too there you lifelike? Go. I yeah. think. They don't want them too lifelike. Yeah. And mm. I don't think that if they were accidentally discovered somebody would know immediately what it was maybe ah do you know what i'm saying uh -uh. that's my neck massager yeah that kind of deal. Or, yeah exactly yeah oh, that's an interesting theory i think they just um I, the ones that have the veins and everything just are really unappealing don't you think <laughs> people well, are, well to for, you they're maybe. not for me sure people are more likely to choose products based on them having a lower price ah Girth appeared to be more important than length. I knew it. With researchers <laughs> concluding, girth. Uh, do you have the? Do you have the? Uh, I know. think it's called the Albright uh, Tuna Can Two Thousand. Albright. <laughs> Is that Is after Albright Madeline a, Albright? <laughs> Is Albright a tuna brand? Uh, no, the idea <laughs> is that the girth you see in tuna can is wider than it is long. Oh, see, okay. The, the round part, you see. I've always heard the term beer can when we're talking mm, about. Yeah, sure. Yeah, that that a tuna can is significantly more squat. <laughs> yeah, very much so, yeah. That's, <laughs> Researchers concluded women do not place considerable emphasis on large phallus size, too. Ah, so that's one now? Large phallus large size. Large phallus oh. size. They oh. don't care for the large. They just want something that will do the job. Oh, but they want it girthy, but not lo long. Right. Yes. Hmm. Okay, here we go. I Here I found this. It says, uh, highly realistic looking products make women and their partners feel less comfortable that they are truly substitutes for the male member rather, ah. th rather than a fun... And then I can't read this next part, but well, that, it says something about insertable. Yeah. Okay, yeah. I love that they use the word fun. It is fun. They are fun. Where have you been? 
No, but I mean, this is a scientific Why journal. Oh, toys. right, right, yeah. You, know, oh. I, you think that, that they would they would have used a different word, pleasurable. Ah, uh, I see. You know, fun sounds Fancier. like someone's, someone's, you know, giggling in the bedroom as opposed to, do you have your white coat on? I'm bringing in the dildo. <laughs> well, I hope you're giggling in the bedroom. Sex yes, is fun. Yes. Oh, yes. Yes, yes. I'm, uh, what was do- the doctor's name again? Oh, Sarah business. Johns. I'm Dr. Sarah Johns, dildologist. I'd like you to meet my husband. He's a dildographer. Uh... <laughs> Which requires a lot more flights. Yes. <laughs> yes. The dildographers, they have to get up high in the airplanes and take photographs. It's an aerial <laughs> photograph of a male member. Mm-hmm. Quite substantial, this one. Yes. <laughs> yes, uh, yes. Well, that's interesting. So the, the essence of this is people care mostly about the price and the girth. Right. And it not looking realistic. We're having a wide sale. <laughs> <laughs> They want that uh, that girth. So wide. They want that some bitch to scrape the sides. <laughs> <laughs> Too wide. Get locked in there. Yeah. Crazy wide. <laughs> that last one poked my liver out. <laughs> oh, that'd be like. Uh, I know. Oh, that's why. Right. That's why they're switching to the tuna can two thousand. Okay. Uh, coming up, we have a Flacco update. Not Joe, the great quarterback, but uh, he's an okay. What other Flacco is there? The did famous the owl. The owl. He, did, uh, he did win a Super Bowl, though. So. Flacco yeah. the Owl. Nobody knows who Flacco the Owl is. Oh, yeah, he's know famous all over New York. Uh, also, on, oh, some... look, it's Flacco the Owl. Oh. Well, you missed. He flew off, I heard. Oh, oh he flew. And you're he upset with me. You're upset with me going to Pond Hill Farm in Harbor Springs, Michigan and shooting melons at uh, <laughs> Yeah, goats. because that was reality. This... <laughs> Is my mouth? There's not an owl here. I'm not shooting owls. No owls shot. No owls no, were harmed. It's theater. I see. Um, will you go? Sh- will you go to Pond Hill Farm with me and and launch melons at the goats? Yes. You promise. I absolutely will. I would promise. You, would you launch goats into a melon patch? I, I'll I'll <laughs> cut a goat. I'll, I'll slit a goat's neck. No, you won't. Right in front of you. No, you won't. While staring it in the eyes. Just get me close. <laughs> Did they do that on Apocalypse Now? Oh, a they? big bull thing or like a wildebeest or something. Uh, yeah. Oh, do they? I forgot. It's that. not fun. Yeah, they, they, uh. they filmed that when the uh, ASPC <laughs> yeah, was yeah. not looking. Hey, fellas, let me buy you lunch. I'll go down the street, will you? <laughs> okay. Hey, speaking I bet of they lunch. They shot that in Michigan. I <laughs> yeah. bet that's where they shot uh, it. So speaking of lunch, uh, I want to tell you about our friends at HelloFresh because they know what's happening in your life. They know that you are so sick of this conversation. Where do you want to go for dinner? It doesn't matter to me. I don't care. Don't just show me something. <laughs> How about this? You're sick of your own cooking? Maybe uh, it's time to let HelloFresh help you out by, they'll do the shopping. They do the measuring. You've already picked the recipes. You've got more than three dozen, uh, I think it's up to 45 now, choices per week. And you pick the one you want, they'll send it to you. By the way, you can swap proteins. You can make it work just for you. They have vegetarian stuff. They have good old-fashioned comfort food. They've got uh, versions of it that are low-cal or low-carb. Do yourself a favor. Shake up your food life a little bit. Life's too short to eat the same stuff every night. And uh, I'm not saying you're necessarily your partner can't cook, but if that's the case... Now, suddenly, the food's going to get a lot better. Restaurant-quality food from HelloFresh. And here's what you do. You uh, go to uh, HelloFresh.com slash BT Show Free. The slash BT Show Free part will get you free breakfast for life as long as you keep your subscription active. Each box is going to have a delicious breakfast in there, too. What are you working on over there, Christy? Oh, talk about a family favorite. Crispy cheddar chicken with roasted broccoli and loaded bacon mashed potatoes. This is an amazing meal. And you put it together, six easy steps, wonderful looking, and tastes so great. Kids are going to love this one. The crispy cheddar chicken. It's brand new, and it's at HelloFresh. Sorry, I just um, had a can of soda water explode on my <laughs> groin. <laughs> thank you. Thank you very much. If you're watching on the TV, you now see, did Tom wet his pants? <laughs> no. <laughs> HelloFresh. Go to HelloFresh.com slash BT Show Free. Enjoy that free breakfast item with each active subscription. HelloFresh.com slash BT Show Free. Kick your food uh, life into the butt. Right. Boom. Right there. Let's get some good food now. Stop making that junk. That. Yes, sir. Now, when we come back, we have in the news Hooters. Yep. Uh, Kind of a sad Hooters story. This is the Bob and Tom Show. Hi, this is Andy Kindler, and this is a different register in my voice. I'm 
Maria, were you a temp? Did you ever I was a temp for a long time, about seven years, and uh, I was like how they make every job sound like, you know, it, it, you know, so crazy, you know, um, we we do things a little differently around here. <laughs> we're a bit of a nut house. Hold on your hat. It's going to be a wild ride. <laughs> <laughs> but it never is. No. <laughs> I train people in at offices, you know, so I was like, oh, the fax machine's a little tricky. Yeah, you got to dial nine to get out. No, a lot of people try to use the fax machine. They go, oh, it's not working. I said, did you dial nine? <laughs> you know, oh, uh, what's a week, Rajiv? No, every day we get bagels in the kitchen. There was week, uh, Rajiv made some mini muffins. That's on a Monday. So guess what? Guess what that's called? Mini muffin Monday. <laughs> <laughs> I wish offices would be as crazy as they always promise. You know, yeah. you get trained in, and be like, uh, take me out of your pocket. Hi, I'm Zakynthos, the talking rabbit. I'm in charge of the vol- volcano. <laughs> Don't worry. Um, you'll be working for Thor. He's uh, always scrabbling through the recycling looking for quartz. He's a dwarf. <laughs> Nude. <laughs> Anywho, lunch is from 12 to 1, but there is a wrinkle in time, so just try to get back any time for the quickening. <laughs> your flippers, your barbecue tongs. If you have any questions, go, uh, go back through the fifth dimension. I'll be sitting there on my lily pad. <laughs> my only question is, when do I start? Yeah. Oh, that's a good job. <laughs> Wow. Man. I love that. Mm -hmm. (laughs) Dial nine for the fax machine. Remember that. Everybody's crazy. No, they're not. Okay. Mm -hmm. Maria Bamford is with us. Wow, that's brilliant. That's very, very funny. Do you ever work in an office, Tom? Mm. Uh, I don't think you have, have you? Worked in a restaurant. No. No. It's an interesting experience. Bob, Mm. did you ever work in an office? Oh, yeah. I did a little I have issues with authority, you might have. I know. That's why I was asking. Mm -hmm. You know what struck me is it's, it's so quiet. What, in an in office? office? Yes. Well, yeah. Well, you're still, yes. that's if, if people are actually doing work. Yeah. And I had to work at a bank once when I was at Temp, and mm. I was stunned at how quiet it was. Mm-hmm. And people whisper, th- you know. Yeah, you know what the saddest place in the world is when you're the temp and it's time for office birthdays and you didn't get the email because you're not on the system yet. Mm. Right. And you hear the voice of your coworkers rise from the conference room. Happy birthday, everybody who had their uh, birthday in the office this month. Mm-hmm. And if you cup your curves mug against the conference room <laughs> door, you can almost hear the happy scraping of plastic fork against paper plate. Mm. And later sometimes, guys, somebody comes by your cube and says, oh, there's cake left did the temp get any cake what's her name again mm-hmm. oh uh yeah. hey my <laughs> <laughs> if you want any cake there's cake left nice. mm-hmm. cake temp want cake <sighs> yeah they all want sound. cake Really good, Sam. A little happier, not. Are we, are we there yet? <laughs> are, are we there yet? Are we there yet? Well, you sound like you're taking a big. <laughs> shit. We're not supposed to be happy when we're asking if we're there. <laughs> yeah, see, I'm, I'm are we there okay. yet? The producers are in here. The minions are out there. <laughs> oh, okay. That would we say, are Dictator we there yet? We're like, are we there, there yet? Once again are, are we there, there yet? yet? This is not English class. <laughs> Dad, Dad. That much of a tea. You sound like Mrs. Marshall. That's who you sound like. I hope Mrs. Marshall doesn't have a voice as deep as mine. I, and Mrs. I, and she teaches music she too. And you're like, are we there yet? I hope her voice is half as malo- mellifluous and as witty. Okay, now it's like my English teacher, mellifluous. <laughs> Quit making up words. Here we go. Let's go. Try to. <laughs>
It's every time I walk in the house and I'm doing something wrong, I hear that music from Law and Order. It's like, gong, gong. <laughs> <laughs> ah, I didn't do nothing. <laughs> I just, I'm so scared of her. I'm just scared of her. 1.27 yeah. p.m., the Gardell household. <laughs> gong, gong. gong, gong. She sl- and she's Southern, so she'll slip a sandwich in front of me, Dad. Uh-huh, and then I did it. What? Oh, Wait a minute. Oh, oh, oh. <laughs> Bob and Tom. <laughs> Well, I thank you. Whoa, 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 whoa. whoa. What I am I doing, know. Tom? What am I doing? I don't. I wasn't paying attention. I, I just, I just your usual half drooling, half speaking something. <laughs> your usual. I was trying to get people to welcome back to the Bob and Tom Show. I'm trying to get people to vote for Pe- Peter Frampton for the Rock and Roll Hall of Fame. Fram-tone. That's his guitar. Bah, 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 bah. Oh, and I thank you. Woo, woo, woo. No, no, you, 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 you I sound, still don't think I. I you, you still like don't a, think you're saying thank. You sound if you like a demented it. geriatric who's got diarrhea. Do you what? feel good calling me geriatric? <laughs> Is that what you do? You feel good doing that? <laughs> no, I feel accurate. <laughs> Tom By just... the way, would you kill a goat, Jess Hooker? Welcome to the show. Uh, what are the circumstances? Uh, well, uh, it killed your family. <laughs> you're there. <laughs> you're having nice pieces of melon at some outdoor park bench. Oh, God. And, and you all catapult. Of the, someone wrote a letter. You have a catapult and you shoot melon at the goats. Would where you I, do this? Where I grew up in the summers my whole life, about a mile north of there is a... Uh, a place called some, Pond Hill Farm that has... We need some heartwarming music while you tell They have um, great food. They have bottled salad dressing. Yeah, do you like salad dressing in a bottle? <laughs> Wine. Bottled salad bottled. dressing. Yeah, so they can, bottle you, their you, own? Sure. Yeah, yeah, you, yeah, so you can get uh, it to go. These yeah. Cretans don't appreciate that because I'm sure <laughs> well, as, long, as long as it's not ranch manufactured I can't, I can't by some bottled, factory. There, there are certain gas stations I can get bottled <laughs> <laughs> salad dressing. I'm sure you can, get, you can get salmonella and... Uh, other diseases. I, don't I think so. You'd like it. But they do have a thing where you can launch. It's like he's, <laughs> the, you take this giant rubber band and you back up and you launch melons out or the goats eat them. These okay. guys think I'm aiming at the goats. Oh, okay. You can't help but aim at the goats. The goats are there. Right. You can't tell me you're not aiming at the goats. Be funny. <laughs> See? There you I, go. I ate a goat taco once. That's the last time I'll ever do that. <laughs> God, that was awful. Oh, I love goat cheese. Don't you like goat cheese? They have a pretty good... Well, that's... I told you, in Austin, they have a goat taco truck that's really good. Why didn't you eat at that one? Because I wasn't there. <laughs> oh, I was well, at a restaurant, and the guy that owns the restaurant goes, I mean, the, our best thing is the goat taco. Yeah. One bite. Oh, it's got the... Okay. Got the texture of meat and the, and the great taste of turpentine. Let me ask you something. <laughs> Let's say you own a restaurant, and you're up to your eyeballs in goat meat. <laughs> okay? You come up to a sucker you're like me go and go... to you, and you go, I wouldn't eat the goat. Nobody likes it. So <laughs> what would I say? It's the best thing we have, sir. Why don't you try our yeah, goat taco? I gotta get rid of these. Yeah. I gotta get rid of this goat meat. They're awful. <laughs> <laughs> you ever had goat tacos? No, uh, no, I haven't. You ever had you goat it anything? The meat itself, or was it the seasoning? It was just I don't know. I think the meat tasted terrible. Oh, the not my cup of tea. I'm sure there are people who love goat. Sure, it's and a little I, bit know. gamey. I've had goat stew. Yeah. Yeah, you know, there's no okay. reason to eat goat when you can get beef. <laughs> you see, <laughs> this, oh. this way, those great American ranchers and farmers out there making beef for us. <laughs> yeah. There's a reason there isn't a. Uh, place that has you know the golden horns <laughs> so, fair enough it's billy's the home of the the, the goat burger you know why they don't, you know why they don't have that who wants a billy burger <laughs> i mean that might fly in some countries where you know they'd eat sand if they could harvest it but that um, might fly in some <laughs> countries they go, eat no. sand <laughs> But goats are fun. They make great companions for horses. Yeah. You like yeah. those fainting goats? I those are funny. Them. My Larry. mom yeah. had those. Yeah. yeah. The Hours screaming goats. I love the screaming goats, too. The little goats in pajamas. Have you seen those? Little baby pygmy goats they put in pajamas? They put them in pajamas. Oh, they're so cute. Mm. Running around. Yes. Uh, I'm not familiar with them. Ever pygmy. see that yeah. guy who puts... <laughs> Oh, my God. Pajamas on his coat. Okay, I've had enough. (laughs) Hundreds Um, of people attended the candlelight vigil to commemorate a Hooters restaurant in West Virginia. Flap in the back. WCHS reports after... Candlelight at Huntington, Charleston. I almost worked there. Really? Why don't you try so you can get a gig now? Boy, uh, (laughs) Booth announcer. Oh, okay. And they were nice to me. They kind of wanted me to work there. I will write a recommendation. (laughs) (laughs) All right. 
I will do it. WCHS, Charleston. <laughs> Somebody get Amy in the phone. Why Write didn't a recommendation. You get the gig? Huh? Why didn't you get the gig? I don't know. Fell Attitude, asleep. talent. <laughs> something about Showed up drunk. <laughs> Sometimes. I looked at a picture of his wife and said, oh, who's this hideous beast? <laughs> <laughs> I thought you said you didn't have any goats. I need a, I, your wife. I, okay. I, I need a I goat before I need that. <laughs> wow. After garnering national attention, fans gathered What's in... What's the difference between your wife and a bowling ball? <laughs> <laughs> if I had to, I could eat a bowling ball. Ah, uh, the classic. That's right. Okay. I, What's the name of that city again, Chick? Kanawha City. Kanawha City to pay their respects to former Hooters location that is set for a demolition this week. The restaurant's been closed since March of 2020, according to WCHS. Generally. The building will be replaced with a Sheets gas station. Mm. Oh, yeah. 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 Holy Sheets. It's mm -hmm. a great place. And... Um, they're not going to put another Hooters in anywhere? And, uh, Apparently not. Are there any By the way, uh, Channel 8, WCHS in Charleston, if uh, you need anyone to do your booth announcing, I, I, have, now all, available, huh? I have all the equipment. Uh, God knows I have the time. <laughs> I could just, do, uh, just incorporate that in my regular day. There you go. What does a booth announcer do? Well, tonight on Josh Arnold at Home. <laughs> oh! It's Josh and the Goats Loose <laughs> tonight at 8 on Channel 8. Join us for all the wacky Join fun. Stuff like or that. They, yeah, the... Coming up on the news at 5. Coming up at 5 with Christy <laughs> Lee and Tom Griswold. You'll have yeah, see, men on stilts. <laughs> the problem with this is you'd have to do it. I'd have you'd to have read to it. pay attention. I you can be great read. at it. Chick, you great. should be. I can read. You should be the nation's <laughs> booth announcer. Thank you. You, you would never be available at uh, 2 o'clock. Oh, God. <laughs> I gotta go to my computer and read these dumb Just announcements. Just because I've done that when you call, <laughs> doesn't mean you, you, I would. You did that two weeks ago. We had a project for you to do, and you did it one week and never came back. That's You're right, because you were week. here, and I couldn't. Uh, oh, okay. No, no. See, see. So let's get back to this see. memorial. This see memorial at the on. Hooters. They've got people holding candles for a. It's all tongue in cheek, right? They're yes. fun. Right. No, no, no. They have really know. low cut tops. <laughs> Not tongue and cheek. Oh, tongue and cheek. Oh, not the wrong place. No wonder I've been asked to leave Hooters. <laughs> like, wait a minute. Well, they, 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 it was a memorial thing, so yeah. the the the, the uh, ladies, the waitresses, all had their shorts at half ass. Oh, you've got uh, in honor of the. You're thinking of booters or booties or peckers. Something about peckers. a butt is what. I'm is trying. there a place called Peckers? There was, yeah. You're kidding me. No. Was it scantily clad men? It or was. The yes. Yeah. It was. What they serve. Probably meat. men. <laughs> I'm yeah. well, I mean, and like meat. wings. What, what, yeah, what was I mean, their it, thing? Yeah, I was basically the same. Uh, probably thing. Uh, probably the, the glory hole. The glory hole special was the. <laughs> Pat, do you have a song for us? A tribute for the Hooters. People? Yeah, of course. Oh, is it a song from the, my favorite band, the Hooters? No. Well, then let's not. I don't want to hear it. <laughs> well, we've already my started. favorite band, the Hooters. <laughs> That's his favorite band. I, that's his most and current. Even band. the guys in the Hooters don't say the Hooters is their oh, favorite. I love band. those guys. Oh, I like them too. Friends. I like them too. But maybe. Yeah. Oh, and we danced. Yeah. That's a great song. It is a good song. Is it though? Yeah. Okay. Yeah, it's real yes. good. Yes. Intro. All right. All right. But that's not what we're Mandolin. hearing here. What are you doing, Pat? What's this? <laughs> I don't want to do it now, but I will. No, 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 no. Just no, no. Yelling we, out we're, musical we're, instruments. Try not, to have, horn. try not to have the intro too long. This is about the memorial of Hooters. <laughs> Goodbye, Hooters. There's no intro. I come right in. Okay. okay. Goodbye, Hooters. West Virginia. Oh, yeah, I remember you did this. Yeah. Best damn, we're doing it again. <laughs> Best damn chicken wings. <laughs> this side of the river. <laughs> girls, were, <laughs> girls were bold there. Put on quite a show. White tank tops, tight orange shorts with a hint of camel toe. Country roads, take me there. We'll have a vigil. Pull up a chair, Hooters, West Virginia, someone's naked mama, beer, boobs, and wings. Hooters, please don't go. <laughs> oh, <laughs> thank you very much. We're going to be joining you in West Virginia in a month or so. Details coming up, a, a live show. I could show uh, is pay be you cool. a station visit there, Channel 8. There you go. You could do good, it good live. Oh, excuse me, but um, you'll see butterflies fly out in my ass before he'll... <laughs> <laughs> Make any effort when we get there. Well, I, I don't want to go to this TV. I was kidding when I saw it. Like, <laughs> <laughs> it. You like his impression of just a grumbling. I don't want to remember. You need to go after this job just he, to spite he him. He just, he, 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 I don't know. I know. I don't know. I know. No matter what I do, he, I 
Yeah. Thinks I'm a, a jiggling pile of <laughs> stupid goo. I don't know why. <laughs> That's what he thinks. No, I just know that no. you you're averse. In there too. To you're averse you to think you know. You're averse to extra work. And the minute you got the gig, it would be every yeah, day. Yeah, that's how I got this gig. Uh, I got extra to, work I, I, and I, putting up with uh, people. That's that's <laughs> boy, I, I'm weak in those areas. Am I? Is that what I am, Tom? Oh you think gotta, you're a walk in the park? <laughs> You know, this isn't even Thursday, and I might start screaming. And I've done my job. Remember the listener who wrote in last week and said, "Yeah, he, Thursday." He always listens on Thursdays because that's the best day that there, there may be an incident. <laughs> and the, the July twenty first, two thousand eighteen, was evidently on uh, Thursday. Thursday. Oh, okay, yeah. 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 Oh, the, oh. The, the famous meltdown. Yeah. yeah. Uh, Tim Comerford, the bassist for Rage Against the Machine says he does not know whether the band is broken up. <laughs> Weeks after drummer Brad Wilk said the band would not be touring or playing live again. Maybe he just can't hear. Comerford was <laughs> asked about the band's status in an interview with Rolling Stone. This is the greatest line ever. Huh? He replied, oh. I don't know. I don't get involved in that. I'm the bass player. <laughs> hey, you know what? I feel I I yeah. feel it. I don't know if this show's done. I don't know. I, don't I just know. sit here. I come in every day and you guys are here, so yeah. I guess we're going. He goes, I just wait for someone to tell me what to do. Yeah, and the rest yeah. of the, he goes home to his very nice house yep. yeah. and waits for the phone to ring. Comover continued well, They're Brad's getting on in years, that band. Sure. They, yeah. they changed the name. Oh, they did? Oh. It's a Rage Against Arthritis. Okay. Now it's... <laughs> <laughs> that was so they Johnny are... Carson-esque. I can't tell uh, I just, it's, I'm reading this book about yeah. Carson. Maybe that's why. Well, Rage Against uh, uh, The Machine. Rage, uh, the, the, Mr. Rage, Art, Art Fern is on bass. Yes, uh, who... Comerford continued, Brad said what he said, but he's one step above me. He's in the number three spot. I'm the low man on the totem pole. That's all I can tell you. I'm the bass player. The bass players always are the last people to find out about the S word like that. Well, no, their last tour, they got in trouble because they were charging 200 bucks a ticket. So they're not really raging against the machine now. They're sort of somewhat upset at the man, but not enough to... Well, wait a minute. <laughs> Have you bought tickets to a concert lately? I mean, well, you're raging against the machine. I think you might want to, you know... Yeah, yeah let, be a true socialist. Let's be honest, and, yeah. yeah. Well, <laughs> charge ten bucks. Okay. Morello yeah. is, is past socialism. I don't know what he's 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 a bright guy, but isn't uh, Gorilla Radio? Yeah, yeah, mm -hmm. that's a good yeah. song. I love that song. Yeah, you're right. They rage against the machine, but not not that much. They'll they'll take <laughs> yeah. the, they'll take the checks. Yeah, yeah. yeah. You know, they, they're, they're, they're not they're not they're not giving out the merch. <laughs> right, right. You know, the seventy five dollar t shirt is yeah. they're not all that much rage really. <laughs> right, right. It's more like cashing in while pretending to be pissed off at the machine. They've got yeah. some fun. Uh, Songs though, man, and some powerful songs. Too. Have He's you seen player. them live? Uh, no, I never have. Oh. I've seen Tom Morello, but I've not seen the whole band. Gotcha. I think it's, it, this is uh, bass players like, everywhere are going to be upset about this. Uh, nah, I think they. Uh, what about Geddy Lee? Isn't he in charge? McCartney. Come on. Yeah, but they're well, not going to. They're going to get what he's saying. I would think. <laughs> they're also the lead singers in the yeah, band. Yeah, exactly. It's not That's just like the bass thing. player. Now, um, uh, Pat, mm -hmm. have you ever uh, been in a band w with a? Were you in charge? Yeah, pretty much always. What yeah. was the name of your band? Uh, the Pat Godwin Trio. There were three of us. Please tell me there are recordings available. <laughs> I was in Maroon 6, but I was fired. Uh -huh. Oh, geez, uh -huh. yeah. Uh -huh. <laughs> the Pat Godwin Trio. Yeah, yeah. That was my who, first little... Who else was in it? Uh, Dave Derizio on drums and Bob Grisick on bass guitar. Yeah. Well, a fine football player. That's greasy. Oh. Good uh, <laughs> Good names from the Northeast of Pennsylvania. Okay, good. All good. right. Did, were you in charge? Yes. Did you guys do... Uh, well, the Pat Godwin Trio. <laughs> I wasn't in charge. <laughs> well, I mean, the Dave Clark Five. Dave, Dave wasn't Clark, in charge? He probably took all the money, but he played drums, right? Yeah. He didn't mm. sing. Mm. The other guy sang. Pink Floyd. That Floyd guy barely did anything. Yeah. yeah. Didn't write a song. No. He's not listening <laughs> on anything. Hey, Andy, want a little haircut, Andy? <laughs> <laughs> oh, Floyd. <laughs> Floyd the barber. <laughs> Andy Griffith. <laughs> 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 you know, we haven't played our Andy Griffith tribute in a long time. Uh, there's a reason. <laughs> 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 no, 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 the one about, about Andy's the sheriff. Yeah, Andy's the sheriff. Yeah. And Barney was Boy, the deputy. We haven't played our Andy Griffith tribute in a long That's like a <laughs> gas station clerk. You know, we haven't sold black licorice in a while. <laughs> <laughs> Wait, why do you think that is? Is that code for something? <laughs>
A former funeral home owner in Colorado has been arrested for allegedly keeping a corpse in the back of a hearse for two years. Oh. According to two the two years arrest affidavit. That's too long. I mean, I, I, I hope they've got one of those. I still love the, it. One of those deodorant things hanging from the mirror. It's gonna have that new corpse smell. <laughs> this wasn't oh. the only problem this guy had. The body of the woman discovered in the hearse during a court-ordered eviction of Mr. Miles Hartford's home. She's my wife. Where they also discovered Mr. Hartford had been hoarding the cremated remains of 35 people. Yeah. That's different. A 35 and counting. <laughs> but, I mean, they've at least been cremated. A warrant list. The, 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 this is a corpse in a casket in a... How did it not stink? Well, it stinks for a while, and then it doesn't, right? Yeah. Yeah. That's the way it works, huh? And maybe it was a hearse that he parked and never used again, too. Mm. You don't know. It could be just sitting on the property. Well, I'm going to go pick up the kids. It's 3.15. Ah, they'll they'll all squeeze in the front. Got a casket in the back. I do like those cremains. (laughs) I mix them all up and hump them all at once. (laughs) (laughs) I mean, you know, this is in Colorado, right? Well, the guy's a sicko, right? Yes, it's in Colorado. Oh, yeah, he's sick. Maybe he's high. You ever had an edible so strong you forgot about the corpse that was in your trunk? <laughs> boy, oh boy, that is that is high. A warrant lists potential charges of abuse of a corpse, forgery of the death certificate, and theft of the money paid for the woman's cremation. So they, apparently they didn't come back for her cremains. Hmm. Oh, but they paid. And yeah, they they pay. I'll take care of it. And then never did it. Never did it. Mm. Yeah, this guy's a maniac. He's giving out random. You know what's amazing, I just, Christy? This guy was only 33 years old. Yeah, I saw a picture of him. I, I read the story over the weekend. It, it's, ugh. Wow. Yeah. Yikes. Well, mm. remember that play? Was, was it in Georgia or whatever where they were claiming to do all these cremations, but they like just stuck them in the backyard? There were like a hundred corpses yeah, in, a, just, in, a, like, in a swamp wow. or something. Right. Yeah. <laughs> oh, yeah. Wow. That is so, so, so was the, grisly. Was the body in the hearse or was it like on a, a ski rack on top? Oh, uh, like Lord, or uh, I believe Imogene the preposition Coca. was in. Not it was on. in. Okay. You think somebody'd notice if it were on? Mm. Well, I don't know. Hey, that guy's uh, got a ski rack in his hearse. That'd be funny enough. <laughs> Just put a ski rack on top of a hearse. Drive that is, up. That's funny. Drive up to what Beaver Creek for the weekend. <laughs> or a hearse with the two bikes on top. Uh, is it possible for you to not be pretentious? <laughs> Could what that, do you mean? What do you mean? Did you hear what you just said? If you're in Colorado and you're not skiing, something's wrong with you. Well, well. I hope you're even, even if you're semi-disabled, you can still ski. <laughs> I just rode on a chairlift with a guy with one leg last week. Oh, boy. Oh, okay. really? I can't even imagine what you said to that poor person. Is it because you started talking to him and he chewed his leg off? Is that what happened? <laughs> no, seriously. And, the, and then he had. What do you the, think he asked that guy? He has the poles that have the little skis in the bottom. Mm-hmm. <laughs> he just doesn't have one big ski. <laughs> Mm. Yeah, why no, wouldn't you get like no, a he, has a, he, has, he had a traditional ski in his left leg, and right. I yeah. wanted to say, do you have to buy them both? I guess you wear the one on. You got the, you got part. So we two. only had one part ski. Two. Yeah. <laughs> then he has a little skis in the skis bottom. Skis aren't of his left po- and right. Did he go in circles? No, most, most of them aren't. They aren't. Oh, most okay. of them aren't. He had uh, little uh, skis in the bottom of his poles, so he could ski with one leg. Bravo to this guy. Why wouldn't the ski people make a ski that ha- that includes the boot? So you'd have to buy a left and a right ski. Instead of just skis, and well, it'd be incredibly separate. complicated and much more expensive. That's exactly right. I hope right. that guy makes it, jokes everywhere he goes. Eh, what are the odds of me uh, running into another pack of wolves, huh? <laughs> 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 he only had a limited time to talk to somebody on a chairlift. So, uh, Doesn't it take like 20 minutes? How long is a chairlift? Depends. Depends oh, on five how, minutes. How tall just the a, mountain is. Yeah. <laughs> if I were on a chairlift, I'd talk about cheese. Would you? That's what I'd talk mm. about. Yes. So you, you don't think it'd be funny just in one second? <laughs> you're, 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 on, you're on Interstate 70. You're driving out to Vail. And a hearse goes by and it's got a ski rack with skis on it top. It would be yeah, funny, would, yes, yeah. yes. But what would be more enjoyable than that? Why do I spend all of my time in my brain thinking, how do I get out of this conversation? <laughs> I think a lot about cheese. <laughs> <laughs> Gardner's Wisconsin Cheese and Sausage. Oh, yeah, I brought some in, by the way. Their famous squeaky cheese curds made fresh in the morning, most often delivered to your doorstep in about 48 hours nationwide. And listen to this. There's a new flavor. It's a limited time, so get on this maple bacon flavored cheese curds. You heard me right. You've got the sweetness of the naturally oaky maple, plus the savory bacon flavor. 
Ah, tastes just like Sunday morning. Mm -hmm. Tomorrow is the last day this flavor is available, so be sure to order your maple bacon-flavored cheese curds by February 27th. Another popular loader, um, or popular as some people say. Oh, right. I like to go with popular. <laughs> A lot of people do it. Yeah, <laughs> yes. Gardner's Oven Baked Cheese. That's what I brought in this morning. There's some with some of their uh, garlic summer sausage. It arrives pre-baked. You just heat it, knead it, grill it, skillet, air fry it, even microwave it, and try a little bit of everything with the Bob and Tom Sampler Package. That's right. It's the perfect intro to all of Gardner's most beloved products, including the eight-year-old super sharp cheddar bacon oven baked cheese, buffalo wing cheese, teriyaki meat sticks, and garlic summer sausage. Go to gardnerswisconsincheese.com slash Bob and Tom, they've made it very easy for you. And right now, receive free cold pack shipping and free cheese curds when you spend $59 or more at GardnersWisconsinCheese.com slash Bob and Tom. Once again, that's GardnersWisconsinCheese.com yeah, slash a, Bob and Tom. There's a deadline on that. Get that done. Yes. Thank you very much, Josh. Uh, coming up, we have uh, <laughs> a gigantic snake has been discovered, maybe the biggest on Earth, and cool stuff from NASA. This is the Bob and Tom Show. Add to or continue the conversation. Check out. Well, <laughs> looks like uh, we got dumped. <laughs> Uh -oh. Is there anything you'd like to say to them? Well, our girls have left us, so I'd like to say just one thing. Oh, yeah. Baby, blow me. Oh, a kiss as you're leaving. Blow me. Oh, a kiss right now. Because if you're going to leave me, honey, I will surely miss the way you blow me. Oh, blow me a kiss. Come on and blow, 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 blow me. A kiss like you mama mean it. Blow me. A kiss right now. I really can't remember anything as hard as this. So blow me. Blow me a kiss. Wow. Some things in life are hard to swallow. She couldn't take it all deep. She couldn't handle everything. Who could? But if she comes back tomorrow. As you're leaving, baby Blow me Oh, a kiss as you go And always think about me As you're going down your list <laughs> And blow me Blow me a kiss I'll miss her arms <laughs> And her elbows I'll miss her arms and her elbows I'll miss her legs <laughs> so tall yeah! I'll miss her legs so tall I'll miss her neck <laughs> And her shoulders Yes, sir but I'll miss her head You'll want to come home, honey, that's okay, just grab a hold of this, and baby, blow me, baby, won't you blow me, blow me a kiss, oh, hi, Miss Melvin, oh, Sally, I'll miss your arms and your elbows. Bob Dean and Tom and Band and Orchestra. Amazing. Thank you, Dean. Thank you, Jerry. Uh, oh, that's fantastic. Hey, it's Josh Arnold with a food recommendation for you. Gardner's Wisconsin Cheese, their famous oven-baked cheese. It arrives pre-baked. You just heat it and eat it, grill it, skill it, or air fry it. Check out their new oven-baked cheese flavor, jalapeno. Ooey, gooey, spicy cheese. It's sure to tickle your taste buds with real jalapeno flavor and heat. Perfect for game day parties or any time. Excuse me, are, um, are you serious with it? I mean, why are you doing this?
me, uh, the real me is right here. I could easily be doing this. We, we don't need you, man. I, uh, look, there's only room for one of us. That's Gardner's Wisconsin cheese, jalapeno flavored oven baked cheese. It's now available in Gardner's oven baked bundle package. So try all the great flavors. Receive free cold pack shipping and free cheese curds when you spend $59 or more at GardnersWisconsinCheese.com. Click the link below and tell them your pal Josh, me the real Josh, from the Bob and Tom Show sent you. used in these fertility drugs. Yes, yes, it was a terrible, terrible job, and I'm glad I no longer do it. Well, uh, why was it so bad? <laughs> well, you know, you have to go around, you know, collecting urine, but I just wanted to call to tell you why they had to stop using it. Why? Well, it's a terrible, terrible thing. These babies, uh -huh. they were conceived and born with using the non-urine. Uh -huh. When they came out, they would not cry when they were spanked. They wouldn't? No. Why? And uh, you had to wrap them across the hands with a ruler. <laughs> <laughs> I see. I see. Hey, Chick McGee. Uh -huh. yes, yes, Peppy. What are the only three words you need to know in French? Oh, I know this one. <laughs> <laughs> That's right. <laughs> uh, ho, ho, ho. Thank you, Peppy. Let's grow them. Au revoir. <laughs> Bob and Tom. Well meaning, but Yeah, they're they're all messed up. More than slightly confused. What we were talking about something earlier, which is when you're on a plane, sometimes you don't want to talk to people, sometimes you do. I make sure that I have a headset mm -hmm. on all the time. See, mm -hmm. I used to do that all the time. I do the same, but some I had a guy tapping on it. <laughs> no <Yeah>. way. <laughs> yeah. Can you turn that down? And I'm like, you know, I mean, how do you ignore a guy tapping on your big headphone with the light on? And I'm like, yeah, and he goes, yeah. uh, so, you know, and, and he just started the small no, way, you know, like business no, or pleasure. Brought, and I'm like, music, you know, the, I'm into the music. So I had to kind of take him off and be polite, and it was very awkward. All that. Yeah. <laughs> That's quite an invasion, I think. <laughs> it's you should never tap so. on somebody's head. Yeah, no kidding. No. Yeah. Plane's on fire, sir. Oh, okay. That's, <laughs> that's your personal space. No one's supposed I to be think in so. there. Yeah. Was it John Candy? Because it sounds like planes, trains, and automobiles. Uh, my dogs are barking. <laughs> <laughs> Eyebrow dandruff. That's yeah. disgusting. Is that, is that a thing? I'm not proud of it. There was, that's, why that's you, why would you bring you. that up on the air? That's I didn't. It was Christy did. It was said in oh, confidence off sorry. the air. Yeah. Don't ever say eyebrow dandruff in front of a potential lover. Oh. oh. oh okay. Hey, look, ladies. If I'm on top, you might get sprinkled on. <laughs> well, let it snow. Well, you're on top. Well. Yeah. I'll just let everybody else finish that. Oh, I see. Oh. If you're on top, you got about eight eight seconds. Seconds to live. Is that it? I wouldn't say eight. If you're on top, Godspeed to your ribs, ladies. Is that what we're getting up? Good morning, sunshine. Bob and Tom. Seventh. Hey, welcome back to the Bob and Tom Show. It's been an odd morning, but then when isn't it an odd morning? Mm. Are we in March yet? Not yet. Pretty Friday. close. Soon. Yep. Here's Tom. Friday. Oh, oh. Thank you very much. Uh, now, we... Um, now, what's significant about that, actually? About what? Do you know what's significant about what just happened? What? You asked if we were in March. Right. And then she said, Friday. Yes. Do you know why? <laughs> because it's March 1st. Well. Oh, just, uh. <laughs> I mean, so I know we have year. a leap year. So it's leap year. year. Yeah, right. So there's a March 29th. Uh, excuse me. There's a February 29th. <laughs> sure. Yeah. You see. And there's also going to be, there's gonna be a March. <laughs> see? There's going to be a March a March 32nd this year. That's significant. Wow. And, uh, yeah. No, no. Yeah, this is a leap year year. So, yeah, yeah, it is. Which yeah. means, Pat yeah. Godwin. Yes, sir. The Irish tradition is. The women can ask. Women can ask a man to marry them on. Yeah. That's the that Friday. That day, the 29th. On, on the, yes, on the Thursday. 29th of February. And you have to say yes. Are you aware of that, Pat? Yeah. Is, so your, girl, is, your, is your girlfriend aware of that? I'm going to make her aware of it every oh. day until Thursday. Oh. Oh, you want her to ready ask to you? Ready the knot? Oh, you're ready? Sure. I'm, I'm joking. <laughs> <laughs> Are you? Poor thing would have to be ready. Uh-huh. <laughs> you or her. God, God oh, he's knows. ready. <laughs> can I be the ring bearer? 
Sure. Come I'll down, be the flower uh, girl. I can be the officiant. That would be a fun time. I uh, know I know how to do that. I'm legally uh, allowed to do that. Would she allow any of this? <laughs> <laughs> well, I think we're happy with the way things are. Yeah, good. Okay, now um, let's. Uh, we need a little bit of a palate cleanser. Oh, Christ. So, uh, ladies and gentlemen, without any further I mean, ado. <laughs> here we go. Yay! Joke of the day. Hey, Chick. Yes, Ace. <laughs> Why did the coffee file a police report? <laughs> <laughs> I don't know, Ace. Why did the coffee file a police report? Because he was mugged. <laughs> oh. That was Ace Cosby's joke of the day. That does make you kind of mad, doesn't yeah. it? Just oh. real quick. I thought it was going to be. Oh. I thought it was going to be grounds for fun, yeah. something. No, I, I anything with humor. Barking up the barking up the wrong tree. Something in the can. Uh, what do we got? Yeah, I'm yeah. sorry. Yeah. Oh, that would anything be else but what it was. It was um, fine. <laughs> now, uh, Christy Lee is at the uh, Bob and Tom news desk. What have you got over there? Maxwell Big House. Anything. <laughs> Huh. A private company from the United States successfully landed a spacecraft on the moon. Sure. It did. The company is known as Intuitive Machines. Their lunar lander, Odysseus, is the first U.S. Odysseus. lander. Odysseus. 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 I cannot ever. I see it in my head and I've read it, but I never know how it's said. That's that like should a, have been uh, the loony. They called it the loony lander. I would have yeah, liked that. Yeah. I don't like that. Loony, loony, loony. It's the first U.S. lander in more than 50 years and the first private business to pull off a moon landing. Though it tipped over when it touched down near the Whoops. moon's south pole, <laughs> hampering communications, CEO Steve Aldemus said they still have quite a bit of operational capability. Except the four guys inside can't get out because it fell on the door. <laughs> <laughs> How is it possible that NASA was able to land men on the moon more than 50 years ago, and now it's a big deal when a remote Un spacecraft does it? I, what am I one? missing about this? Because the first time there weren't any people there, really? They were doing it with a big <laughs> remote control from Earth? And Stanley Kubrick? That's kind of hard. Uh, I'm just asking. I mean, so you're thought saying to, this is the actual real first landing on the moon? Maybe. Maybe. It's thought Maybe. to be within a few miles of its intended landing <laughs> site. You, if you keep reading, they're sending, a guy, man? they're sending men back up there to tip this thing up so they can sure they are. Oh, yeah. get some reception. I heard, I, heard, I heard the moon hasn't changed much since we were there, by the way. Josh, your thoughts? Yeah, no, I think it's pretty much the same. <laughs> I mean, the, the rocks aren't really much older. You know? NASA wanted to get as close as possible to the pole to scout out the area before astronauts show up later this decade. So we're going back to the moon. Will they go over there and flip it up? Maybe, maybe not. <laughs> It's not quite as heavy, but still. <laughs> yeah, like one, what is it, one fifth? Or, I don't know. Astronomers have found three previously unknown moons circling around Neptune and Uranus. No, they have. The uh, tiny Uranus. moons were spotted using powerful land based telescopes. Two of the moons orbit Neptune, while the one orbiting Uranus is estimated to be just five <laughs> miles in diameter. Oh, right. <laughs> the one orbiting Uranus is known as a dingleberry. Oh. It's the. Uh, <laughs> The that latest. word grosses me out to no end. No Uranus yeah. or Dingleberry. 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 Yeah, I don't yeah. like it either. Yeah. The latest tally puts Neptune at 16 known moons and Uranus at 28. That's too many. Why do they need all those so, moons? Uh, get uh, get rid of some of those moons. Yeah, yeah. get rid of them. Scientists said they suspect there be there may be many smaller moons yet. To Their be oceans discovered. must be going berserk. Yeah, that many moons and all the people's periods, all the ladies are going nuts. <laughs> oh I didn't know a female what? female periods are affected by the moon. moon? Oh, yes, sure. absolutely. Yeah. No, they're there's not. cycles, cycles yeah, they are. and cycles. Yeah. Yeah. Yes. So oh, you guys, you're right. Wait, yeah. I, the, 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 I forgot about you that. You guys <laughs> must be gushing this week. That was a beautiful moon I saw the other night. Yeah, yeah that was a full wow. moon. Oh, that, was, oh, that, was a, uh, that was a snow moon, I think. Yeah. So, whatever it was, it was big and huge. It was beautiful. Yeah. I have uh, trust issues right now with, with all this astronomy stuff. Why? Ever since they demoted <laughs> Pluto, I'm uh, not happy about it. Mm, yeah. Is Pluto back as a planet or is it still no. in limbo? It's still considered a. What do they call that? A mini planet or something? Yeah. Oh. yeah How dare they? There's a different yeah. qualification. Yeah, there is. I forget what it is. Yeah, no, yeah. Fair. I, mm. no fair. No <laughs> fair. Do you suppose uh, astronomers get tired of the Uranus jokes? Sure. Yes. I don't know that they ever get tired of it. Well, hey, they Dolores, started like, it. It was yeah. Uranus when we were kids. Yeah, it was. Could have yeah. named it anything. Yeah. Could have named it Bill. Yeah.
instead you went with the old hey, Dolores I can see your 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 Uranus wait a minute <laughs> well it must mean something is it a Greek word or yes Latin, it must or, mean it means yeah. round like a bunghole <laughs> yeah, or bunghole thank you Pat uh, when we go, flat out means bunghole yeah. okay. when, when we come back uh, we'll explore something God knows what uh, this is the Bob and Tom show Thanks for listening to the Bob and Tom Show this morning. Even though we're not too much to look at, you can also watch the show on our YouTube channel. I, uh, when we, when we uh, decided to do this, I said, uh, Tom, we should do a uh, Tim Wilson song. And I, uh, this is really hard. Um, I practice and practice, and man, I sucked. <laughs> you just can't do a Tim Wilson song. So I uh, took liberties with some of Timmy's songs and, uh, and whipped a song together in uh, honor of Tim. Help me get through this, folks. Can you hear that? Yeah. That's too bad. <laughs> he really loved his trailer park woman. Didn't care much for Dr. F***ing Phil. I'm sure he started the church league fist fight <laughs> and his ass got tired of Shaquille O'Neal <laughs> a big white hat with a black six string guitar now the heavens have their newest star where's my jetpack he would say now he's sporting wings and he taught Jesus Christ the booty song. <laughs> we all thought he'd go to Chuck E. Cheese hell. <laughs> With George Bush, George Strait, George Patton, and George Orwell. <laughs> A hillbilly homeboy, I could be wrong. But I know he's tired of me singing this f***ing song. <laughs> Big white hat with a black six string guitar. Now the heavens have their newest star. Oh, where's my jetpack? He would sing. Now he's sporting wings. And he asked Jesus Christ to join his band. They're singing Georgia. Goodbye, Georgia. Hey, did you enjoy those videos played in that break? Check out the Bob and Tom YouTube playlist for more great stuff. Tiki Barber here. Remember the days when I was a running back in the NFL? Well, if you're on your feet all day like I was, you get the struggle. The secret is orange insoles. Their insoles are like magic for your feet and body. They'll help you kick hip pain, sore feet, and lower back discomfort to the sidelines. Feel better, do more with orange insoles.
ocean getting lazy, is What's, it? Uh, yeah. The unsightliness. <laughs> the unsightliness. Are we of making the ocean castles? work too hard? What the hell? Is this a problem? Violators serious? could get a ticket from $128 to $500. $500? All right, little boy. Oh, sure. That's it's a... according to square footage, I think. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. You're yeah. assessing wow. square footage. Sorry, yes. We're assessing that sandcastle. That's going to cost you 1200 bucks a year. Oh, my God. They have nothing better to do. It turns out that, yeah, the problem is that... Uh, people trip? People were leaving huge moats. And, really? Uh, yeah, they were... Falling, break, breaking their legs, falling in the moat. I see. Break a hip. Uh, <laughs> so maybe sure, they should sure. make moatless uh, sandcastles. That's no fun, Bob. You can't have now with no moat. The, the whole point <laughs> is to have the. the why the, do you need a moat? To protect your sandcastle. Uh, yeah. This is why only men make sandcastles. <laughs> That's right. <laughs> <laughs> is that why? This is because I've they figure the, the sandcastle sand is the perfect metaphor for their life. They work hard, build something, and then a woman comes along and it gets washed away. <laughs> So back to your bedroom, Christy. We've decided uh, mm-hmm. you need to remove the crucifix from the room. Okay. I think you should just we go go, and... go all out. Go all out and do what? Well, as soon as you open the door, <laughs> disco ball. Right. Yeah. Condom machine right there on the wall. <laughs> Incense. <laughs> you know, you better tell one of those little uh, machines that dispenses cologne. <laughs> no, no. One of them is uh, condoms. The next yeah. is uh, French ticklers. Oh, yeah. Something that looks like a cat toy. <laughs> you know. All right. And then... Yeah. I think we've done all the damage we can do. Oh, no, no. We and then, oh, I know. Start it. And then, uh, then a little the little button you walk over, uh-huh. press it, and you hear your chick going, are you ready? To- <laughs> are you ready? To- yeah. And then, the, then the disco yeah. music starts. Uh-huh. Oh, yeah. Techno action. Uh, 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 oh, Christy. Actually, it's chicks. Hello, this is comedian John Evans, the High Plains thrifter. Fine. Check it out. Trying to grow. Welcome back to the Bob and Tom Show. Christy Lee at the news desk. Hi. There's Pat Godwin. Hello, Chick. Hey, all right. He's over there in the performance room. There's Jess Hooker. Hello. There's Josh Arnold. I'm here. There's Ace Cosby. Hey. I'm Chick McGee, and here's Tom. Would you like a, a bonus Ace Cosby joke, joke of the day? With that? No. no. Here's how this has to work, Tom. No. Yeah. Uh, if Ace has a really good joke, I say we you can reward him with a second joke. But we cannot keep rewarding <laughs> The coffee <laughs> called Failure. the police because he got mugged. You can't reward that. Freaking hilarious. Oh. <laughs> well, I, I, I mean, don't, don't you think like it's... it's what am a, I saying? Yes. Let's hear another. Like a second <laughs> at bat, if you will. Oh, please. Okay, the, the, Can you, you find the right button? You're saying... You can't find the right button. Here. <laughs> <laughs> Ace Cosby, here he is with his joke of the day. Hey, Chick. <laughs> You've got to keep me out of this. <laughs> yes, Ace. You know, yesterday I finished my first day of excavation school. Excavation. excavation school. Really? How about that? Huh? Well, what's uh, on a what's, Sunday? No. What's uh, excavation you know, school, Ace? I really dig it. That was Ace Cosby's joke of the day. Somehow, that was, that was worse. That was bad. <laughs> I love you, Ace. Hey, uh, Ace, uh, you, you'll be you, at lunch today, Jess, and go. <laughs> you, you're, you're reading That's my right, mind. She didn't get it. <laughs> mm-hmm. Yeah. Speaking of digging, headline: Amateur archaeologists uncover a mysterious ancient Roman artifact. In England, uh, the artifact is called a. In England, yes. It's called a dodecahedron. Oh, oh sure, yeah. It's a sided uh, thing, yeah. It's got it's eight a, heads. Uh, it's a copper oh. alloy, the size of a golf ball. Um, this is. Wait confusing. a minute! It's a spherical object what? that has many, many sides. Yeah, probably uh, has a bunch of points. But like, uh, it says it, this, this. This says it's the size of a golf ball and a grapefruit with various holes and knobs. Hmm. All right. Well, where did you get dodecahedron? Because that's, that's what it says here. I don't know. Well, um, its function <laughs> remains unclear. That's like they're using that dodecahedron like thingamajig. Why yeah. are they? It, it, apparently, it, they don't know what it was. It for. must have a certain amount of points. Yeah. That's the, they said it would take a, a, the, to build one of these would take a, an immense amount of skill and time. It says that's well, ancient calling aliens. it a dodecahedron implies that it was. Manufactured by someone. Yeah, I bet it fits. It fits into a secret lock that opens a, a big treasure. Oh, and out comes Tom Hanks. <laughs> I bet uh, it was just meant to oh. represent a star or the sun. They say it could be a rangefinder, a candlestick, a candlestick. It could be used for gambling or gaming or for knitting. In other words, <laughs> they have no effing idea what. Um, huh? 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 
Well, yeah, you know what? <laughs> that is, that's, that's the appropriate response to that. Huh? Or maybe Indeed. it was just some kid playing around with his medals ticket. Exactly. Yeah. But they've yeah. apparently found more than 100 of these over the decades. Oh, 100? You didn't say that. No, but I mean, this is the latest one. It's, oh, I thought it was just one of a kind. Yeah, maybe just it's about a sex, sex thing or whatever. <laughs> a sex thing. Yeah. That'd be a dill decahedron. <laughs> And you didn't want to do the story? <laughs> yeah, no, I didn't. Same a dodecahedron, thing. thank you very much. A dodecahedron's used at a bakery. <laughs> uh, <Yeah. laughs> See, that, that only highlighted how good dodecahedron yeah. was. Maybe, okay. maybe by a deer hunter, I don't know. Either way, really flat. Actually, archaeologists have uncovered the remains of a 19th century chocolate factory in Spain. According to Smithsonian Magazine, the discovery was made during construction at a site in Barcelona last year. The building itself dates back to the 14th century when it served as a mansion and a hostel in later centuries until it became a chocolate factory in the 1800s. Cool. I guess. <laughs> you don't think that's neat? Nope. Nope. <laughs> Please. Fact, you guys. I, I can't give you one word she just said. <laughs> They've discovered an ancient chocolate factory in Barcelona. Really not that ancient. It was just last 1800s, century. Yeah, 1800s, yeah. 1800s isn't that ancient. Wait, 1800s? Yeah. It became yeah. a chocolate factory in the 1800s, but the building itself dates back to the 14th century. Yeah, who cares? <laughs> <laughs> well, it was, as you know, I think if you look at the pictures, owned by a senior... Uh, Wonka. Guillermo, Guillermo Wonka. Wonka! <laughs> Guillermo... <laughs> Isn't that, isn't Guillermo uh, Willie in Spanish? I forget. I think so. I, have, I don't know. Oh, oh, Guillermo, might Guillermo, be Guillermo Willie. is Willie in Spanish. I think so. yeah. It might be. Yeah. Yeah. So, yeah. Oh. Um, well, is that our archaeology hunk? Nope. I sure hope it's so. Called, nope. It's called We Can more? Dig It. Nope. <laughs> we have more? A famous fossil of an ancient reptile has been found to be a forgery. Initially believed to be 280 million years old, the fossil was discovered in the Italian Alps in 1931. I don't like this. This, this is, leans, leans, uh, lends credence to Chick's theory that they're just making it up when they find these things. I'm telling you, how do they know the bones <laughs> go together? According to CNN, it features the dark, deep outline of a lizard-like body encased in rock and was given the scientific name Tridentosaurus Antiquus. A new detailed analysis. A really old dinosaur. <laughs> <laughs> well, the, the, the first one, if it's named after Latin chewing gum, <laughs> Tridentosaurus. Yeah. No, so whoever did it was probably kidding. And not as they could be a you could have a tail that has a trident like uh, like three spikes hmm. at the end or something. A new detailed analysis has revealed the fossil is made up of black paint, a few bones, and a carved rock. Yep, that's a Tridentosaurus <laughs> antiquus, all right. The researchers are now trying to determine... Gum wrappers. <laughs> ...the exact age of the bones the, in the uh, I, uh, uh, Dr. Millie Vanilli says that the, uh, <laughs> dinosaur, the dinosaur had very fine breath. Well, there was the, uh, the most famous forgery in the history of all this is... Uh, wasn't it uh, like a Piltdown Man or one of yes. those? Yes. Well, yeah. I forget which one it was, but... Like this so-called Frozen Cave Man who ended up being... And it was like the jaw was from a monkey or something. <laughs> right, it was completely oh, fabricated. Oops. So they, uh, they've had... I, I, I forget what that one was. But yeah, they're, you got to be careful. Can't they date everything now with some kind of a... All carbon dating is uh, light years ahead of what it used to be. Sure, sure, sure. And to wrap all this up, scientists have uncovered evidence <laughs> that Neanderthals used glue... An international team of researchers re-examined previous finds from the French archaeological site Les Moistiers. Uh, <laughs> you know, a lot of French women hate that word. They always yeah. say it's their number one grossest word. That, mean? Moistier, Moistier. That, means, that means you have a wet mustache? What is <laughs> Including stone tools that were used by Neanderthals between 120,000 and 40,000 years ago. They discovered traces of a mixture is it as ochre, okra? Okra. Okra and bidium on several stone tools which acted like an adhesive. The finding marks the earliest evidence of a complex adhesive in Europe. What are we doing? What are these stories? Are we well, NPR think, all of a sudden? I think Dr. Elmer. <laughs> <laughs> For that? Dr. Elmer. Oh. <laughs> we got it. Uh, uh, <laughs> No, the Neanderthal had this stuff because they... Well, you stop saying they, Neanderthal like yeah, you're an we're ruling on You're that. not. They, because, uh, yeah, I would hate to get it right. Um, uh. the, uh, <laughs> the, they needed this, Josh, because they didn't have metal refrigeration. Here it comes. So they had to stick comes. their kids' artwork 
on the uh, cave walls with glue. Oh, I see. Ah. So yeah, yeah, that's uh, there you the go. Neanderthal. Thing. <laughs> very, uh, was Neanderthal shorter? Do we know? Uh, was he a short I, man? Probably shorter than now, what did, we are now. Were they were, Neanderthal? Were, get it? Tall, were they were they, were they around? Oh no! Were they around yeah. when the current version of human beings was around? I walked right into it. No, I, I don't think so. So no. stupid about history. I have no idea. But I mean, were, were they intermingling? I don't believe so. Could you? Would you have like that whisper thing? Have you seen his date? <laughs> She's a Neanderthal. Oh boy! Wow, Harry! <laughs> oh my God! <laughs> that bush is. That bush. Long, there you go. That bush. There you go. <laughs> that bush. Drags in the ground, that thing. <laughs> I don't know if you heard this, but AT&T will give affected customers $5 each to compensate for last week's network outage. Hot damn. <laughs> Woo. Thanks so much. <laughs> many, Five bucks? Yeah, man. Just will... going to give it to us? <laughs> That's it. great. It's going to show up on your bill. Did they ever figure out the cause? Yeah, they say it was an error in coding. But without elaborating, they said it was not the result of a cyber attack. They're just saying it was a coding error. That's oh, right, Hayseeds. Hey uh -huh. We're using uh -huh. codes, okay? Uh -huh. <laughs> Calm down, you're going to be okay. Take your five bucks and yeah, shut up. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> yeah, you should see it appear on one of the next two billing sites. That's right. right. Satisfaction now, um, guaranteed. Do you uh, keep coming your mouth up, shut. We have, uh, okay. <laughs> we have uh, an update on the meat straw. We were talking about this the other day. Boy, that sounds yeah. like a penis. Yeah, yeah it, it sure does. does. The old meat straw. It sure does. <laughs> Remember, you'll, well, you'll find out. The meat straw, uh, we tried them out here. And this is in the, in the wake of the story about the uh, Starbucks, and they're doing the pork Pork latte. lattes. Oh, yeah. Yeah. Uh, yeah. Oh, only in China, though, right? Wasn't it in China they're no, doing sure. them? I try one. Should we you try to make try one? one? You want to make one? Sure. Yeah. Let's find out the recipe. Yeah. Josh, go ahead. Well, uh, <laughs> no, I'm, oh, just, I'm kidding. <laughs> You, maybe you would just take a pork chop and steep it no. like a tea bag. <laughs> you don't think I? You don't think I juice the pork chop? Put it maybe. in the juicer. I don't, I don't know. know what the and hell. They had the recipe. I thought in the story. Okay, we'll, I mean, we'll I'll look it up. In the meantime, the Bob and Tom Show, sponsored by BetterHelp. We're all wishing that we had more time. And if you had some extra time, what would you do? Uh, take a nap, watch a TV show, go for a walk. Uh, maybe do something important. Make something a priority in your life, like uh, working on yourself with some therapy and better help has a really smart idea by making access to therapy much much easier in fact uh, more than 25,000 therapists are working with better help and the way it works is you go online you fill out a questionnaire they will match you with a licensed therapist and then the therapy itself is done online and by the way you can change therapists at any time no extra charge and again it's all about convenience you will be uh, working with a therapist, and it can be done, by the way, uh, with like a Zoom call where you can see each other, or it can be done like a phone call, or it can be done with texting. It's all about what works for you and what kind of uh, time frame you can set, and uh, it's going to be a smart, easy way to access therapy. So check it out, betterhelp.com slash btshow today. Learn to make time for what makes you happy with BetterHelp. BetterHelp.com slash BT Show today. By the way, the slash BT Show part will knock 10% off your first month. That's BetterHelp, H E L P.com. BetterHelp.com slash BT Show. Flexibility and convenience and making access to therapy that much easier because you're doing it online. Now, when we come back, we are going to once again be investigating this uh, famous meat straw. Uh, and uh, also, we uh, have the story of Flacco the Owl. This is the Bob and Tom Show. Hey, everybody. This is Todd Snyder, and you're listening to Bob and Tom Radio. What up, Todd Snyder? One of my favorites. This is the Bob and Tom Show. Thanks very much for joining us. And uh, we're doing kind of a uh, musical chairs thing today. And uh, ask, well, it's actually a musical chair right now because joining us in the studio, we have singer, songwriter, actor, and comedian Stephen Lynch. I throw in the actor thing because you spent a, uh, how did you describe it? Uh, uh, Nine sentence. months in hell. Sentence, was that the word you used? <laughs> Nine months in hell is what I just heard. Uh, you were on Broadway. Do you want to yeah. give us the, the, give those that haven't heard about this the background on uh, the Wedding Singer. You portrayed the very popular Adam Sandler, Drew Barrymore movie about crazy kids in the '80s. Turned into a very successful theater piece. Very successful. Well, you you did it for a long, pretty long Mildly time. Mildly successful. I mean, it was it was a, it, it was fun. But I have my toe on the trigger pretty much every day of the last <laughs> <laughs> four months of it. Well, I realize I'm making it sound like it was really bad. 
No, but I mean, it just, wasn't. It was just. It was time to move on. You know. Can okay. you play one of the new ones for us? And I think so. Okay. We Uh-oh. just had a little powwow in your producers' oh, office we... about what I can and cannot say on the radio these well, days. Well, there have been moments before. <laughs> you think this one's okay? This is. A... I don't know. Okay. Well, if it's not. <laughs> I don't know. <laughs> Ladies and gentlemen, Stephen Lynch. This is a song I wrote. Um, I discovered, oddly enough, that. Um, I had a, an uncle, a great, 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 great uncle who lived in the uh, medieval period. <laughs> he pretty much did for a living what I do for a living. He was both a, a troubadour and a, oh. and a court jester, and I think he used to play in the court of the king and the queen. And, and I discovered one of his old compositions that he wrote for the lute, <laughs> and I uh, transposed it to the guitar. Good, because we don't have a lute handy. No. No. I, I don't either. And, I, uh, I, I like I guitar comics, but I hate period. lute comics. <laughs> 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 Prop guys and lute comics. <laughs> Those are the worst, just, aren't they? Just, yeah. just hacks. <laughs> give us all a bad name. So uh, this is one of his compositions, and I just thought I'd try it for a modern audience, see how it goes over. Come, fair lady, to mine bed we go, and verily sweet pleasures we shall know, yet... Where thy belly meets thy limb, I beseech thee, give a trim, for thy bush doth overflow. <laughs> My lady doth have a 70s muff. <laughs> a 1470s favorites. muff. <laughs> Zounds. It is prickly as a Christmas wreath. <laughs> Think it might hide some baby birds beneath. <laughs> Pray, shave it off to make a coat. There are fur balls down mine throat, short in curlies twixt my teeth. I saith not thy is her suit. <laughs> but it looketh like thou hast buckwheat in a leg lock. <laughs> <laughs> My uncle was also a very hacky stand-up comedian. <laughs> <laughs> but soft, what hair through yonder girdle grows to be or not to be put in cornrows. Oh, it is beastly and unruly, and it smelleth of patchouli, and that offends my nose. I saith not thou art furry down there. But it doth resemble Fidel Castro eating a London broil. Tra la 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 medieval bush. Bravo. Stephen Lynch. Thank you, Lords and Ladies. Thank you. Stephen Lynch, ladies and gentlemen. What is a loot? A loot is, it looks like a pear shaped ukulele. Yeah, it goes. Kind of a oh, well, there's, there's no neck. There's no neck. Yeah. 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 Like yeah. Guitars. Okay. I think those are you know, to change an old joke just a little bit. Uh, the 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 best sound a lute makes is when uh, a banjo lands on it in the dumpster <laughs> or an accordion. <laughs> one of the two. Um, uh, I'm sure there's a, a really a anti lute. lute man. I do not. <laughs> and you're complaining. Uh, <laughs> can I tell you something? Hey. My mother used to chew her toenails. No way. In front of me. Oh, gosh. Oh, boy. <laughs> Clothed or not? I would. Oh, thank God. <laughs> <laughs> thank God. <laughs> that, that is a visual. Oh, Bob has lost oh, it over there. Hello, oh, best of, right here. <laughs> right here. That would be, I, you know. I, totally I even, naked. I think How did you even get, think of that? You would get, See anything you like, boy? I, think I remember that. Free psychiatry. <laughs> Free for life. Free Prozac, whatever you want. Government program for that. But we are going to fix you. How about it, boy? <laughs> Anything you like? You can imagine the twisting oh that would be involved. There's a lot of people who can't even do that. Okay. She was Show's very over. limber. Show's over. Morning laughter <laughs> just might be the best medicine. I can hear you. Oh, no. You're talking out your ass again. Bob and Tom. <laughs> hey, welcome back to the Bob and Tom Show. Josh Arnold during the commercials. 
applied a toothbrush to his microphone. Yeah, what were you doing? Apparently, you're 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 aware of something I don't Detailing. know about microphones. Yeah, there were uh, a couple. I don't know things in my microphone screen. So <laughs> out of your mouth, worked them out <laughs> like a bug, like booger like. No, probably flat. I don't know, maybe like peanut pieces or something. <laughs> Do you have a toothbrush handy? I, yeah. I am. You keep that for just such an occasion? Pieces, no, pieces this is the first time I've ever done that, and it works remarkably now, well. Now, are you going to use that in your teeth now? <laughs> no, no, this was just a gift from a, a friend of mine who was in a band. And had it, had it up his ass? <laughs> yes, yeah, all my friends <laughs> like to jam things up their, their rear ends. Yeah, yeah, and, you know what, Josh? That is so weird. All of my friends. <laughs> really? You want to shove stuff up their no, ass, No, brush in first or handle. <laughs> well, brush first. That's Depends on if you have go. an itch. Yeah. Okay. <laughs> Uh, Don't we get stories like that all the time? People yes. with hemorrhoids scratching yes. their arms. I want to say Terrible. a special... Uh, oh, all of a sudden, you've got something interesting. <laughs> Hello. Oh, okay. uh, Tiffin, Ohio, the Ritz. It's going to be Saturday, March 2nd. Jeff Oske will be part of a special show with uh, Jeff. Who else is in that show, Chris? Uh, Greg Hahn and Dave Dyer, I believe. Wow. Yes. Okay, that'll be great. Mm -hmm. These guys are terrific. It's um, this now, Saturday in Tiffin. Okay, now we have uh, Christy Lee at the news desk. Have we missed anything? Yeah, Flacco, the owl who became something of a celebrity. Who? Flacco. <laughs> after escaping from New York City Central Park Zoo, apparently died after if, colliding if with had, an Upper West Side building. If Ace would have said who, Tom would be on the floor laughing right now. <laughs> I didn't get it. An owl. owl. It's an owl. An owl. owl. I who? said who. Jick said oh, who. Okay. You didn't let her get the whole story out. Yeah, no, no. Died. She got the owl. She got out. enough owls. <laughs> owls. Like a little listen. over a year ago, the owl was freed from his cage at the zoo in a criminal act that is yet to be solved. So wait a second. It's a shame. I thought owls have like, Eyes this amazing the head. vision. They can, well, can't they see mice from 300 yards, but they can't see a building? Apparently not. He became a viral sensation as bird watchers flocked to Central Park to spot the Eurasian eagle owl. Bereaved fans are calling for a temporary memorial at the bird's favorite oak tree in Central Park. Oh, really? Right. Yes. Mm. What kind of... <laughs> who's going to have time to go to that? <laughs> really? People do, don't You know they? what? I'll, I'll make time. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. when, I'm, okay. when I'm not raising your taxes, not working, what I like to do is go do you know, mourn an owl. You know, if you search owls on Google, and I have... They have incredibly long legs. It's freaky. They're terrifying. I've seen the one where the, the owl comes right at the camera. It's when awesome. owl, you see owls in the tree, or they're they're crunch, they're scrunched up like catchers. Yes. Uh, in baseball, they have this? crazy long legs. Yeah. Jess Hooker. Yeah. <laughs> do you know? <laughs> no one else can participate. Jess, do you know what they call a baby owl? Mm. Uh, you're not going to believe me when I tell you. Um, a a calf. What do they call it? No. I don't know. Really? There was something That's weird. the best you it could come like, up with, a calf. Yes. It's actually really simple. It's really, yeah, when you hear a it, baby you're going to go. It's called an owlet. Oh, that's cute. Here, here, here and, it comes. Yeah. Here it and comes. then, of course, I know you. If, if, if they get caught into a rainstorm, <laughs> oh. you have a moist owlet. <laughs> Boy, Ace couldn't let Tom finish it. No. <laughs> Both of them. Yeah. <laughs> they've done the joke. Yeah, yeah, oh, you, well, wrote, you wrote, you wrote Moist Owl. Well. <laughs> yeah, that's right, I forgot. Hold still. Oh. <laughs> uh, you missed. Uh, <sighs> again, I, I I needed some owl expert to tell me, how could an owl hit a building? Birds hit buildings all the time. They, yeah. They, that's they, right. The glass is reflective. Right. They, they, think think they're doing, they think they're doing really well. They don't see the building. <laughs> yeah. Okay. Oh, so it's yeah. like it's like one of those mirrored buildings. Yes. Yeah, of course. Yes. Yeah. Yeah. Remember we had, there was one, I think it was in yeah. Charlotte. Charlotte, North Carolina, where all the dogs. The, the uh, NASCAR birds? Hall of Fame. Yes, the birds were all dying. What? Yes. yes. It's the NASCAR Hall of Fame gets hit by like birds starlings all the time. or something? I can't remember yes. the kind of birds, but... Look yeah, it's it not up. a good thing. I will look it up. They were starlings? I don't know. Is that right? I think you're I right. Um, um, I might be making stuff up. I don't care. <laughs> yeah. Well, I... Um, Baby eagles is what I heard. Eaglets. Eagletta, Eaglets. Uh, hey, Pat, eaglets. <laughs> You've had a few, right? <laughs> yeah. Okay. Egrets. Egrets. Eaglets. I've had a few. I can't find Boys. it. I'll find um, it. Oh, wait a minute. No, here it is. Now, You're wait right. a minute, I, then my computer Holy is working all of a sudden. 300 <laughs> migrating birds smash into Charlotte's NASCAR building. Yes. He didn't believe you. No. no. He didn't believe a I word it of it. And we did the story and he's still going. <laughs> mm -hmm. Oh, and they were... Uh, oh. They were... <laughs> <laughs> they were... <laughs> they were... He found a new angle, of course. Oh, no, this is great. They're called 
Chimney Swifts. Oh, Chimney That's right. Yeah. Chimney Swifts. Yes. And you know, have you ever here, seen those? No. What do they look like? They're like, uh, they fly out of chimneys. Where they, that's where they get the name because they roost inside your chimney. Ah. And they... They're, they're a black bird. Oh, they're terrifying. Black they're like <laughs> 50 of them at a time will come out of the well, this says you, This says they uh, have a, you have a gaggle of geese, oh, here a brood are. of ducklings, and a Jonestown of chimney swifts. <laughs> <laughs> what? Okay. Okay. <laughs> I don't get that. Uh, You're going to have to slow it down. I'm, a, a large Jones, group of them large died. Large group died. So That's just all. a large Tenuous group of anything best. is yeah. a Jonestown. 300, 300 migrants. Okay. Birds crashing into a building because I was going. They were poisoned. I, it wasn't Kool Aid. Yeah, they little, were drinking the Kool Aid. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah, but they didn't have anything to do with a chimney or a birds or anything like that. Mm -hmm. Just a lot of death. You see, you've, you've got a, a lot of you've got a. Uh, yeah, there we go. Pot of yeah, I know a bitter comedian. We know. Yeah. <laughs> Isn't there one for hairdressers too? Oh boy. A flamboyance. flamboyance. Okay. There we go. Yeah. No, it's a flamboyance of flamingos. Oh my bad. Yeah. Or male hairdressers. Uh, whatever you want. Oh. A team of scientists identified a new snake species in the Amazon. Professor Brian Fry from the University of Queensland led a team that captured and studied several specimens of a previously undocumented species of giant <laughs> anaconda, Josh. Oh, man. Whoa. Newly named the northern green anaconda, the species so located... It's green and lives in the north. <laughs> well, it's northern well, you'd, green well, anaconda. Would you, would you rather, you'd rather have it named uh, the sweet little girl anaconda. <laughs> <laughs> oh, I'll touch one of those. <laughs> species was located in the Bamino region in the Ecuadorian Amazon. Fry said one of the snakes measured more than 20 feet long. Pretty big. big yeah. snake. They think it's, it's the biggest snake in the world, right? Right. Oh, that's a man-eater, all right. <laughs> swallow you down. And then, <laughs> and then what? spit you up. And then re-swallow you. Why? Why do they do that? Uh, the, Make the you uh, uh, They just tend to regurgitate their meal. And then they eat it back up. It, yeah, give it a I second chance. Yep. Okay. Since I'm wondering, you are a herpetology thing. <laughs> I learned that in the movie Anaconda. Because oh. <laughs> John Voight, uh, spoiler alert, gets eaten, uh -huh. right? and then he spit back up. Uh, and is, he, is he conscious? He's a bad guy, yeah. And he winks, and then he gets eaten again. Oh, it's man. awesome. Yeah, you, bet awesome. gonna, <laughs> you, yeah, you bet the guy's going to wink. <laughs> yeah, yeah. Um, so this was uh, discovered, where was it again? The in the month. Amazon, in the Ecuadorian jungle. Where all our packages come from? Oh, yeah, yeah, that's right. Oh, right. Stinks so scary. I've had many people to use Amazon again. Ooh. Ooh. Terrifying. That's awful. I'm... I have a story about whales, so we get to hear Josh's favorite bit, if you can get that ready. I'm over it. <laughs> Scientists report they've unraveled the mystery of how whales sing. Oh. Researchers believe baleen whales use a larynx or voice box in their throat to produce sound. <laughs> whales possess a large... What did they think it was? ...cushion of fat and you muscle. You mean it's coming out of their throat? I thought it was coming out of their ass. <laughs> That's good work, boys. <laughs> you figured it out. Do they, can they explain why whales don't seem to know the lyrics? <laughs> whales possess a large cushion of fat and muscle, and when whales sing, they push the tissue against this cushion, thus creating the singing sound. I <laughs> that <laughs> sound. They don't speak English. They're not going to sing for you. As well, I remember we had the French lady trying to get him to sing. Or Let's talk. See. I think uh, this is uh, this it right here. Two, <laughs> oh, I mean that is one of them. Yes, yeah, that is a whale trying to speak. Yeah, that's, that's, he's doing. Uh, I believe, what is this? Is this Pat? Is this Cat Stevens? <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah, yeah peace world. Yeah, world. Yeah, world. Yeah, tea for the Jillerman. Wild world. world. Yeah. Uh, okay, good. Uh, I wanted to uh, play a couple of tunes. It's hot. If we could. <laughs> um, this is a, a sad day. But I wanted to remember the best part of this guy, and that was when he was singing. This is a, a, a clip from Tim Wilson's first appearance on our show. Uh, one of the, one of the, uh, just class. This is a perfect song. He just does a great job with it. Yeah, he comes over to the house in a three-day beard. Sleeps on the couch, makes the place smell weird. He's on something, and it damn sure ain't a job. <laughs> he scares the kids, stays on the phone's got a car somewhere for me to co-sign on. He's been disowned and his wife's run off with Bob. 
<laughs> she finally told him he wasn't worth a damn. He tries to blame it all on Vietnam. But he wasn't there. He was 15 and 74. <laughs> He's had a bad back and a messy divorce. He's got a workman's comp case tied up in court. He can't move, and I can damn sure vouch for that. <laughs> He's my brother-in-law. <laughs> He's from Arkansas. <laughs> Lord, the best man at my wedding and the worst I ever saw. <laughs> He's living off of me. He's the baby of the family. <laughs> my wife won't let me shoot him because he's my brother-in-law. <laughs> Every day he smokes four packs of menthols, makes about eight more long-distance calls, snorts alcohol, and talks like Dusty Rhodes. <laughs> and he'll go through your wallet with a fine-tooth comb and eat your family out of house and home. He'll cuss out your preacher and stop up your commode. <laughs> he's your brother-in-law. He's got nothing on the ball. The kind of man who Rob from Peter and write a bad check to Paul. <laughs> He's gotten out of hand. He ought to be a congressman. <laughs> He's the kind of fellow that I can't stand. And he's my brother-in-law. Oh, yeah. He's the generic brand. And he's my brother-in-law. Oh, oh, oh. <laughs> the great Tim Wilson and the classic so uh, brother-in-law song. Now, uh, we were talking about this uh, whale story that Christy had. Yeah, about whales singing. And uh, scientists think it's coming from their throat, huh? Yeah, that's. I was with you when I read it. I was like, oh, this is big news, huh? <laughs> I, uh, I mean, again, I, I okay. didn't think it was coming out their blowhole. They were holding a flute up there. But we have the famous story of the uh, French... Uh, Scientists, uh, scientists who were trying to get their whales to talk. And uh, they claim that, the, and you can, at some point, you can hear the whales kind of imitating the sounds. We'll play a couple of these. Here we go. Hello. <laughs> Hello. <laughs> Hello. <laughs> Hello. <laughs> Hello. <laughs> you know, they're, Hello. they're not bad. <laughs> they're trying. <laughs> yes. Yeah. I think those are pretty good. Yeah. Okay, let's try this one. Right. One, two, three. <laughs> One, two, three. <laughs> bye bye. Oh. Bye bye. No. Oh. That's not bad. How about That's this not one? Bad. <laughs> <laughs> okay, that was, that was the whale doing putting on the Ritz. Uh, the, the, this is the whale counting to three. This is the best one. This sounds. Re this really sounds good. It's just an oh. ass ripping at the end. A little, little, oh. a, 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 little a little, little Billy Joel. Nice. Uh, thank you very much. A police officer in England has been demoted after he sold a pair of his official, official police trousers online. The BBC reports that Officer Owen Hurley of the Hertfordshire Police Department admitted he sold the pants on Vinted, a second-hand selling app, for $5. He told a misconduct hearing the trousers had been in his wardrobe at home for a long time and he wanted to make space after redecorating. He described the sale as a mistake. I don't understand the problem here. What am I missing? Is it... It's a uniform. Oh, do they look different than... Oh, Hurley maybe was... like... They're probably issued and yes, yeah. official. Yeah. Hurley was found so guilty. Someone could be impersonating an officer of gross misconduct and demoted from inspector to the rank of sergeant, effective immediately. Okay, these pants must really stand out as something that you would notif notice immediately that they were police trousers, though, right? Did he sell them on only cops? Why am I laughing? I mean, because I mean, you got this thing about Seems... that. Josh is always saying you ladies are leaving money on the table, not selling your underwear on OnlyFans. Yeah. Yeah. I just threw away a ton, too. And I oh, thought, don't, I don't even too. say that. Yeah, I, when I cleaned it out, I thought, Josh is just dying right now. <laughs> yeah. we, could have, we could have made it into a blanket. No. Yes. A no. Nice oh, my God. Can What's you wrong imagine with that? Christy? A nice quilt. <laughs> uh, oh, God. A quim quilt. <laughs> All is forgiven. <laughs> oh, I bet it's we could exactly have exactly why I didn't. Several hundred dollars at least. Oh. Yes. Don't you think? No. Yes. Let's start the bidding. 
It's there. How about it's if we gone. do it that way? How about if we we find the price and then you make a new one? Well, we can start again. They've, 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 they've already... Is it currently in your trash can? These no, things? I did this last week. It's gone. No, do you, you do that put... at the beginning of every year? Just clean out and start new? Do you... uh, uh, yeah, I now, guess. Did, did you yes. give them to uh, an organization that recycles them or resells them? or did you Not put my it... underwear. No. I threw it away. Everything else I did either resell or donate. But the underwear went into the trash specifically for this reason. Some some poor lady right now. (laughs) You know, I don't know. Some poor lady right now going commando in the cold. Yeah. I know Christy didn't donate her underpants. Is a state law about reselling used underwear, but there should be. Yeah, exactly. Thank you, Chick. Yeah. They can sell underwear at garage sales and stuff. And at Goodwill. Oh, Goodwill will take them? They will? Mm -hmm. I didn't know that. Yeah. Really? Yeah. Do they launder it or do they? I don't know. I always launder my stuff before I give it to a chair. So do I. That's, it's but just I should start selling to. it. I'm sure there's some people out there who want my socks, right? Have Please you, email the show if you want my socks. Lady your boxers. Yeah, yes, you yes. If you want my, yeah, he did. Yeah, yeah. He did. If you want my underwear or socks, email the show. <laughs> a game worn. Yeah. Sorry, I'll Mark. send you pictures of me in them too. I don't give. I don't care. Wow. Yeah. Buy somebody, my lunch. Somebody owes Mark like a hundred bucks just yeah. for me saying that. Yeah. What? For going through the emails. Yeah. Poor Mark. Uh, Mark gets paid. Uh oh. Uh oh. <laughs> there he is. Here we go. Hello. <laughs> okay, thank you very much. In, in my defense, Mark, we were told that you left early today. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> that was yeah, true. Told you were going to go uh, pick up the little woman. Well, now. if you want to bid on that, you'll want to hear the bids, uh, and you want to listen right. to your Raycon earbuds. They're the best of those Raycon headphones. I love them. That's where they come in, Tom. Listening to the Bob and Tom Show on your Raycon everyday earbuds does not get any better. They have the optimized gel tip, perfect in ear fit. They fit every ear ever made. Comfortable. They actually stay in your ears, unlike some others I could mention. Whether you're going for a run, walking the dog, dancing to your tunes. And like anything, Raycons are here for a good time and a long time. Eight hours of playtime, 32 hours of battery life. You get amazing quality audio at half the price of other premium audio brands. And Raycons have awesome features like noise, is- noise isolation and three customizable sound profiles. You know, we get love letters every day about Raycons. Bob and Tom listeners are happy with them. Tom's happy with Raycons. What does that tell you? Go to buyraycon.com slash Tom today and get 15% off your Raycon order plus free shipping. That's buyraycon.com slash Tom. You score 15% off and free shipping. That's buyraycon.com slash Tom. Once again, if you're going any kind of a trip, get those Raycon headphones for the kids, and they'll just sit there quietly in the back watching whatever's on their phone or their iPad. And That's right. They're not going to go, are we there yet? Are we there yet? Are we there yet? You know what I'm talking about. Uh, check out those Raycon headphones. They're the best. This is the Bob and Tom Show. Become a Bob and Tom VIP and get your Bob and Tom fix 24-7. Get all the info in the VIP area at bobandtom.com. This is the Bob and Tom Show. Yeah, I'm just, I don't know, I'm just getting old. I hate, I'm not doing it this gracefully. I hate technology. I hate any kind of change. I, have you seen this commercial for a car where they say the car can actually anticipate when you're going to have a wreck? The uh-huh. car can predict when you're going to... I guess they got some kind of computer on board. Right. I thought, you know, if that was really true, as soon as I hand the keys to my son, the damn airbags would go off. You know what I mean? <laughs> <laughs> but I saw all this technology. Like I, I, I'm, I'm sure you guys probably have this. Uh, I just don't understand if this, like, MySpace and Facebook. Oh, yeah. Twitter. Right. I just don't... I don't understand the concept. I don't... Can you imagine uh, being in a mall and going up to a complete stranger and going, Psst, could I be your friend? <laughs> <laughs> denied. You'd be denied bail. That should be denied. I just, and young people out there, I'm not saying I'm right. I know this is old man cranky talk. I really do. But I, <laughs> I just don't understand. I see all these young college kids getting tattoos with, like, Chinese characters on their arm. Yeah. You think there's college kids in China getting... Geter Dunn tattooed on their arms. I I find that unlikely, don't you? I... That's very possible. Now, this, this, you don't have to be old or cranky for this to make you mad, but this is making me nuts. Have you noticed how uh, lately when you call these tech support things, in my case, I was calling my credit card, but when these 1 800 things, we know this has been outsourced for a while, but sure. remember in the beginning how they try to pretend like they're American? Oh, yeah. They'd say, I oh, my name is Sean. You go, right. yeah, how's the weather in Calcutta today, uh, Sean? Uh-huh. But, 
now they don't even care. Have you noticed that? I mean, I'm serious. I called the day, and the guy just told me his uh, told me his Indian name, and when they put me on hold, they're playing Ravi Shankar. You know, they, <laughs> uh-huh. they didn't bother to hide it at all. And I, I was getting so frustrated because you know I I wouldn't get anything done. I kept saying, "Excuse me, I'm sorry. What was that? Please, excuse me. Could repeat that." Mm-hmm. And here's what I want you guys to do. It was a lot of fun for me. Maybe we'll start a movement. I started mumbling on purpose, like Boomer from King of the Hill or Gabby Hayes. I started going, <laughs> "Yeah, they damn will make up a thing in there. Put someone down on him." He goes, "Excuse me, what?" I said, "Yeah, how do you like it, Abu? Huh? Yeah. Try that on for size." <laughs> Hey, it's Josh Arnold with a food recommendation for you. Gardner's Wisconsin Cheese, their famous oven-baked cheese. It arrives pre-baked. You just heat it and eat it, grill it, skillet, or air fry it. Check out their new oven-baked cheese flavor, jalapeno. Ooey, gooey, spicy cheese. It's sure to tickle your taste buds with real jalapeno flavor and heat. Perfect for game day parties or Anytime. Excuse me. Are um, are you serious with this? I mean, why are you doing this? Me, uh, the real me is right here. I could easily be doing this. We we don't need you, man. I uh, look. There's only room for one of us. That's Gardner's Wisconsin cheese, jalapeno flavored oven baked cheese. It's now available in Gardner's oven baked bundle package. So try all the great flavors. Receive free cold pack shipping and free cheese curds when you spend $59 or more at GardnersWisconsinCheese.com. Click the link below and tell them your pal Josh, me the real Josh, from the Bob and Tom Show sent you. And highlights all day long. The Bob and Tom Show, weekday mornings at 6 a.m. Eastern on Bob and Tom 24 7. You don't say we didn't warn you. I'm warning you, don't do that. There's laughter ahead. I should be having a better time <laughs> if this is a part. This is Bob and Tom Radio. His name is Apollo Johnson. And he's America's number one astronaut. But he's also a well-endowed ladies' man. Monumental Pictures proudly presents Apollo 13 and a half. Oh, Apollo, your rocket is so big. (laughs) Adult film star Dick Mahogany in his first starring role since Shaft's lethal weapon is astronaut Apollo Johnson. And when he's not orbiting the Earth... He's going around the world. (laughs) Apollo Johnson, he's not just an astronaut. He's a charter member of the 100,000 Mile High Club. And believe me, there's nothing weightless about Apollo 13 and a half. Oh, Apollo, now I know why they call it the Johnson Space Center. He's Apollo Johnson, and not even the shuttle can hold all of his cargo. Look at that load. Apollo 13 and a half from Monumental Pictures, rated PG-13. And a half. Oh, boy. Hi, this is comedian Tim Cavanaugh, and you're listening to Bob and Tom Radio. Do a, actually, I'm doing a CNN interview at 10, or else I'd go with him. Do Larry King, first time. I'm very Larry. excited. Yeah, I just want him to go, Saskatchewan, hello! <laughs> <laughs> Can you turn down the electric blanket? <laughs> I can't, Turn off the fan above the oven! <laughs> I go, you know what going to do, Larry? We're going to try to get your shoulders a little higher. You can do that. <laughs> Why are my suspenders so tight? Because <laughs> they don't go around your n***, <laughs> Larry. That's why they go up. See, if you let them go, the shoulders will do that. You won't look like a, you know, you look like a vulture in heat. <laughs> <laughs> Muncie, hello! Question for the skinhead! <laughs> Joining us in the studio, comedian Larry Reeb. No, well, Larry, you are from... Chicago. Mm-hmm. You just got a great Chicago yeah. accent. Well, it's a, originally I'm from a little town, Dwight, Illinois. It's a farm town. Uh-huh. There's a mental institution and a women's prison there. Really? And my parents met. 
<laughs> Here I am. <laughs> but yeah, I live in Chicago. Are you married? Are you I've been married ten years. Oh, how's really? it going? Good. I think us guys need good women, don't you? Women oh, yeah. keep us in line. Sure. Oh, yeah. That's why most axe murderers are single. <laughs> <laughs> they were married, their wife wouldn't put up with that. Put that axe down. You're not chopping anybody. You have to take the garbage out. <laughs> take the ski mask off. It's summer, you idiot. Bob and Tom. Hey, welcome back to the Bob and Tom show. Tom, are you ready? Yeah, Josh, he had to leave. <laughs> He's off to the dentist. I, for one, thought he'd never go. <laughs> um, yeah, but uh, that doesn't mean we're, gonna, we're, we're not going to quit. All right. No. We're going to move forward here. <laughs> Time now for today in history. What number you got? Uh, okay, what is it, 26? 26. Yeah. Um, yes, sir. Oh, this is good. Yeah. Uh, we'll do this in quiz form. Oh, God. Uh, 1802, happy birthday, Victor Hugo. Victor Hugo. Isn't that a car, the Hugo? It the was Hugo. a car. The yeah. Hugo. Wasn't he an author? Yes. Is and that and the Notre wrote, Dame like, thing? No. He wrote Les Mis. Oh, oh that's right. Les Mis. Well, he didn't write the play. I mean, you know. The but he wrote the Mis. story that it's yeah. not Les the musical. Les Mis stands for Les Mis. <laughs> <laughs> You didn't care for that? Paso. Okay, El Paso. Okay. El Paso out the air. Here's an easy one. <laughs> Here's an easy one. Uh, 1829, happy birthday, Levi Strauss. Ah, the gene oh, man. Yeah. Nope. He was uh, invented <laughs> copper. Uh, the little riv rivets that's that go oh. in the pants. That's yeah, but never married, according to this account. Really? Confirmed man. bachelor, was oh. he? Yeah. Good. Oh. He, I'm not kidding. It's I don't know what anything else about him. I guess well, he was. Yeah, one, good one for him. Yes. <laughs> he, was, uh, he was pantsexual. Ah! Thank you. Oh, oh shit, that. Uh, 1846. You know what? Hang on. I like that very much. <laughs> yeah. That was very good. 1846. Right. Buffalo Bill. Not the murderer. Football team? Oh. Cody. No. Buffalo Bill Cody. Buffalo right? Bill Cody. Yeah. Had the weird facial hair. He did had a uh, Wild West show, right? For a long yeah. time. Yeah. Very fancy. He's an actor? Um, oh, no. This is a good one. No, he was. Now, I want to see Miss Hooker. Do you know, you know this guy? <laughs> what? Uh, born 1853. <laughs> Uh, John Harvey Kellogg. Mm. Now, this is true. You're not going to believe me when I tell you this. He was the inventor of cornflakes. Because? Because? Because he was an advocate of... Uh, uh, corn? No. <laughs> yes. That would make sense. He but was. No. He, he didn't was want a, people masturbating. He was, oh, yes, he I was read this. advocate for celibate. this celibate. huge anti-masturbation thing. And know. that turns down your testosterone. Supposedly. Mm -hmm. Yeah. yeah. Um, he put something in the cornflakes that uh, Salt yeah. Peter. But shut I, us down. Ironically, huh. there's a giant cock on the cover of... <laughs> Cornflakes, <laughs> right? Yeah, there is. I mean, am I right? There's a rooster, yes. <laughs> yeah, giant is. cock, Christy. Oh Come on. Okay. Giant cock, Christy. <laughs> That's what it is. Saddle up. Come on. <laughs> um, let's see now. Oh, Jackie Gleason, the great one, born in 1916. The great one is here. Remember he would say, uh, as Ralph Cramden, that he was going to... Yeah. To the moon. Punch her to the moon. Yes. I, I yeah. probably back off on that these days. Mm -hmm. yeah. 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 Yes, oh boy. Um, oh, here we go. Nineteen twenty-eight. Is uh, is Mr. Fats Domino still with us? That's a I good question. Don't no. think so. I don't think so. Mm -hmm. I don't think so. How about I Chubby Checker? See, uh, Fats Domino was first, right? Yeah. And then Dick Clark came up with yeah, the Chubby, name Chubby oh. Checker, right? And he wasn't really that. I think they had to. And he had to put some weight on. I think. Is that right? Yeah, Fats Domino was the real deal, though. He died in seventeen. <laughs> 2017. 2017. 2017. Sorry. Blueberry Hill. No. Yeah. Uh, that, that, that. That's a good song. That is a good song. Come on. Really? They should yeah, get I like, like it. They should get like right. 20 fat guys, have them line up, and then knock one over and do Fats Dominoes. <laughs> the Fats Domino effect? <laughs> Why isn't someone doing hey, that? The, the Fats Domino okay. theory. Uh, let's see. That'd be a nice thing to do on his birthday. Uh, 1930, Today. 1932, Johnny Cash. Oh, Ooh. he was good. Yeah, very, very good. Um... Let's see now. Um, Michael Bolton, born on this date in 1953. <laughs> All right. Okay. The Michael Bolton? Yeah. He's Not good. one song that you could ever <laughs> listen to again. Oh, he's, yeah. He's got a lot of yelling. Michael Bolton. A lot, like of yelling. a lot of yelling. A lot of yelling. Um, not, not any, no different between him singing and my <laughs> mother yelling at me. <laughs> Nothing. No difference. Give him sick. You would like his first album. No. There no, I wouldn't. Ace, there for yeah. a while. You dare tell me what I'd like and what I wouldn't like. Didn't he open for Bob Ace? Seger? Yeah. That's how? how we met Bruce Kulick. He was in Bob's, uh, Michael Bolton's band. Well, Michael Bolton it was in my car. Now, did you say when you said did, was it, did you have Kulick? the window fixed when he got in? Oh, he loved it. Okay. 
course. Mm -hmm. uh, 1973, though. How long has that window been hey, broken? Hey, I got a guy hours? to fix that, by <laughs> the way. Yeah, I, it's the same guy, Pat. Oh, he, he Justin and I have been talking. It's been um, six months, hasn't it? At least. Right? It's been a bit. Oh, it's a bit could, now. We get, could we get back to... Uh, <laughs> Today in history, uh, Secretariat purchased for five point seven million in nineteen seventy three. Big red, um, big red bush. <laughs> and Sorry. Uh, let's, that's about it. That's that's about about it. Call it a day. It's not about that's it. About it. Eh, nothing yeah. else. Yeah, nothing other good. Chubby Checker is still alive. In case you guys were curious, Chubby Checker has mm -hmm. a uh, something uh, song about diamonds. It's pretty good. Harder than diamonds, I think. Or something like that. <laughs> what? what? Pretty good song. Yeah. Hey, if you can like Michael Bolton, I can like something by Chubby Checker well, that's the, the, not the, Twist. The, the Twist is great. Let's twist again like we did last summer. It's one of the few sequels that's a good sequel to a song. How many of them? It's, it's the same song, you incredible song. It's the same song. There's a prequel, too. There is? Yeah, we're going to twi twist next year. <laughs> <laughs> Where are we going to twist? Oh, we're going to twist. I'm looking forward to twisting. <laughs> I have twisted. I will twist. Well, the prequel will be backwards. Like we twisted last summer. No, the prequel's before. We're going to twist next year. Oh, my God. No, no, that, no, next year would be, that's or that's what, let's twist again, like we did last summer. We're take, twisting next summer. Check what we learn on the show today. No, no, I want this to go as, as, long, as long as I can. <laughs> Make it like more of a dirge, like a slow. And the last one would be twisted. Like a really end. sad one. We twisted. twisted until she fell out of the airplane. She went splat. <laughs> what? What is going she on? She went needs, splat. Needs some work. <laughs> That's just the first draft. <laughs> what did we learn in today's show, Chick? Uh, we heard about this. New York, number 75, Minnesota. Five guys each for fighting. Fighting. And we also heard this. You're not going to like it, but the call on the ice was correct. No goal. And. Intentional grounding. Offense number seven. <laughs> That's, That's right. So that is the best. Get off my back. I'm talking to America. Uh, we had three wide photo finish at the NASCAR race in Atlanta. Daniel Suarez. Rico Suarez. Oh, come on. <laughs> Who's Rico Suarez? Rico it's Suave, Suave, right? Rico yeah. Suave? Yeah. Rico nice Suarez. Suave. Suave. It's close enough. Not really. <laughs> All right, you know what? It sounds like something I'd say. Fair enough. Uh, all the snow and hockey pucks are kept in Toronto, Canada. Are they? To Josh Arnold, that's right. Uh, be sure and go uh, on the Rock and Roll Hall of Fame website and vote for Peter Frampton. Please do that. And no Did one you else. talk about ice football? Because everybody should look up that ice football Very thing. Very funny. American I mean, ice football from it's Germany is hilarious. Yes. They're, they're, playing they're playing traditional football, football on ice, not on, wearing skates, wearing bowling rink. shoes. They're not wearing, they're wearing bowling shoes. As if it couldn't be <laughs> falling all over the place. <laughs> On the slip and break, busting their ass. <laughs> Back to you, buddy. Oh, uh, well, thank you very much. Uh, um, we have uh, Peter Frampton's going to be our guest this week. Looking forward to that. As is uh, Bill Burr. It's going to be fun. This is the Bob and Tom Show. For a complete copy of the Bob and Tom Show contest rules, go to bobandtom.com slash contest dash rules. Or just scroll down to the bottom of the page and see contest rules. This is the Bob and Tom Show.